goes deeper and turns sharply, skimming the shallows, making for a shore that will show a friendly face, a color, a familiar language, and a third to proceed no longer by paths indirect, but straight to home. Hello. two games of the World Series, the San Francisco Giants have run into some tremendous pitching. Dave Stewart of the A's threw a shutout in game one. And Mike Moore in the Oakland bullpen did the job in game two. At the plate, punch has been provided by people like Dave Parker and Terry Steinbach. And the A's have won the first two games of the World Series and are halfway to their first world title since 1974. The giant dugout full of long faces all weekend. Hello. Tonight, the Giants home to host the A's in Game 3. Hello, old friend. And home for the Giants, one of the most spectacular vistas on this continent, any continent. Downtown San Francisco in the background, and we zoom into Candlestick Park in the southeastern corner of this city. For the first time in 27 years, a World Series game will be played in Candlestick Park. The Battle of the Bay continues. Game three of the 1989 World Series, the Oakland Athletics against the San Francisco Giants. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to game three. It's been dominant Oakland pitching, of course, in the first two games. So Roger Craig has made some changes in the Giants lineup. Ken Oberkfell, the great pinch hitter, will start at third base. Matt Williams moves from th third base to shortstop. Jose Uribe is on the bench. Pat Sheridan takes over for Candy Maldonado in right field. Now the Giants, of course, are faced with a formidable task, having to win four or five, in essence, to win the world title. It has become less uncommon, though, in recent years for teams to overcome a two-love deficit. Most recently, it was done by the New York Mets in 1986 against the Boston Red Sox, and it was done the year before as well in 1985 by Kansas City against St. Louis. So the Giants tonight will be sending Don Robinson to the mound, and for Oakland, it will be Bob Welch, and there's no designated hitter in effect in the National League Park. Let me turn now to Tim McCarver, and, you know, Tim, we talked in game one, the final score was 5 nothing, but there was a key early play involving Terry Kennedy dropping a throw from Will Clark at the plate. We go back to game two. The score was 5-1, to one, but there were two key plays early in that one as well. Well, you don't often think of key plays in a 5-1 to one ball game, but let's go back to the top of the third inning. Will Clark the batter. The Giants have not had the lead in these two games. A 3-2 count, a split finger fastball by Mike Moore, pounced on by Terry Steinbach, the Oakland catcher, but look at the tough throw that he had to complete the play with Brett Butler running between him and Clark. F flash forward to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dave Parker barely, by inches, just misses a home run. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation, allowing Jose Canseco to score, and he fails to get Dave Parker at second base, so the Oakland A's take... take
hear you. I guess I don't hear a thing. I guess Dave Parker. Well, I don't know if we're on the air or not, and I'm not sure I hear at this particular moment, but we are. Well, folks, that's the greatest open in the history of television, bar none. <laughs> yes, it certainly did. <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> We are still, as we can tell, on the air, and I guess you are hearing us, even though we have no picture and no return audio, and we will be back, we hope, from San Francisco in just a moment. The ultimate driving machine. What a luxury car should be. Engineered like no other car in the world. A car you can believe in. These days, it seems that every luxury automaker has some sort of impressive slogan. But there's one claim that makes all the others seem insignificant. A claim that no automaker but Acura is entitled to make. Number one in customer satisfaction, three years in a row. The headache feels like a rubber band going around my head. It's the temples, the muscles down the neck. I have pain. I hurt. Today, Darnell Moore is trying extra-strength Tylenol gel caps for pain like his. Why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? No throb, no headache, and definitely no rubber band. I'm going to go with the gel caps. Gel caps work. Extra-strength gel caps only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. You know what? My dad bought a new car. So did mine. My dad got a V8. My dad got a V12. My dad got a sunroof. My dad got a convertible. My dad got a CD player. My dad got a, a car phone. My dad got Michelin. Michelin? Well, my mom's prettier than your mom. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Good morning, America. Seven o'clock, you're waking up America. You just go on in the morning, you chat, you tell people what's going on in the world, start their day off right, make them feel comfortable, get them ready to face the world. Good morning, America. Friday's favorite funny guys are held hostage. He has 20 sticks of dynamite strapped to his chest. They're not purely decorative. Perfect strangers. Could you tape his mouth? This is a hot Just the Ten of Us All Friday. Hey, Becky, you get to babysit. All right, I'm in charge! We now join our program, Roseanne, already in progress. Don't open your door for anybody. Right. And what if somebody calls? Don't tell them you're not home. Right, what do you say? You can't come to the phone right now. Right, DJ? 911. <laughs> Good boy, what else? No stove, no matches, no flames, no fire. Come on, babe, let's get a move on. Okay. Mom, if Becky has a heart attack, I'm in charge, right? Right. Mom, Darlene has a heart attack, I'm in charge. Right, DJ, if both your sisters are dead, you're in charge. <laughs> Dad, Cindy Clark's mom pays her $2 an hour to babysit. Well, Cindy Clark's mom is a rich, drunken slut. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night. Bye. Stay out our dresser drawers. <laughs> Hi, you a reservation for Connor? Sure. This way. Watch your step, Grandma. This is Charles. He'll be your waiter. Hi, Charles. I'm Roseanne, and this is Dan, and we'll be your customers. Oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, hold on. Allow me. Roseanne, what are you doing? 
I'm being romantic. Park it. <laughs> so, Charles, are you a student? Um, no, I'm a waiter. Well, that would have been my second guess. Uh, would you like something to drink? Yeah, I want something with an umbrella in it. Something tropical. <laughs> Sir? Uh, may I see your wine list, please? Ooh, Trey Gallant. And I'll have a beer while we're waiting. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll get those and be right back. Pretty nice place. Yeah. It's nice going to a restaurant that don't have a drive through This ain't so bad. Yeah. Glad I shaved. Dan? Yes? Would you do something for me? Honey, I'd do anything for you. Dance with me. Except that. I knew it, you liar. <laughs> Hey. What? Don't look now, but isn't that Patsy? Don't, I told you don't to look. Well, how can I tell if it's Patsy if I don't look? Well, look, but don't look, look. <laughs> That's her, isn't it? Yeah, but that ain't Bob. No kidding. <laughs> Who do you suppose it is? Oh, come on. It's so obvious that's her lover. This special report came to you from Eyewitness News. We now resume our regular program schedule. If you are watching the World Series, you are fully aware that San Francisco has suffered a powerful earthquake. We have reports from our crew who is covering the World Series at Candlestick Park that the authorities in San Francisco were taking injured people out of the parking lot at Candlestick Park. There apparently were injuries there. Our crew, which was at the ball game, said that emergency personnel are now taking injured people out of the parking lot at Candlestick, the site of the World Series following this earthquake that happened in San Francisco. Somebody we spoke with in the Mission District of San Francisco, which is near the middle of the city, said the earthquake knocked everything down in the house, that people ran out into the street, that aftershocks are still occurring in San Francisco. Obviously, this uh, earthquake that lasted 15 seconds said the people who felt it and the people in the big buildings downtown felt them sway back and forth has disrupted our broadcast from San Francisco. Quite obviously, you don't see the World Series on the air at the moment. And we will bring you as much information as we can as we get it. And we should be getting plenty very, very soon about what's happening in San Francisco. Now we'll go back to our regular programming. I bet you Bob refused to dance with her. Um. can't beat the feeling. We can wrap my morning place. I like to take it slow. Get my breakfast fast, then I'll make it last. It's the best time that I know. Relaxing with a good time. Great taste. You know there's only one place for my We now have more information from San Francisco about the earthquake that happened just as the World Series programming was beginning. And let us go now to Candlestick Park and ABC reporter Corey McFerrin, who has the latest from Candlestick. Corey, please. Greg and Patricia. Greg. Hi, this is Corey McFerrin in San Francisco in the parking lot. It happened about 15 minutes ago. Everyone's talking about it. It was like an ocean, the parking lot, bouncing up and down. The satellite truck, you might be able to see it behind me, 22,000 pounds worth. It was moving back and forth like a tinker toy. This is Craig, and uh, you're from San Jose. What did you see out here in the parking lot? Well, it was just like an ocean. You could see the uh, cars, the trucks just 
rippling along. I thought, though I hadn't had a beer yet, I had already had quite a number, so it's quite thrilling. And I'm a little nervous to go in there right now with aftershocks. We've seen some people coming out of the stadium in the last few minutes, frightened because of just that, possible aftershocks that might be coming. How about you? What did you compare it to? The last one around here, was it similar? We just had one a couple, well, maybe about a month ago, okay. and about 2 o'clock in the morning it happened, and I think this is a little bit stronger, if not the same. And that I think was that was about five, a 5-3 five. or 5-4, five, and we're going to say this is it matches that easily, yeah. I'm sure. It'll be interesting to hear. It happened just a little bit after 8 o'clock here, and uh, obviously with 60-some thousand people either in the stands or approaching the stands, there's quite a bit of, uh, of talk around here about just exactly how bad it was. Not eight. Or 5 o'clock, rather. Not eight, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I think that's the power and of the Giants fans. The A's better watch out that's tonight. Right. Go Giants! Oh, hey. Somebody came by a minute ago and said that's nothing compared to what Kevin Mitchell's going to do tonight that's for the Giants. All right. We'll see what happens. That's the story for right now from San Francisco. Quite obviously, a lot calmer situation than perhaps first uh, reported. We did hear that there were reports of injuries at the ballpark at Candlestick Park, the site of tonight's World Series game. You can see the fans were relatively calm and still talking baseball. We do understand that in downtown San Francisco, at your average home and office, the electricity is out, and you can see that the broadcast of the World Series is not happening anymore. We were able to bring you that report by our satellite truck that has a self-contained power source. People in downtown San Francisco said the big building swayed. People at home said everything fell off the shelves and walls, and they ran out into the street to get out from under structures, and the aftershocks were continuing. So the news is still continuing to flow in from San Francisco, and we will continue to update you as we hear things. Thank you very much for watching, and now let's go back to our regular program. We now join our regular program schedule already in progress. Hell, even I don't hate her that much. <laughs> doing? Making popcorn. Mom said we're not allowed to use the stove, remember? I'm not gonna use the stove. Well, what are you gonna do? Eat it out of the pan? No, I'm gonna take it outside and wait for a bolt of lightning to hit it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Deej. What's that for? I'm gonna eat popcorn. <laughs> With a heating pan? Our heating set would work. Oh, yeah? Hey, Mom didn't say anything against heating pads. Yeah. Go right ahead, but it won't work. You sit right here and hold this here till it starts popping. I know that. Don't say Mom and Dad aren't here. I know that. Hello? Um, they can't come to the phone right now. Um... They're in the shower, yeah, yeah. Yeah, both of them. Oh, about two more hours. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Bye. Who is that? I don't know. Hold it, I'll get the door, Darlene. Unplug that thing. That's who it is. I know that, DJ. Who is it? It's me. Me who? Aunt Jackie, open the door. But how do we know it's really you? Yeah. If you don't open the door, you're going to find out it's really me. We're not supposed to open the door for anybody. Becky, I mean it. You're late. <laughs> yeah, you were supposed to be here at 7. Where have you been? I had to go to the store and return a blouse. Oh, yeah. 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 I know how to get into this house. No, you don't. Yeah. Really? Okay, fine. I got better things to do than babysit the three little pigs. You're on your own. And Jackie? Back door. Yeah! Do you see her? Shh, I think I hear her. Where? Shh. I called. Everything's fine. Dopey finally showed up. <laughs> now, where's Chuck? 
Oh, relax. He'll be back in a minute. I want some more coffee. I'm gonna go get it. Or seeing sit down. Oh, it's okay. I'll be right back. Hey there, good looking. What about a warm up, huh? Hit me, Trixie. Yeah. I'm a little behind. Oh, that's okay, Chuck. Hey, she wants a decaf. Thanks. You know, Rosie, I've been thinking. Don't do that. No, I've been thinking about all the couples we know. Almost all of them are divorced. Well, maybe we should try it, too. Maybe we should. Okay. There, we're divorced, master. Thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> ah, well, what are you going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go dancing. <laughs> yeah, then what? Well... I guess with all that big-time child support I'm getting from you, I'm going I'm to enroll the kids in one of them fancy Swiss boarding schools, and then, with all that alimony, I guess I'll quit my job and just lay around and watch some soap operas on my brand-new big-screen TV. <laughs> what you going to do? Oh, hell, I guess the kids are gone. I'll come over to your place and watch football. <laughs> yeah, over my pit bull's dead body. <laughs> I just wanted to say goodnight and give you my new number. Oh, great. I'll call you. Great. And I also wanted to say thanks. What for? Well, you probably don't know it, but you're the one who inspired me to go to college. She did. Oh, yeah. Patrick, are you trying to pin your divorce on me? No, I pinned that on Bob. Anyway, do you remember the barbecue? You told me how you were going to be a writer, and you had all these dreams and plans, and nothing was going to stop you. Yeah, I do remember that. Well, it got me to thinking. If nothing's going to stop Roseanne, then nothing's going to stop me. I just wanted to tell you that. Well, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> well, Phil's waiting. I got to go. It's great seeing you. Great seeing you, yes. too, Patrick. Take care, Pitts. Bye. Well, you and Patsy must have had some talk at barbecue. Yeah, you men missed it. You were all off talking about the proper way of stacking charcoal briquettes. <laughs> Rosie, you never told me you still thought about writing. Yeah, I think about that, and I think about traveling, you know? There's lots of stuff I still want to do. Oh. Does that bother you? No. Well, I mean, you've got a lot of stuff. We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you a special report from ABC News. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel. Let me try and explain to you what must already be obvious to the millions of you who tuned in to watch the World Series tonight. Uh, take a look at that live picture. That is from San Francisco. That fire presumably has been caused by an earthquake that knocked both the network broadcast of the World Series off the air and has been... Uh, causing apparently some considerable damage in the San Francisco Bay Area. That fire is the only one that we are aware of right now, but what we do know from reports from the area is that uh, a number of television stations were knocked off the air. Our own uh, owned and operated station out there, KGO, which you were just watching, was briefly knocked off the air. Those who were broadcasting, Al Michaels and the others who were broadcasting the World Series to you, that signal was knocked off the air. And we have heard unconfirmed reports that at Candlestick Park, where the third game of the World Series was to be played this evening, there have been some injuries. What we wanted to do was just get on the air and let you know what we do know, which at the moment is very scant information, and to assure you that as soon as we get further information, we will be back on the air with that. To repeat, there has been an earthquake in the San Francisco Bay Area, apparently with one aftershock. The quake itself lasted about 15 seconds, has caused at least one fire that we are aware of, and some damage. There may have been some injuries at Candlestick Park. The World Series game that you presumably tuned in to watch this evening has been knocked off the air. I can't even tell you at this point 
point whether the game is going on at this moment, but we'll get more information to you as soon as we have it. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington, and hold on just one minute. We're looking at a live picture now, clearly from a... Uh, this is the east portion. What we are going to be seeing in a moment uh, is the east portion of the Bay Bridge. Obviously, we're not seeing it, but the east portion of the Bay Bridge has collapsed. So apparently that earthquake out in San Francisco, a very serious one. As I said a moment ago, as soon as we have more hard information, we will gather it together and come back on and let you know what's going on. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For now, good evening. This special report came to you from ABC News. We now resume our regular program schedule. Preparations are proceeding now in San Francisco for a resumed coverage of the game number three of the World Series. We will get back to it as soon as we possibly can. In the meantime, we will keep you informed of the situation. <laughs> Don't turn it off, you'll wake them up. Should we take the kids upstairs? You want to carry them up there? No, do you? No. We're going to give you an update right now from San Francisco. First, we're going to take a look at a very frightening picture that's broadcast live by KGO. That is the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. And you can see that the top section has collapsed down onto the bottom section. The top section is westbound traffic into San Francisco from Oakland. The bottom section is the eastbound leg going towards Oakland. This is on the Oakland side of the Bay Bridge. And you can see that one section of that bridge has collapsed and come down onto the lower deck. Now, if we can, we're going to pick up the programming of our sister station, NKGO. We're going to join them in progress for their coverage of the earthquake story. Apparently, we have no audio out of San Francisco. Let's take... We're going to show you some videotape now as you look at the Bay Bridge of what happened at Candlestick Park, which is the site of the World Series game, today's Game 3 between Oakland and San Francisco. Now, this is, this is the tape that was being showed by the network. This is the tape feature they were showing when the earthquake took place, and we'll watch and see what happens, what kind of comments are made by the network personnel. Well, and there the picture went out. That's what happened. And out it went like that. And on came the test pattern, and that is the first that all of you knew about the earthquake in San Francisco. Since then, what we have learned is that there's a tremendous amount of damage. Now let's go to Rick Lozano, who is up at Candlestick Park. Rick. Okay, thank you, Mark. Now, first of all, I should tell you back at the station that uh, we have no audio hookup with you, so we can't hear any questions that you might direct to us uh, at the end of this segment. Uh, the, the earthquake struck about uh, 20, 25 minutes ago. Uh, it is undetermined at this point uh, the, the magnitude of the earthquake, although having gone through the Whittier earthquake uh, a year ago, November or October, whenever it struck, it felt it, at least that strong. Now, we hear that part of the Bay Bridge connecting San Francisco to Oakland has collapsed. Further reports uh, have not yet come to us. I am standing by with police officer Dwayne Collins of the San Francisco Police Department. Officer, thanks for taking the time to be with us. What uh, information has been relayed to you yet, if any? Well, at this uh, point, Rick, everything is very, very sketchy. And we do have un unconfirmed reports of buildings collapsed on the south side of Market Street. We looked over our shoulder here a second ago. We can't see it because uh, the people have it blocked out, but there is a huge fire somewhere coming uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere from the uh, downtown area of San Francisco. Now, here at the stadium, um, we saw people heading for the exits immediately. Yes, that's true. All, apparently, all the power is out inside the stadium. 
And uh, I notice now that some of the lights are coming back on, so I assume the only damage to the stadium was going to be a late start. Now, as we stood here waiting for game time to approach, the earthquake struck. Um, in the past, having experienced earthquakes, we feel the, the approach of the earthquake, if you will. In this case, it did not take uh, very long for the, the main jolt to hit. So we suspect at this time that the epicenter of the earthquake was somewhere very close to this proximity. I want to go back to Officer Collins at this point and uh, find out from you, sir, what is the protocol? What happens in a, in a situation like this uh, when you have an earthquake uh, from the police uh, standpoint? Well, at this point, we try to find out who needs emergency aid as far as injured, respond to that first, any fires that might arise. Uh, again, at this point, we have no report of any fires downtown. Officer, thanks for taking the time to be with us. We are going to toss it back to Los Angeles. Again, the, uh, the earthquake struck maybe 20, 25 minutes ago. We will bring you up to date on any developments that happen from this end. That's it for now. Rick Lozano reporting live from San Francisco. Back to you in Los Angeles now. Rick, thank you very much. Uh, we do know that the earthquake lasted 15 seconds, was felt all over northern and central California, as far away as Fresno, which is 120 miles from San Francisco, and Sacramento. Now let's go to KGO reporter Lisa Stark. Okay. We have not been able to confirm that there are cracks up there. Really. That's big, right? Yeah. I was in the upper deck right behind home plate, just out here to watch the ball game yeah. tonight. And when the first shake started to hit, there were several aircraft right above us, and I immediately started to think it was vibration from the aircraft, but then it really, really started to roll, right. really started to punch, and the, the windows in the press boxes out in, in uh, along the left field line started to shake, the lights went out. Right. People were relatively calm. There, I can tell you that there are cracks in the concrete up there. We are now going to join ABC Network for the further update on the earthquake in San Francisco. It's so strong, in fact, that it has, among other things, knocked out all the power uh, or much of the power at Candlestick Park, where the third game of the World Series was being played. But in the overall scheme of things, that may be the very least of things that has happened today. Let me show you a piece of video that just came in uh, a few minutes ago. This is, if you look carefully there, you will see that the upper span, that's the Bay Bridge, that connects Oakland and uh, San Francisco. The upper span of that bridge has collapsed there, at least the segment has collapsed. As that video moves in a little bit closer, you'll see there is at least one vehicle down there that uh, uh, apparently slid off the edge of the segment on the left and is now trapped in the crevice there of that segment that is down uh, at an angle. There are many vehicles still on <clears throat> that lower span of the Bay Bridge. You can see people walking around there. They don't seem to be in any immediate danger, but the tremors that uh, shook much of San Francisco, apparently the quake lasted for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then there was an afterquake. I have on the line with me two of my colleagues, Bruce Hall and Mark Nelson. Mark Nelson is out at Candlestick Park. They're on by phone. Uh, this is a live <coughs> shot from our affiliate, our own and operated station in San Francisco, KGO, and you can see that there are at least two major fires that seem to be in progress there, but I'll tell you what, let me go instead now to Bruce Hall, who is at our bureau in San Francisco, and Bruce, maybe you can just give me a sense of what happened, when it happened, and how you became aware of the fact that there was an earthquake in progress. All right, I was getting ready to record the World Series, and the first thing, there were some tremors, which didn't seem unusually strong. It just seemed like a regular kind of earthquake. Then the signal went off the air, and then uh, the whole building shook extremely violently. It was going back and forth and up and down, and this, I would think, for about five or six uh, seconds. Drop to you any time, Ted. And I went to a doorway and stayed there. We have had some minor damage uh, around the building. There are cracks in the plaster. We lost a plate glass window out of the bureau on the other side of the building, and uh, there were bricks kicked up, about six or eight of them, uh, from right in front of the entrance here, KGO. Let me just interrupt you for a moment. You were looking, uh, while Bruce Hall was talking, our audience was looking, Bruce, at some live video that was apparently being shot from a helicopter, and it looked as though one of the major highways there was rather severely buckled. Uh, we are getting preliminary information from Candlestick Park, but perhaps it's best to go to my colleague, uh, Mark Nelson, who is out at Candlestick. What's happening at the moment, Mark? Well, Ted, um, people are milling around inside the stadium. The field is empty. None of the players are out. 
There are nine towers that light the stadium. Um, from my vantage point, I only see one row on one of the towers that appears to have any power. Outside, where all the trailers, the television trucks are, um, engineers are frantically trying to hook up um, uh, power, auxiliary power. Um, I can tell you that in the trailer I'm sitting in now, there is none. I'm on one of three working phones. When the tremor hit, and it was a, a, a pretty wild, violent tremor, it lasted for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Um, people started screaming and running, um, and uh, there, there was a great deal of confusion. That's about all I can tell you right now. All right, Mark, I'll tell you what, let's move on, and we are sort of moving in and out with different colleagues of ours as we become uh, aware of the fact that we're able to communicate with them either by phone. I am told that we can get, I hope, both sound and picture from Rick Lozano of KBC Sports. Uh, Rick, can you hear me? I sure can, Ted. And you are there with uh, San Francisco police officer? Yes, we have uh, Officer Dwayne Collins with us. And uh, first, I should tell you that we just established audio contact with you very recently, so I haven't been able to hear all that you've uh, said so far, Ted. I can tell you that uh, part of the San Francisco Bay Bridge, the Bay Bridge has uh, collapsed in a certain section, uh, unconfirmed reports of injury at this time. Here at Candlestick Park, as soon as the tremor struck, uh, people started uh, heading for the exits. It was a wild scene here for, for a short time. Uh, personally, I was in a, in a, a hallway, uh, an enclosed hallway, and it was, it was quite a scene in there, something I've never experienced before. With me, Officer Dwayne Collins of the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, officer, what can you tell us at this time from an official standpoint? Well, nothing at an official standpoint. Everything is still very sketchy. They're still trying to find out what happened. We do know that there was a collapse on the Bay Bridge, and we do have unconfirmed reports that some buildings have collapsed on the south side of Market Street. What about here at Candlestick Park? Uh, any reports of injuries or structural damage to the stadium? No uh, reports of injuries at this point. There's a few shaken up people, obviously. And as far as visible injury, we are visible damage to the stadium. We haven't found any. Living in San Francisco in the Bay Area, you're accustomed to, to earth tremors. How strong would you estimate this one to have been? This was a good, uh, pretty good shaker. It was well over five, probably six. Ted, I can tell you, uh, living in Southern California in Los Angeles, that it, uh, this one measured at least as strong as the Whittier quake of a couple of years ago. Um, the epicenter has not yet been pinpointed, although it did not take very long for the main thrust of the jolt to hit here. So I would imagine that uh, the epicenter was quite nearby. That's well, going to do it for now, Ted. We'll throw it back to you in New York. Rick, thanks very much. Uh, you're both uh, pretty good at guesstimating your, uh, your Richter scale because we now have some preliminary indications that the Richter reading was actually a 6.5. So this was a fairly hefty, indeed a very hefty earthquake. Uh, and I am told that we have some street scenes from San Francisco. Uh, if we have those ready, uh, let's take a look at them right now. We are looking at these for the first time uh, as you see them. area so was firm phone service we're told now that some phone store service has been restored here you can see people were screaming you could definitely feel the quake i was also just told by a police officer that there are some cracks in the upper rim of candlestick half inch cracks is what he is saying in the upper rim of candlestick and they have also closed the overpass now on jamestown into candlestick all right, I must tell you that uh, among the things that is happening here is that we are getting snatches of information from different parts of town, and it's like the old uh, legend of the blind men touching the elephant. Depending on which part of the animal they are touching, they are describing different scenes. You can see, on the one hand, people there in the street scenes uh, almost in a festive mood, but I must tell you this was a serious earthquake. There has been serious damage. If you've been with us for the past few minutes, you will have seen that the upper span of the Bay Bridge, at least a significant segment of it, collapsed. There are reports of buildings having collapsed in San Francisco. We have seen, and as I say, if you've been with us, you have seen, uh, some rather significant fires that apparently have been caused by the earthquake. As for injuries or possibly even fatalities, uh, I mentioned to you earlier that there were some initial reports of some injuries at Candlestick Park, and you probably just heard the voice of a uh, 
a KGO reporter who was talking about some cracks in the uh, superstructure at Candlestick Park. I must tell you, however, that uh, I have a piece of wire copy here which is saying that a giant spokesman said police were advising fans to remain at Candlestick Park precisely because the park is considered to be structurally sound. So just to summarize for you, and uh, we are trying to make contact with my ABC sports colleague Al Michaels, who was obviously in the park to uh, report on the third game of the World Series, uh, but who is now there to report on a rather significant news story. Uh, let me just bring you up to speed again. Just as the game was about to begin, there was a, an earthquake that apparently lasted about 15 seconds and was felt as far away as 90 miles. There is a piece of videotape that was recorded, uh, oh, I guess about a half hour ago or so, and you can see that there is a segment of the upper span of the Bay Bridge, that is the bridge that connects Oakland, California with San Francisco. There is a segment of that bridge that has collapsed we have reports of a number of buildings that have collapsed in and around the San Francisco area. And quite frankly, what we are doing at the moment is just trying to gather that information so that we can put it into some kind of coherent form for you. I should point out uh, that until we do that, all I can give you is sort of the same summary that I've been giving you until now. I don't see any particular point in babbling on here and just telling you what's going on uh, until we get some more information. So let's close it up now. A 6.5 reading on the Richter scale. You can see some video there. I gather that's live video of Candlestick Park. And we, we are feeling a shock right now. And that shaking in your picture is being amplified by the... Uh, tremor that has just gone through the top of the stadium and we are live they're taking the bases off uh, 841 Eastern 541 and we just felt it out here we're at ground level and now 6.5 Richter is what ABC is reporting this shock to be um, and, and it is quite obvious now quite obvious that this is not a it never has been a baseball story it is much larger than the events going on at Canada all right what you saw uh, is self-explanatory. The, uh, the game has clearly been delayed, if not called off the evening. We'll tell you uh, that clearly, given the context of everything else that's happening here tonight, is one of the lesser aspects of the story, but you can see the crack in the, in the sidewalk there. Um, again, a rather massive earthquake, 6.5 on the Richter scale, fires in San Francisco, a segment of the Bay Bridge down, the game delayed, deferred. Uh, possibly even canceled, and we will give you more information as soon as it becomes available to us and we can put it into some sort of coherent form. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. We'll be back a little bit later. This special report came to you from ABC News. We now resume our regular program schedule. This is Mark Coogan in Los Angeles. We understand now, you saw the video of the Bay Bridge where the upper deck had collapsed under the lower deck. We understand there are people in the water beneath that section of the Oakland-San Francisco Bay Bridge, and it's not known if those people are alive or not. Let us rejoin KGO, our sister station in San Francisco, and pick up their live coverage. Wrong. Let's go to Anna. Stand by for just one second. We're going to sure. go to Leslie Brinkley first. Okay, let's take Leslie. Go ahead, Leslie. We're out here on the Bay Bridge. In fact, we were driving over the Bay Bridge when the earthquake struck. We understand from the Caltrans folks that the top portion, that 50-foot portion you saw before, did collapse onto the bottom of the Bay Bridge. We understand that two cars that were driving on the top also fell with that piece, but the people uh, escaped their cars uninjured. We are not certain right now as to the fate of the folks uh, that that portion fell onto. Some folks on the bottom level driving towards Oakland told us that they saw in their rearview mirror what looked like a garage door coming down and that they did see that portion of the bridge collapse onto several cars. We have no reports of injuries at this point. We have seen no ambulances go onto the bridge, uh, but we are still waiting for final word on that from Caltrans. Uh, all the folks we talked to, as well as ourselves, described this as an incredible uh, rolling motion. Uh, it felt as though uh, there were, was a major flat tire. We saw uh, crumblings from the 
bridge falling down all around us as we just barely got to this Oakland end of it. It was very, very frightening. Some folks said they uh, stopped their cars and felt like jumping in the water. It was a very harrowing, very uh, frightening experience. Uh, we also understand that at 880, some cars fell off the freeway there and that that road is also closed right now. Uh, it's really a disastrous situation here. There are huge cracks, sometimes with two and three inch gaps in the roadway and the freeway going on to the Bay Bridge here uh, on the Oakland side. In the distance, you see smoke from uh, a fire in Berkeley. Uh, we don't know any details on that right now, but across the horizon, we have seen several streams of smoke in different directions. Uh, there is the water main that goes from Oakland to San Francisco that we are told broke. Uh, there is water on one side of the freeway as you come over the bridge, and uh, we don't know the extent to which that is going to cause problems uh, on both sides of the bay. Uh, again, we do know that the bridge collapsed. There were two cars on top. Those folks escaped without injury, and we do not know what happened to those cars on the bottom level of the bridge when it did collapse a short while ago. Back to you, folks. Leslie, I had a lot of information coming to me as you were speaking, so I did not get to ask you about the black smoke that was in the sky behind you during the cameras pan around. Do you know whether or not that's related to this? No, we don't right now. Details are sketchy. We're getting so many reports of so much damage in every direction that uh, we're giving you what we have as we get it. Okay. Did you feel the quake yourself? Yes, we did. As we drove in the car, as I said, it first of all felt like a very bad blowout, a flat tire, and then all three of us in the vehicle uh, noticed that there were pieces, crumblings coming from the top of the bridge. And one man described it as being in the twilight zone and just not having any, any sense of reality. It was all so bizarre, all so uh, frightening and scary. Uh, we had many different descriptions from people as they drove over. We were just about several hundred feet in front of uh, the cars that were trapped in that portion behind us, so we came very close to being in the middle of it there. Uh, again, the road is closed, the bridge is closed, uh, there's fear of an aftershock, and they're keeping cars off this entire stretch of roadway. Okay, Leslie, thank you very much. Ana Chavez, you've been standing by patiently with a map to help us pinpoint this. Go ahead, Ana. Well, Cheryl, for those people who are just tuning in now, we have preliminary... We're going to go back to San Francisco now to our sports reporter, Rick Lozano, who was up there to cover the World Series and was with a live satellite truck in the parking lot at Candlestick Park. Rick, if you please. Okay, well, listen, they had wanted uh, something to spark up this uh, World Series so far. They, they didn't have this in mind, I don't think. Quite a surprise for the people who showed up for Game 3 of the World Series. Bill uh, Wheeler, standing here with me, was uh, up in the, the upper deck. Section 43. You were up in the Euchre seats, right and, uh, boy, it, it must have rocked you up there. It, was, it rocked uh, real good. I don't think I've ever felt one like that. Uh, maybe it was a stadium going, but uh, it rolled pretty good. As uh, earthquakes go, and I'm sure that you've been through some tremors oh, yeah. here before, how did this one uh, rank? Uh, it's, it's right up there with the best of them. From where I was sitting up in the top of the stadium, it... Uh, it rolled pretty good. As a matter of fact, the one section over, they had a big crack in it. We saw that. We also saw the light pole over here, and that's off center. Was there any uh, panic where you were sitting? Uh, not very much, no. It was a little bit, but as uh, soon as a lot of people understood what it was, then uh, a lot of the, they got a little shook up, and then they started leaving. I'm going to bring your wife in here for just a second. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll get you in. You, you seem to still be shaken up by all of this. Well, I am a little bit, for sure. Uh, it was pretty scary. Where you, uh, you've been through the the earthquake syndrome before, and how did this uh, uh, compare to the others? Well, it felt to me the hardest one I've ever been in, and I've been in quite a few. It was uh, having that having that uh, cement overhang over your head didn't give you too secure of a feeling. Okay. Oh, here we go. Now, this is a, a clear illustration of just what the earthquake was able to do. Uh, this is a part of Candlestick Park, uh, I, I assume. Upper deck. That, did you actually find the, find, see that come that crumbling down? Out? No, it was already down. Big split in the upper deck. And, it, and this was in a pile. I just picked it up coming down. Your name, sir? Wayne Fulmer. From? Stockton, California. And you've uh, felt earthquakes before? Yeah, not yeah. like this one. This one was something else? We were right near the rail on the upper deck. It was just a wave. I fell over my son, wrapped myself around him. It was traumatic, to say the least. Right. Was there panic up where you were? Somewhat. People start saying, don't panic, don't panic. And uh, wives and husbands start holding on to each other. Children, we start gathering in. 
so things slowed down a little bit, but that first part had us going for the exits. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. Um, we have just established audio contact with you back in Los Angeles, so I'm not uh, clear as to what has been said about the earthquake. I can tell you that part of the, the Bay Bridge that connects San Francisco to Oakland has collapsed. Perhaps you have that information already. Uh, the game, we are still awaiting word as to whether it has been uh, called off. It has been called off. The game has officially been Good. called off at this point. Uh, as to uh, the injury, we're not yet certain. We're still uh, waiting to get official word from the San Francisco Police Department. That's going to do it for now. We'll throw it back to you in Los Angeles. Rick, can you hear Can you hear us talking, Laura and myself? I can still hear you, yes, Mark. Did you see anybody injured at the ballpark? No, I have not seen anyone injured uh, as yet. I can tell you uh, that I was standing in an enclosed hallway that uh, goes all the way around uh, Candlestick Park. It was scary, Mark. Uh, we, uh, of course, went through the Whittier Creek uh, about a couple of years ago. This one was every bit as scary as that one was. And uh, we have some problems going on here, so we're going to have to uh, throw it back to you in Los Angeles. Okay. okay. Ricky, thank you very much. Thanks a lot right. to Rick Lozano, who was on the scene. We are going to take a picture now of some of the dramatic video that was shown a little bit earlier of the Bay Bridge. Uh, apparently, we're not seeing that right now. A fire that broke out not far from there. You can see the black smoke still burning out of control at this hour. Uh, we don't know at this time if there was anyone inside. Now we see the Bay Bridge. Uh, that collapsed, a portion of it collapsed, and we are told that there are actually people in the water. We have no sense if they are dead or if they are alive. And Mark, yeah. you were saying a little bit earlier it was the westbound portion of that bridge that collapsed, well, the portion of it? The top lane that you see here is the westbound portion that goes into San Francisco, and it is down onto the eastbound or bottom lower deck of the uh, Oakland-San Francisco Bay Bridge. There's an AC Transit bus, I believe, that you can see pulled up just short of the site where the bridge collapsed. I think that's what the bus is there on the left, and then there's a little car in that draw there in between uh, sections. As you know, we keep getting reports that it gets worse and worse. Here's a fire going in San Francisco. Now, take a look at this. This is a collapsed double-deck freeway, and I believe it is the 280 freeway that runs through the south of Market Industrial Area in San Francisco. You can see vehicles on fire. You can see that it's a double-deck structure that has collapsed. It's pancaked down on top of itself. This is videotape that we have shown earlier, that we had earlier from San Francisco. It was taken by a helicopter and transmitted to us by satellite from KGO because the electricity all around San Francisco went off right after this earthquake struck, just as the World Series was starting today, right about 5 o'clock. We understand from preliminary estimates from Caltech that the magnitude was 6.5. 6.5, Mark, and I'm told now that we have some brand new tape in from ESPN that shows an aftershock that occurred shortly after that big quake. Let's take a look. PD, and we have an aftershock. Right now. You can see it. Slight, uh, yeah, slight you can see it. Right now. And we, we are feeling a shock right now, and that shaking in your picture is being amplified by the uh, tremor that has just gone through the top of the stadium. And we are live. They're taking the bases off, uh, 841 Eastern, 541, and we just felt it out here. We're at ground level. ESPN, one of the sports adjuncts of ABC. We're now going to go back to KGO, our affiliate in San Francisco, for more live coverage. AC seems to have it pretty much under control. They have a gentleman with a loudspeaker out here uh, who's been telling uh, folks what to do and where to go. The fire department's just coming out. Uh, the, there was smoke in the building. Uh, folks are, are kind of, uh, well, they're taking it kind of easy. Nobody seems to be really upset. And the man on the bullhorn came out and said the Giants game has been canceled and there was a loud cheer. Okay, George, I think that uh, you dropped out there. I'm getting instructions, uh, some directions here. Apparently, we do have that picture now of our police chief, the police chief of San Francisco, Frank Jordan, uh, attempting to coordinate emergency services. Do we have that tape right now? Okay. Chief Jordan, Chief Jordan, Chief Jordan, a few words. Do you know the extent of what's happened so far? No, not all I have at this point is I talked to our operations center. They say that there is a building with partial damage at 6th and Brandon. There's also a building with uh, partial collapse around Turk and Fillmore, and that there is some structural damage to the Hall of Justice. I'm going to be leaving the ballpark now to go down to the Hall of Justice while they're continuing to get an estimate around the city of any kind of damage, and then we'll make a determination there. Okay. Uh, late word right now from the UC Berkeley Seismology. Okay. We're back live in Los Angeles now, and we're going to go to a seismologist at Caltech. That's right. Our Henry Alfaro is standing by. Henry, what can you tell us? 
Well, we are here at Caltech, and with me is seismologist Kate Hutton. Kate, I over overheard some of the people here call it a damn big quake. Just how big? Uh, according to Berkeley, it's between 6.5 and 7, which makes it uh, one of the largest earthquakes recently in California. Was this a rupture, or how do you describe it? Um, it was probably on the San Andreas Fault, about 10 miles north of Santa Cruz. Uh, so it was probably a strike-slip movement, although that's speculation at this time. When we talk about a strike-slip, please describe it hand-wise. Horizontal motion, one side northwest and the other side southeast. Is that the reason for the major destruction that uh, we've been able to, or at least the reports of major destruction up in San Francisco? Well, the reason for the damage is because it was a large earthquake close, close to a metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's um, what we expect from that kind of thing. In comparison to what quake here in Southern California? Well, the San Fernando earthquake was 6.4, uh, so this is larger than the San Fernando earthquake, uh, but smaller than the 1952 Kern County earthquake. And what about the aftershocks? How severe? How many? Um, we haven't gotten all the numbers on the aftershocks yet. We just know that there have been some. Mm -hmm. And have you been able to contact or talk to anybody up in Berkeley? Um, we talked to some people at the seismographic station in Berkeley and some people at the USGS in Menlo Park. Um, and they're all scrambling to get the best data that they can. Uh, things are a little crazy, of course. What is the most current information that you've received here at Caltech based on the, all of the seismographs that you have here? Now, that information that I just gave you, 6.5 to 7, is the latest information that we have. What about the epicenter? About 10 miles north of Santa Cruz, along the San Andreas Fault. I see. And there have also been reports of minor quakes here in Southern California. Have you, have you been able to record any of those? I believe that the people in the valley who felt earthquakes were actually feeling this earthquake from San Francisco. I think that's marginally possible. If you were sitting still, um, that you would have feel it. So was that severe? Once again, it was a strike, and that causes a lot of problems, obviously. Um, the major epicenter north of San Francisco, uh, have you had any in indications in the past? Has that been an active area? Okay, this area was north of Santa Cruz, and it has been a, a place of scientific and, uh, and bureaucratic interest in terms of earthquakes for uh, a few months. I don't have the details on that. I think you should try to get the USGS uh, in Menlo Park to uh, go into that. Again, here in Southern California, we've gone through so many earthquakes in the past. Something happens in San Francisco. It's been felt as far south as Santa Barbara. Any chances that it could also have a repercussion here in Southern California? Can we expect something here, or is this, uh, again, crystal balling? Well, most earthquakes don't cause sympathetic earthquakes in other areas, so um, mostly uh, the problems will be in the northern part, in the Bay Area, I think. Well, they keep getting more uh, aftershocks up there. Oh, it's normal that they would have aftershocks for weeks or months after a six-and-a-half earthquake. So once again, here at Caltech, they've measured, uh, me the measure actually is between 6.5 and 7. It's equivalent to the major earthquake that we had here in February of 1970. So once again, we'll continue to stand by here at Caltech and report any further uh, information. Back to you in the studio. Okay. We are going to the network right now for right. the very latest information. And at 8.04, that's Pacific Daylight Time, uh, rather 5.04 Pacific Daylight Time, 8.04 Eastern Daylight Time, the... Uh, Electricity at Candlestick Park, where the third game of the World Series was just about to get underway, was knocked out. Within the past few minutes, the acting commissioner of baseball, Faye Vincent, has just announced that tonight's game has been suspended. They are at the moment trying to evacuate Candlestick Park, which is further south in the Bay Area. You are right now looking at San Quentin, I believe. Oh, yes, San Quentin. Um... And, um, no, that is not San Quentin, forgive me, but I should point out to you that the, uh, that was Treasure Island we were just looking at, that the Bay Bridge, which connects Oakland and San Francisco, has lost a 50-foot span. Uh, there is at least one vehicle that is trapped in that area. You're looking at video of that right now, and I think if the camera moves in a little bit closer, you will see the one vehicle that is trapped. There is at least one wire service report of some people who were seen floating in the water. Uh, below. I have not seen that on any video, have not heard it confirmed anywhere, uh, but there have been several segments of highway that have been buckled. My ABC sports colleague Al Michaels, I believe, can hear me. Al, are you still at Candlestick Park? Nothing. Okay. What is he doing? He's doing a straight lead. Al, can you hear me? Al Michaels? 
This is Al Michaels. I'm in our production truck. You're looking at a fire, obviously, in the city of San Francisco. Just to relate what it felt like at Candlestick Park, and, and I have lived in California for the better part of 20 years, Fortunately, there was no jolt. There was no question once it started that I knew it was an earthquake, and I think most people in this area knew immediately it was an earthquake, and then you kind of, you wait for either a jolt or for it to stop. It was a, a steady sort of shake and roll, and it was an extremely uneasy moment because uh, we just happened to be on camera doing our pregame show, and the sense I got for a split second was that we were going backwards. And in fact, where we would sit in the mezzanine, an overhanging booth, uh, we were susceptible to uh, being a part of the collapse of the upper deck, uh, in addition to, to uh, falling down below or having it collapse down below. You are looking now at a shot of the cantilever section of the Bay Bridge. That is not the main section, but that apparently is where, from what I can tell right now, the, the major damage has been done. It is the primary link, of course, between the cities of San Francisco and Oakland, and it's uh, graphically illustrated right there. Uh, fortunately, and, and there, of course, is a, a car in, in between the collapsed sections. We have, of course, it, uh, from our uh, vantage point here and from what we know, I'm sure you have far more information about that, Ted, but uh, all I can say is that uh, very, very fortunately for some 60,000 people at Candlestick Park, the epicenter was not that close to the ballpark, uh, but certainly uh, as unnerving an experience as I can recall by far in 20 years of living in California. We understand now as you look at a, a fire in San Francisco that appears to me to be somewhere in the neighborhood of the Marina District, we have Gary Thorne who is still in the ballpark with the Commissioner of Baseball, Faye Vincent. Gary, can you hear me? Well, uh, thank you very much, Commissioner. It's obviously uh, been very busy here since this has occurred. Commissioner, tell us exactly what the situation is as far as the games are concerned. Well, we'll wait to see tomorrow. Uh, we hope to play the third game here, but we obviously have to check the stadium and be sure there's no damage that would put anybody at risk. What was the initial uh, information that you have from the people here at the stadium as to whether or not there might be any structural damage? Well, there are some cracks. Uh, I, I don't think anybody's in a position to evaluate them. We'll get that done tomorrow and try to make a judgment early in the day whether we can play tomorrow night. Tell us about the process you went through here once yourself. What was your reaction to it? Because you, like many of us, have not been through one before. Well, I didn't know enough to be frightened. I, I was standing and started to shake, and uh, at first I thought it was a jet. And my wife said, oh, it's an earthquake, and I realized then that we were having an earthquake. What will you do now tonight? Will there be more meetings tonight with anyone in particular? You know, I have no idea, Gary. I'm, I'm waiting here to see uh, the stadium uh, evacuate. I think people have handled this very nicely, the police and uh, the people in the stadium have done a superb job. I'm very pleased. We need to get everybody out of here before it gets dark, which was the governing factor in the decision to call the game. Uh, you lost all the power in here, so without any electricity, obviously, you weren't going anywhere. Uh, we couldn't play, but even more importantly, we couldn't take a chance on having people here when it got dark. And the governing factor was to get people to leave while there was enough light. And uh, seemingly, things have been very orderly down here. There has been no problem. There was one fan who suffered some sort of an attack and was taken down to the bench. One of the interesting things, Commissioner, was the players and their wives leaving as the wives came down and children onto the field to go with their husbands. Well, yes. I think uh, a lot of people felt they were better off at the pitcher's mound. Uh, but it was a very nice uh, performance by everybody involved, and I commend all those who participated, including the fans. I think the fans of baseball were terrific. Will the game go on tomorrow if there are not structural damages here that would prevent people from coming in? I would think so, yes. We need to uh, talk to the police and be sure we know enough about the entire community. We, we don't know anything now, and we'll make that judgment in the morning. If the ballpark was structurally damaged so that you could not put people back in here, would you consider playing elsewhere, say Oakland? Well, we'll see about that tomorrow. I don't know what our options are, but we'll look at them all in the morning. Will the final decision on that be yours? Yes, it will. Okay. That's the uh, Commissioner, Faye Vincent, joining us. Thank you very much for doing that. And obviously, a large crowd still gathered on the field. Al? Well, you've seen some of the reaction at Candlestick Park, where Game 3 of the World Series was canceled. Here is the reaction of one of the Giants' outfielders, Candy Maldonado. We were down on the ground, and I was over there in my locker, and I hear this noise. And I remember Don, Don Robinson was coming in. 
sounds like an earthquake. And then this thing started to really... Yeah. I said, wait, and as I said, the light went off. And, you know, the this lights were going back and forth. It went off. And I just looked for the door out. I said, I'm going to be outside. Yeah. And I made it. Wow. I think everybody well, would head for the center of the field. I would think so, and I tell you, the consideration about where to have Game 3 of the World Series may be minor because the damage may be spreading. We understand now that the double-deck freeway you saw collapsed was Highway 17, the Nimitz Freeway, mm -hmm. and that is on the Oakland side of the Bay Bridge. Harold Green, Bill Press, you guys are familiar with the Bay Area, and you've been mm -hmm. listening into what's happening. Well, I was just monitoring uh, one of the Bay Area radio stations, and uh, there are several problems right now. One, they're trying to bring in all off-duty firefighters in the Bay Area right now, trying to get them in to fight some of the fires that we have been watching here live from uh, our sister station, KGO in San Francisco. There are reports of uh, heavy shaking all the way from Gilroy, which of course is south of San Jose, south of uh, San Francisco proper, into Marin County. Most of the people there are saying that the shaking was substantial. Uh, one woman spoke of being inside a Target store and that the bicycles that were in the uh, 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 being held on the ceiling there began to drop. People ran outside. Surprisingly, most of the people we've heard from in the San Francisco Bay Area so far have said there hasn't been any evidence of any kind of panic. One of the main problems they're facing right now is a lack of phone service. Mm -hmm. Electricity is out in many areas. The phone service is out. And those people now are faced with something we have been told about for the last 50 years here in California. They're going to be on their own for a while. That the services that they had hoped would uh, would be there for them tonight are not going to be there. They're probably bringing out candles right now and the like, trying to uh, trying to ride this thing out. Many of them are in a lot better position than we are right now. They don't have electricity to watch a live picture as we are right here, which shows ever so vividly the collapse of the Bay Bridge. Harold, I think this uh, photograph, again, which we've seen so many times, points out um, we don't realize how this earthquake is going to paralyze that bay area which mm -hmm. is so dependent on transportation we've seen this major link between the east bay and the west bay between san francisco and oakland and then the other pictures of that nimitz freeway which uh, which is the main artery bringing people mm -hmm. from oakland into san francisco to the bay bridge or from uh, contra costa county and farther out down by the oakland airport we can uh, assume as well that at this hour because of the world this is series, the nimitz freeway here right. that goes down mm -hmm. along the oakland waterfront near exactly. jack london square down to uh, oakland airport because the bay area right now is so consumed with this bay area world series we know for a fact that the freeways were not nearly as clogged as they would be on a on a regular on a regular Tuesday. Oh, and yeah. so what we've had is a bit of a break in that area. You've got the freeways here. Now, you have people, of course, that are on these spans that are unable to get off them right now. And, the, and, you, and you know they're in a very precarious position. Now, something I haven't mentioned is the fact that there have been numerous aftershocks that have been rumbling through the Bay Area constantly. Mm -hmm. I believe some of the uh, Al Michaels and some of the other mm -hmm. people mentioned in the outlying areas, they're saying uh, they've had at least a dozen of these aftershocks. Now, if you're stranded on one of these spans, right now, you've got to be a nervous wreck at this hour. And talk about the, how far away this quake was felt. I was driving here to the studio at about 5 after 5 when the quake hit there, mm -hmm. talking to a friend of mine in Century City in a high-rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh-oh, there's been a serious earthquake. I immediately switched on the car radio to news, and it was reported that earthquake was in San Francisco to show how far that, that Report, baby was Similar going. reports in the Bay Area. We have our Rick Lozano standing by live right now. Rick has been covering the World Series for us at Channel 7. Rick, if you're on the line, if you can bring us up to date uh, as to what you know that's taking place right now in Candlestick Park. Well, Harold, we're looking for ways to spice up this rather lackluster World Series, and I think uh, with the earthquake this afternoon, they got a lot more than they bargained for. We are standing by with a couple of fellows who came to Game 3. Uh, they're not going to get a chance to see it tonight, anyway. This is Al Clark of Seattle. This is uh, Gary... Greg Haney. Greg Haney of Pacifica, and they have physical evidence to show you what the earthquake did to Candlestick Park. They were sitting in Section 51, and Greg has... Uh, I brought home a souvenir. Come close. <laughs> this has turned into somewhat of a, a souvenir hunt for, for, for people here. It's a 40-pound block of candlestick park that came tumbling down. Now, luckily, you weren't nearby when it came That's down, correct. but you, you were close by. What was it like where you sat? It was really crazy. The seats were shaking back and forth. It, it was a split between 51 and 53, and I can see why they called the game, because the structure is definitely out of it. And we need a new ballpark in San Francisco. Please vote yes. On well, this is not going to turn into a lobby for a new ballpark in San Francisco. It is, however, going to continue uh, as a report uh, on the earthquake that's occurred here. This is not the first 50-pound block of Candlestick Park that we have seen. Uh, where you picked this up from was there other debris. 
there was lots of debris. The, the stadium had shaken. There's a metal divider between the two sections, and the section had actually snapped the, the metal divider between the two pieces. And you can see across the ballpark where it had done the same thing on the se separate side of the ballpark where it's shaken a split. Like so it was would, architecturally built correct, so we get it would give so it wouldn't fall down. Are you going to go back and sit in the same seat? I'll sit in Candlestick again. I love Candlestick. Yeah. Let me go over to Al Clark. Al, you came from Seattle to the World Series. Uh, you ever gone through anything like this before? Nothing this severe. Hey. What were you thinking when it happened? Huh. Thought I was going to heaven. That's what I was thinking. I didn't really know what to think. I mean, it, the light stanches are swinging. The top of the stadium was just shaking apart. So well. Hang in there. Hopefully you won't have to go through it again. Great. We're going to swing over to our left here and talk to Matt Young, former Los Angeles Dodger relief pitcher, now with the Oakland A's. And Matt, you guys were all set to play baseball. We're all set. You know, the, uh, coming in here, they said the Dodgers were going to rock us a little bit, but I don't think anybody took them literally. What was it from your vantage point uh, when the uh, the earthquake struck? What did you see, and what were you thinking? Well, I was in the clubhouse at the time. I, and from my past experiences of growing up in Southern California, I knew right away what it was. So, uh, I just all I could envision was the whole uh, clubhouse. You know, it's on the bottom floor and two levels coming down on us. So, uh, I just hightailed it out of there. Went out to the back parking lot. We want to stay as focused as we can on the impact of the earthquake and how, is it, how it's affected the people here. But from the standpoint of the World Series and not being able to play the ball game tonight, what is that going to do to, to either team? Uh, I think it's going to help us because uh, Bob Wells was nursing a, uh, a slight growing pull, so he'll get another day's rest. Uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll definitely go down in the... Uh, the, the chapters, you know, it's going to be a, a chapter to somebody's book. Matt, thanks for taking the time to be with us, and hopefully we'll get this uh, World Series resumed as quickly as possible. i, I got to tell everybody, uh, all, all my friends and family back home, that, that everybody up here is all right. Everybody here, as far as we can see, is all right. Thanks, Matt, for taking the time to join us. We're going to throw it back to you in Los Angeles. Hopefully we'll, we'll have some more news for you in just a few short moments. Right, okay, Good thanks job. a lot, Rick. Now we're going to go live to Caltech, where Henry Alfaro is standing by. Henry. Well, Harold and um, Laura, you're, what you're looking at right here is the seismograph, and you can see all of the activity that measured all uh, the earthquake that hit in, up in the San Francisco area shortly after 5 o'clock. With me is Steve Bryan, an analyst here at Caltech. And Steve, what does that indicate there? Well, what we're seeing is the actual, the first earthquake, the one occurred about 504. Uh, as you can see, it lasted for several minutes. Um, this is the main one that they felt in San Francisco. Based on the markings, that means it was a very severe jolt. Well, it was a very large one. Uh, what we're seeing here is it lasted for several minutes, uh, actual ground shaking. People probably felt it for 15, 20 seconds. I know that you've been in contact with the people up in Berkeley. The preliminary information is the epicenter is where? About 10 miles north of Santa Clara, or Santa Cruz, I believe. Uh, it's south of San Francisco, and according to Berkeley, it appears to be on the San Andreas Fault. How critical is this right on the San Andreas Fault? Well, the San Andreas Fault, of course, is the uh, biggest fault they have in the area, and it's capable of generating large earthquakes. So this is a significant earthquake for this fault. This is a seismic, uh, seismic active area? Uh, reasonably active. They have a fair number of earthquakes per year up there. They have a number of faults in the area. You have been in contact with some of the people and talking with them. How, how did they describe it? Well, the people I've talked to directly uh, felt it as a very strong jolt. One person I'm talking to was actually thrown out of a chair while we were on the phone. In our conversation, you indicated that this is one quake that you're going to learn a lot from. Exactly what are you talking about? Well, this is really uh, the largest earthquake we've seen in, a, in the affected a metropolitan area. And it will show us how, you know, earthquake and fire response, you know, uh, police departments, how the seismological community responds to this, how the sort of safety net for the state is set up. And this will give it a good test, a very good test. A collapse of a bridge, what does it indicate as far as the earthquake is concerned? Well, that means it was a fairly strong intensity-wise earthquake, which means that there was very intense ground shaking. Uh, so we expect that, uh, since we've seen you know, damage to buildings, damage to bridges, that uh, this was a very significant earthquake. How far south? How far south of, did it hit? Uh, I think about 80 miles south of San Francisco. Will there be any repercussions here? Uh, well, we'll be busy for several days uh, because we're the, the, sort of the second closest major facility, and Berkeley was sort of taken offline. Steve, as far as the aftershocks now, have they been severe? Have they been 
consecutive in, in a time period? And if so, what does this indicate to the people up there in Northern California? Well, there have been a number of large aftershocks. We have seen about half a dozen to ten fairly good-sized ones. We don't have magnitudes yet. Uh, you can certainly expect with an earthquake this large that they're going to feel a lot of aftershocks in the next few days. Well, there you have it here from Caltech, that once again, uh, the preliminary reading on the Richter scale is uh, anywhere from 6.5 to uh, 7 points. Uh, earlier, uh, one of the seismologists uh, described it here as a damn powerful shock, and they are continuing to feel some of the aftershocks, and we'll continue to stand by here at Caltech. Reporting, Henry Alfaro, and I'll back to you in the studio. Henry, while we have you on the line, uh, we were unclear if the gentleman next to you had been able to pinpoint the fault line that this one was on. One of the questions, uh, again, pinpointing the fault line, San Andreas. Andreas, correct? Yeah, uh, Berkeley has put it on the San Andreas Fault. And Henry, let's ask the question, is this the big one? Pardon me? Is this the big one in Northern California? Well, again, uh, the question is, is this the big one in Northern California? Can it be considered that? Well, this is certainly considered a large, if not major, quake for San, in the San Francisco area. Uh, magnitude 7 is a very healthy earthquake, no matter where it occurs. Okay. Well, again, it's not a pinpoint of whether it be the, the big one, but nevertheless, as you indicated, it, it is a very healthy earthquake. Back to you, Harold. All right, Henry, we'll check back with you a little later. And we're talking about 10 miles north of Santa Cruz at about 7.0 mm -hmm. on the Richter scale. At 7.0. Now, one of the things in the Bay Area, the officials there, while I was monitoring the local radio stations, they're asking people throughout the state, please do not call into the Bay Area unless you have a specific emergency. Right now, phone service is out for the most part. They would like to keep all the lines clear because, as you will see in just a moment, as we take a look at some of the damage that has occurred from this earthquake, firefighting units are online throughout the city right now trying to put out a number of fires. And uh, what we understand is that they have, in fact, called in all off-duty uh, firefighters to come into the city. Candlestick Park right now, the scene of uh, what would have been the third game of the World Series. You find a lot of folks uh, still milling around because uh, we have to consider the fact that this stadium seats uh, 55, 60,000 people. And as Laura pointed out, where are they going to go? The East Bay folks right there, they can't get over the bridge tonight. As you can see, it's partially collapsed. Apparently, uh, several cars. Now, early on, there were some reports of some bodies in the water of the bay. Uh, it is unconfirmed right now whether those uh, people uh, had perished or whether they had been injured, but there are reports that there were several bodies uh, in the uh, San Francisco Bay. Uh, the people, again, as we put this into some sort of perspective, uh, who are in San Francisco, now unable to uh, use uh, the main artery across the Bay Bridge into uh, the East Bay area and uh, particularly into Oakland. A number of the uh, players' wives had just arrived at the stadium, as we understand it, and uh, like so many other people, they are badly shaken by, uh, by what has uh, now been pinpointed to be almost has, a 7.0 earthquake. But it has been orderly there, amazingly so, when you consider the great numbers of people there and at the time mm -hmm. at which it took place. Mm -hmm. Obviously, people are upset, but uh, they're dealing with it in an orderly fashion. We understand now with this late report that has just come into us now that there are reports that buildings in the historic south of Market District uh, near San Francisco have, in fact, collapsed. And uh, we have just panned through that area right now. Police do not have any immediate details on this. The fire that we have been watching uh, is, in fact, the major fire in the city as a result of this earthquake. And uh, because of the quake, hundreds of people fled the Bay Area rapid transit stations and the municipal transit system. BART, as you know, comes right under the bay from uh, Oakland, from uh, the, the, the East Bay area, and uh, comes into the city. Uh, one of the people on board, one of the BART trains, uh, telling the local radio station there early on that uh, the people on board the train thought that they had uh, just gone across something that was on the tracks. But she said it just took a few moments to realize that they were inside a BART car in the tube under the bay and San wow. Francisco was experiencing an earthquake. She said obviously it's a situation she'll remember for quite some time. And, you know, people who were inside of the stadium said it almost felt as though they were walking backward. That's mm -hmm. how they described the motion. Right now, we're going to take a look at some tape uh, shot at the stadium there with player reaction. There you see it there. Uh, Greg Lefferts, uh, one of the pitchers of the San Francisco Giants. Looking pretty calm. Not a whole lot of action going on there, but uh, that's what we've heard throughout this evening.
Well, that's only a small portion of what we've heard. Don't forget this earthquake. I mean, in terms of the stadium. It's coming. I've been, this is my fifth earthquake, you know, being a part of it. So I knew it was coming. And I didn't know it was going to be that strong. Is it the strongest one you felt? The strongest one I've ever been involved with. I've been through a number of earthquakes. Uh, this one was the strongest one that I felt. Uh, we were in the in Los Angeles, the, you know, a year and a half ago when uh, that was a 6.2, I believe. And we were up on the 12th floor of the uh, the hotel downtown yeah. L.A. And that was pretty rough, but, uh, you know, it didn't seem that bad. Well, because of all of the media attention at Candlestick Park for the third game of the World Series, you can imagine that the coverage at that particular focal point is almost what we could call overkill at this particular time. Right. Uh, we are going to go to our sister station, KGO, in San Francisco right now for an update on uh, the activities that are taking place as we watch that fire burn once again. What we're watching now, obviously, is the fire that is uh, burning uh, south of Market uh, in, uh, in San Francisco, uh, the city itself. We have just received word now that Pacific Gas and Electric Company has what they are calling an unusual event level four being declared at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant in San Luis Obispo. Uh, plant personnel are checking the facility right now, but uh, they believe there is no damage to that facility. Let's listen in now to our sister station, KGO, as they broadcast live and in Northern California. And so what California. you would have to do to get from uh, San Francisco to Oakland would be to uh, either drive down to the Dumbarton Bridge, which connects Menlo Park and Fremont, a very small bridge, or drive all the way to San Jose and come back up, or uh, proceed to the far North Bay and come back down over the Golden Gate Bridge. So, uh, you know, obviously this is one of the things uh, that people are thinking about in this area, the continuation of this World Series, uh, when it will take place, but I think uh, uppermost in in most people's minds in this region right now uh, are things of another nature. Right, back to us here in Los Angeles, Laura Diaz and Harold Green bringing you up to date. There has been a major earthquake in the San Francisco Bay Area. Reports now from uh, Caltech here in Los Angeles that the quake measured anywhere from 6.5 to 7. Uh, the main shaker hit at about 5.04 this afternoon, and they tell us that uh, strong aftershocks hit at 5.25, again at 5.42. Longtime residents now saying it is, in fact, the strongest earthquake in recent memory. And we just got some late word, too, that San Francisco Airport has been closed. That just came in. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some videotape we would like to go to right now as we continue to bring in information as it comes to us from San Francisco. This is what is now being called the Marina Fire, and uh, it is going um, quite strongly right now. Uh, a number of firefighting units. If you recall uh, back in history, uh, the famed uh, San Francisco earthquake, the one that struck back in 1906, was estimated at 8.3. And history tells us that the main problem after the earthquake was, of course, the fires. San Francisco itself at that time was uh, a very, very uh, raw, young city. And uh, many of the buildings that uh, survived the initial shock of an 8.3 uh, earthquake were then leveled by the fires that swept through there. San Francisco, having worked in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area as a newsman from 1977 to 1978, has any number of contingencies, as we do here in Southern California, for uh, this kind of disaster. And the fire departments there are online. Uh, the one major fire that is taking place right now, calling it the Marina Fire. Uh, we would like to point out once again that the people in the uh, emergency arena in Northern California are asking those of us in San Francisco or in Los Angeles, please don't call. Please listen to the media. We will give you as much information as we can. So far, no reports of any deaths. We, we bring that to your attention because there are no official reports of any fatalities. But in the event of a major earthquake, it takes quite a while for all areas to report in. We pointed we out... leave those lines open. Absolutely. And Rick Lozano is live now from San Francisco with the very latest. Rick. 
Okay, thank you, Laura. It is a foregone conclusion that it appears that this stadium has suffered severe structural damage and that uh, some kind of a architectural engineering staff is going to have to come in and take a good, long look at Candlestick Park before they decide to play any more games here. Standing by with me is uh, Vincent Mays, who was sitting in section... Section 55. And uh, Vincent has a little bit of a souvenir uh, to show everybody. You got this from right beneath section 55? Right, from the aisle, the stairway. Did you actually see any pieces of the stadium falling? Sure did, from the ceiling and the stairs separated, and pieces just fell to the lower deck. Did you see anyone injured? No, I did not see anyone injured. What were you thinking when the quake hit? I was a little scared. I was trying to support my wife here. She was scared more than I was. Yeah. My wife, Leona, has joined us also, and Leona, this must have thrown a, a good scare into you. Yes, yeah, a lot. What were you thinking? Ready to go. Now, we want you to hold up the pieces of uh, concrete that came fum uh, tumbling from Candlestick Park. And as big as these are, they pale in comparison to what Jeremy and Justin of Pacifica uh, were able to come up with here. Now, this, I, I have no idea how much this weighs, but it takes both of you to pick it up and carry it. Yeah, it does. Where were you sitting? Where did you pick this up from? We're in um, Upper Reserve, Section 41. Now, you felt earthquakes before, but how did this compare? Uh, it was scary. It was really scary. I mean, we were sitting there and everything. We were watching the whole stadium move back and forth. And then underneath our feet, this thing started rocking and it was popped out. Justin, let me bring you over here for just a second and explain to me what you saw. What was the reaction of the people sitting yeah, there? People were, were to run down to the front so the thing over underneath, because we were, we were on upper decks of 22, row 22, was going to fall down so everyone ran underneath. It's an interesting point because if you've seen Candlestick Park from the wide shots that we get every time, uh, every now and then, you know that there is a concrete overhang on this stadium. So obviously when the earthquake uh, hit, people wanted to scramble away from uh, any uh, possibility of concrete Come, uh, that would tumble down up on, uh, onto them. Uh, we're going to throw it back to you in Los Angeles. It's become a souvenir hut here at Candlestick Park, but uh, the crowd, to their credit, has handled itself very well. Back to you in Go Los Angeles now. Okay, thanks a lot, Rick. It could be a long while before they get out of that stadium. <laughs> <laughs> we have some more information coming in here. The earthquake centers in Golden, Colorado and Alaska both measured the quake at between 6.9 on the Richter scale and placed the epicenter 60 miles southeast of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And the seismology lab at the University of California, Berkeley, puts the tumbler between 6.5 and 7 on the Richter scale. We're going to go right now to KGO with the very latest information from our sister station. You're on the air. Exploded. The start of the fire that could be seen for miles around the Bay Area. Luckily, nobody was injured in this fire. There were workers in the, in the building at the time. Luckily, they were able to get out and there were no injuries. The building immediately to the, uh, to the left of the uh, garage was evacuated. There's an apartment complex over this way. That was also evacuated. Uh, we do not know yet if people have been allowed to go back in there. Again, there have been no injuries here, and they were very fortunate about that. The fire is pretty much out. They have been mopping up now for about the past half hour or so. With me is Berkeley uh, Sergeant Ron Barella. Ron, you were here very early in all of this. What was it like? when you first got here? You could very hear, very clearly hear the sounds of the drums inside exploding. Uh, you could see flames coming out from all of the windows. Uh, the flames were going very near to the adjacent buildings. Uh, you could feel the heat uh, from the sidewalk over here. You could feel the heat clearly uh, from the interiors of the buildings just to the west of it. They've done a miraculous job keeping this fire confined to one building. It's absolutely amazing to me uh, that the other buildings did not go up. Thank you, Sergeant. So they continue to mop up here, and again, it is just very fortunate, first of all, that nobody was injured. Secondly, they were able to confine the fire to this one building. Let's go back to you. All right, back in Los Angeles right now, that report coming to you live from our sister station, KGO. We have told you that uh, this thing was felt all the way north up through Sonoma County. Right. We now have reports from people living here in the San Fernando Valley in Encino who said they too felt that earthquake when it struck shortly after 5 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, commentator Bill Press pointing out just a short time ago that some colleagues of his in Century City uh, also felt uh, the earthquake. The question now being what happened to all of those folks who were in the high rises and around the city? They have to stay put as we've been pointing out because with the Bay Bridge damaged, uh, probably a great deal of apprehension about going over the Golden Gate Bridge itself on the other side of the bay. This is the main problem right now. We have received word, and you can see it firsthand, something we've been showing you throughout the afternoon, that at least one car, possibly two, crushed when a 30-foot section of the upper level of the Bay Bridge 
collapsed. No immediate word on injuries, however. Now, we did hear a little while ago, however, that the boats that are down below did in fact have several people in the water. Whether those people were part of the rescue effort who were trying to find out what the underside looked like, we don't know right now. We don't want to deal in any kind of conjecture in this area. But that is the double span bridge that takes you from the East Bay from Oakland into the city of San Francisco. This span of bridge right along here is called the Nimitz. And this is in Oakland itself. Here you can see it is buckled in a number of sections. And that bridge, while it's not very tall at that particular juncture as you uh, come into the East Bay or exit the uh, East Bay Oakland area. It is in fact a rather lengthy span of bridge and it has sustained a great deal of damage as uh, we look at it right now. Uh, the people who are in the city of San Francisco, if they have to get home to the East Bay tonight or if they have to go south to the peninsula, I think a number of them, uh, needless to say, will not be making that journey tonight. Uh, the emergency units in the city are pointing out again that people if they're prepared, they will be all right for the next couple of days. The services they depend on, the electricity, uh, the phone, the gas, the water, are going to be knocked out for a time. Uh, we take another live shot at the major fire that's burning in San Francisco right now. This is uh, an area that is uh, south of uh, Market, if I have this correct. And uh, Ed Rickey, if you're on the line, uh, you know the city as well as I do. Uh, they are calling this the... Uh, the uh, uh, they had a name for the marina fire marina right fire. now and uh, it is the center of attention in uh, the san francisco that plume now uh, visible all across uh, the san francisco bay area at one time we had reports that were at least four fires burning but uh, this is the one the marina fire that has uh, gotten the attention of uh, most of the emergency crews in San Francisco. Laura, if you'd like to recap for those who have just joined us and are wondering where Game 3 of the World Series is right now, it has been canceled. Well, of course, there was an earthquake that struck a little bit after 5 o'clock. We are told by the experts that it was anywhere between 6.5 and 7. It is a major quake. Um, at this point, we would like to take a look at some video shot right after that earthquake hit with players at the uh, stadium there. Uh, we are taking a look at the stadium, and you can see that people are milling around. Uh, a bit of a calm there, but as we pointed out earlier in this broadcast, it depended on where you were and how hard it felt when it hit. Here people are filing out of the stadium. In fact, a great number of people still remain in the stadium at this hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to check it. That's why they want to get everybody out of here now. The sooner we all leave, the better it's going to be. This is the wildest in all your years, Roger? Of course it is. It's what you call a home field advantage. It's a tragic day. Baseball is, is, is second day. I mean, you got to feel sorry for We're going to go now immediately live to San Francisco to KGO, where you can see there is a fire as a result of this earthquake. It's very bad here. Francisco. These are the classic San Francisco houses that uh, are lined up in row after row of the city. And at this particular intersection, and I'm sorry right now we're taking this picture live, uh, unable to pinpoint, but as you can see, they suffered severe damage there. We try to point out early on that when we receive the preliminary reports about damage, we say there are no reports of severe damage or, uh, or fatalities. But the fact being right now, they are discovering throughout the city of San Francisco, there are major pockets of concern. Several fires taking place. That one there apparently was one involving uh, gas lines that apparently had ruptured on the street. And uh, you could see that the houses there had, had sustained major damage shifting off of the foundations. We again will take a live remote from San Francisco from our sister station and again the situation there progressively uh, getting getting grimmer as we watch what's happening. This again our, our focus here is on a uh, on an intersection in the city of San Francisco. Unfortunately uh, so much of San Francisco the area looks so much alike Hard from the intersection exactly where to the intersection. Are. Yes this again we know uh, right now is the major fire they have been battling since about 5:15 this afternoon and if I'm not mistaken Laura it appears that this fire is growing in magnitude. You're right. It and, does seem uh, to be getting larger. The San Francisco Fire Department had called in all firefighters who are off duty, 
and uh, they have brought them to the scene of this fire. And as we just witnessed a few moments ago, we found that there are a number of other smaller fires that are now erupting. The Marina Fire is the major one you're watching now. Apparently, there are other pockets around the city where, where problems are starting to, uh, to happen. You know, with a magnitude 7 earthquake, we're going to, as we've experienced here in Southern California, our latest uh, large quake being the Whittier Narrows quake, uh, long after everything had settled down, we had ruptured gas lines that uh, are a potential hazard, and some of those uh, places right now apparently are beginning to uh, sustain some difficulty. Harold, uh, that intersection we were talking about earlier was Divisadero and Jefferson, to give okay. you a sense of exactly where we were. That information just came in to me. All right, Divisadero again uh, down toward uh, so the by the, uh, by the Marina Green area. Uh, this fire, as we point out again, uh, is in fact growing in intensity. We don't know uh, exactly what it started in, if that's an apartment, if it is uh, any sort of a housing structure, or that could also be that area that, uh, Mark Coogan, come on in and sit down. You're from the San Francisco Bay Area. You can uh, give us a hand here if that's one of the uh, industrial areas. But well, this, th on this picture here, let me mm -hmm. take the microphone on. On this picture here where they just widened out on the shot from the blimp, you can see the bay. I think this is over by the marina too, like the north coast part of San Francisco that would be facing the Golden Gate Bridge. All right. It, uh, President Bush is in our monitor right now uh, for reasons uh, I'm unable I'm to explain. Way. We have Henry Alfaro is at Caltech. As we understand it, the reporting stations, Laura said a few moments ago, from Alaska to Colorado, reported that the quake measured somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 6 8 .0. to uh, 7 0. Henry Alfaro is at Caltech for the very latest. Hank? Well, Harold, we do have an official reading as of right now. It's 6, 6 6.9. But once again, you're looking at one of these seismographs here at Caltech. And it shows the activity, the continuing activity of aftershocks. With me is the analyst, uh, Steve Bryant. And again, Steve, can you indicate for us the number of shocks and the magnitude of these shocks and perhaps tell us as to where they're centered? Okay, well, the number we, we have so far is we've seen about a dozen really very large aftershocks to this. Uh, we don't see the small ones because we're too far away, uh, but I expect that there are, are hundreds of them occurring. Uh, as for size, we're looking at generally the four to five range for the largest ones and a, probably a large number of threes. People are definitely feeling these. 6.9, where was the official uh, record from? Uh, 10 miles north of Santa Cruz, California. And the 6.9 was indicated uh, from uh, the people up at Berkeley? Well, the 6.9 came from the National Earthquake Information Center, which is lo located in Golden, Colorado, and they used readings from throughout the U.S. and the world to get that. You know, we were talking about the fact that uh, where it's, the center is 10 miles north of Santa Cruz, that as far as you folks are concerned, you have not had any reports. What does this indicate? Well, we haven't gotten any reports of damage from the epicentral area. We, what, most of what we've seen is from San Francisco. And so we expect that there's probably a significantly greater extent of damage right in the epicentral area. And because it is in the center, that's where you really get the, the biggest vibration. It's the whip, right? That's where you get the most intense shaking. The farther away you get, you get more long period or rolling sort of motions. When you're very close by, you get this very intense rattling. Yeah. I might add, uh, Harold and Laura, that uh, I was here. I live here in the city of Pasadena. And uh, when the epicenter was right near the uh, city hall, I felt it. It was the pencil effect that uh, the, po the point is way down, but when it shakes, it really hits that pretty hard. Again, we've been able to, to see a lot of the, uh, the damage there. Um, you said you were stunned by it. Uh, yeah, this is significant damage, uh, by, even by California standards. We're seeing, we're seeing significant damage to buildings, uh, uncontrolled fires at this point, uh, freeway overpasses down. This is the same sort of construction we have in Southern California. Is this the result as to how the, um, the it's a strike, as, as to the reason as to how the earthquake took place? It's a shaking effect? Well, it has more to do with what sort of ground that the uh, that part of the city is built on, uh, but it is in large part due to the shaking of the ground itself and how the fault moved. Obviously, when you have a disaster of this magnitude, uh, there's something to learn. Uh, what, are, what do you anticipate learning? Well, I think we're going to see just how a city, a large metropolitan city, reacts to an earthquake or any disaster, and I think there's going to be a lot of changes to how building codes are enacted and enforced and how the emergency agencies respond to an earthquake. Once again now, there's a lot of people that have relatives up in Northern California, San Francisco area. You had a tremendous shock. You have a series of pretty good size aftershocks. Uh, is there any possibility that all of a sudden uh, there can be another uh, eruption there? 
Well, there's, there is always a chance that you may have something of equal or greater size. Uh, it's fairly small, less than 1 in 20 at this point. Uh, but certainly people are going to be feeling aftershocks for this one. I know that in covering earthquakes, there's a certain time frame. How much time between the big one and if there's going to be a next one, how much uh, time does, does it lapse? Well, it, generally, if there's going to be something of equal or greater magnitude, it generally happens within five days. Uh, the greatest probability, of course, is right after the, the first large earthquake, and it declines very rapidly after that. After about eight hours or so, you're down to about two or three percent. Is this the largest quake to hit Northern California that you know of as far as history is concerned? It's not the largest. Uh, San Francisco. All right. Henry Alfaro reporting live from Caltech, bringing us up to date on what they have found there. And, of course, we've pointed out the earthquake apparently measuring 6.970, hitting shortly after 5 o'clock this afternoon. We are going to go to our sister station right now in San Francisco with the very latest. The bridge did fall on top of. You're looking across the bay right now. It's an eerie scene, an eerie scene to be standing here by this big gap in the Bay Bridge. Uh, there were a lot of commuters standing down below here a short while ago. They have since left. They have been ferried back over to the city. The link between San Francisco... All right, apparently we have Off lost communication. I'll tell you, they're in a very precarious situation. That was the Bay, the East Bay Bridge. Mm -hmm in San Francisco where a portion of it has collapsed. Let me bring you up to date for just a second here. The Mark Coogan, I'd like you to jump in. Right now, the San Francisco airport, SFO, in fact, has been evacuated. Some people there were hit with falling plaster. As we understand it, there may be damage to at least one of the main runways at SFO right now. Also reports that uh, portions of a shopping mall uh, reportedly collapsed in San Jose, south of San Francisco. Searchers now digging in the rubble uh, for possible uh, victims there. At City Hall in San Francisco, a radio reporter uh, was heard to say that the entire building started to shake and you could hear people yelling and screaming all over the building. Right now, the Bay Area is in the grips of a major emergency after a major earthquake has struck. And uh, Mark, you've uh, been in the area for quite some time and uh, you've seen some of the uh, live video. And if we could take again uh, uh, that live video of a fire that is taking place and uh, consuming a great deal of the attention of uh, the people and the uh, resources in San Francisco right now. Can we take that live shot out of San Francisco? Sure. This is in, uh, Mark, as I understand it, at Divisadero and Jefferson near right. the marina. Well, that's uh, the area you would traverse if you're going to go onto the Golden Gate Bridge from downtown. If you've left the Van, I or Van Ness Avenue area and you go out mm -hmm. Lombard Street heading for the Golden Gate Bridge towards the Presidio, this is right out in that part of San Francisco, the northern part of the city. Let me also mention, as we're looking at this here, I have an update on information regarding the Diablo Canyon nuclear yes, power plant, yes. which is 200 miles south of San Francisco in the San Luis Obispo area. According to Pacific Gas and Electric, that's the utility that runs Diablo, there is no problem. It has come through without damage. There may have been an earlier report that there was a high level of alert there. Uh, Susan Houghton, who's a spokesperson for PG&E, I got on the phone, she told me that no, they declared an unusual event, which is the lowest level of alert after the earthquake, which they definitely felt. They checked the plant, and so far they have found nothing wrong, and so there is no emergency, she said. that uh, There's two reactors there. Unit 1 is operating at 100% power, as it was this morning or yesterday mm -hmm. or any other time. Unit 2 is down for routine refueling. So according to PG&E, uh, the Diablo plant, which of course was a great deal of controversy when it was uh, first licensed because of the earthquake danger down there, has come through this earthquake up in the Bay Area quite fine. Okay. We would like to point out to those of you who have just joined us, uh, Game 3 of the World Series has been canceled. There has been a major earthquake in the San Francisco Bay Area. It struck just after 5 o'clock this afternoon, registering 6.9 to 70 on the Richter scale. Uh, the game uh, has been postponed. There has been damage to the baseball park. Uh, yes, there were uh, uh, thousands upon thousands of fans inside uh, the park waiting for the first pitch today when that quake struck. You know, and we actually got information now that there were some people injured at Candlestick, and mm -hmm. um, of course the game was canceled and fans were evacuated. We don't know the extent of those injuries. That information is not in yet. To give you an idea of the intensity of this earthquake, as we now look at this live picture of uh, the city of San Francisco, we just showed you the uh, major fire which is burning uh, at Divisadero in Jefferson uh, near the marina. And uh, we want to point out that uh, 
one of the reporters there told me that outside of Candlestick Park, they had all of these huge trucks parked there, the remote unit trucks for the broadcasting units. And he said these things began to bounce up and down with the tires actually leaving the pavement. They were bouncing so severely. And these and are huge to trucks to people who've never seen them. Huge trucks that weigh, uh, 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 you know, literally uh, tons. Now you're watching now as traffic is tied up. Uh, despite the fact that the World Series was to take place today, a lot of people did have to go to work in the city of San Francisco, and now their dilemma is getting out of the city and getting home. Uh, we've told you that uh, the East Bay Bridge, there has been a partial collapse in the city of Oakland. Uh, the Nimitz uh, Bridge has also uh, sustained heavy damage right now. Uh, to the south of San Francisco, we have not received as much information as we have from the people in the East Bay and at Candlestick Park directly. We are awaiting uh, information. There has been uh, obviously some damage down there because the epicenter of this quake was farther south than it was to the uh, city of San Francisco. Our Rick Lozano, one of the reporters on hand for today's World Series, which in fact has been canceled as of now, brings us up to date with this late information. Rick? Okay, thank you, Harold. And, you know, we we think of these baseball players as indestructible uh, forces, but uh, at times like this, we bring you back down to reality. Do we not, Don Robinson? Oh, definitely. Uh, this is something uh, I've only been through one. That was the one in L.A. in 1987 when we come down to learn to play the Dodgers. And, and uh, I was in the clubhouse uh, getting ready to go out and start to throw. And I thought it was the, the fans in the stands moving the stadium. And all of a sudden, I realized that it was another earthquake. This was not the instant replay you were looking forward to. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And when it happened, uh, I ran in Roger's office. All the, all the power went out, and I laid on the floor in the doorway. You were underneath the stadium itself. As sharp as the jolt was that hit here, you must have thought that uh, anything was, was likely to happen. Well, the first thing that went through my mind was the stadium was going to come in caving on me because uh, you know, we're on the ground floor and all the, all the concrete and all the steel and all the people, if it would have fell, would have fell right on the clubhouse. So uh, the only thing that went through my mind was to get on the floor and, and hopefully uh, that uh, it, nothing like that would happen. You're not immune to uh, taking cover when necessary. <laughs> no. <laughs> what was the reaction of your teammates as this was unfolding? Well, I was only the only guy in the clubhouse. Uh, the other guys were getting ready for the uh, pregame introductions, and I think they had just got done with infield, so I was uh, the only player that was in the clubhouse. The game has been suspended, obviously. Any word as to when you might replay it? Well, I'm just I'm told that we're supposed to be here tomorrow at the same time at 1 o'clock. Uh, I hear that there's structural damage to the ballpark, and that I don't know uh, exactly what, what's going to happen. What does this do to a ball club's frame of mind? Well, hopefully for us it was an omen, but, uh, uh, you know, something like this just don't happen every day, and uh, we had a lot of scared players and a lot of scared families, and, and uh, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this thing will get on tomorrow. Don, thanks for taking the time to be with us, and uh, hopefully, indeed, we'll get this game played tomorrow. Giants pitcher Don Robinson, who was scheduled to start tonight, now looking forward to hopefully uh, a ball game here at Candlestick tomorrow. He says that uh, maybe it was a, a message from God. Who knows? We'll have to see. We'll throw it back to you, Harold, in Los Angeles. All right. Thanks, okay. Rick Pizzano. Bring We've been you. telling you for the last uh, few minutes or so about the extent of damage that we have in the San Francisco area. You know that that quake struck a little bit after 5 o'clock. We are now being told that it was 6.9 on the Richter scale and that it was 10 miles north of Santa Cruz along the San Andreas Fault. One of the main problems has been, Harold, we have fires uh, throughout areas of the city, the main fire being the marina fire. We're going to take a look at that right now. We are told that it is between the Golden Gate Bridge and Fisherman's Wharf, mm -hmm. and across the street from there is Marina Junior High School. Yes, specifically, they tell us, Laura, this is at Chestnut and Fillmore. Okay. This is what we've been able to uh, narrow it down, and uh, early report was that it was, in fact, an apartment building that had gotten uh, Right, and there we see underway. the Bay Bridge, where a portion mm -hmm. of that has collapsed, and we know that at least one car is caught and there have been reports, actually, of people in the water below. We don't know if they're dead or alive. This is very sketchy information that's coming to us, and we are giving it to you as we get it. Uh, here we are live at the scene, obviously near that bridge. We see one car and, and what appears to be Caltrans workers on the scene and other emergency officials. We hope to hear from a victim in the very near future here. We now have a look at this shot. That is that section. If you can see, there are actually two cars that are wedged in right here, Two cars that uh, have been wedged in where that span of the bridge collapsed this afternoon, uh, shortly after this quake began uh, shaking the Bay Area. 
And uh, we've pointed out before that it's a miracle that there weren't more commuters on that bridge. But with so much attention right now given to uh, Game 3 of the World Series, you had so many people in the city itself. You had a lot of other people knocking off early on this Tuesday night to go home and uh, watch the game here on uh, ABC. Now, we have reports as well that uh, the BART system, the Bay Area Rapid Transit System, has uh, shut down its service. Earlier, there were some sketchy reports that there had been some problems with people inside the tube under the bay. No, there are no cars trapped under the bay in the BART system right now. But this is also adding to the problems of the people who are in the city of San Francisco who rely on the BART. And I think BART carries uh, upwards of over half a million people to three quarters of a million people in and out of the city of San Francisco. And with BART shut down tonight, that adds to uh, the problems of trying to get home. It's just a gimme at this hour that a lot of people People are going to be stuck in the city of San Francisco tonight, unable to either get down south uh, to the peninsula or, of course, uh, across the bay. We don't have any reports right now of what's happening up in Marin County because of uh, you get to Marin County, of course, by going over the Golden Gate Bridge. The fire we have been watching there at uh, Chestnut and Fillmore in the Marina District, if you were to leave the city, you would take that circuitous route and get yourself up uh, onto the bay, onto the Golden Gate Bridge to go into Marin County. No reports of any damage of the Golden Gate Bridge. The only reports coming out of Marin County right now in Sonoma, much of what everybody has been saying up there, they got hit with one hell of a big shock this afternoon, and there have also been a number of aftershocks that have uh, frayed a whole lot of nerves. We're getting some information, too, that there had been some injuries at Candlestick Park, and we're going to go to some fan reaction right now, talking to people as they were trying to exit that stadium. We'll take a look at that video. When the quake hit, did you know what it was right away? No, we thought the Oakland fans were just shaking, shaking the stadium. The stadium. For all fun. of a sudden, it just hit. Yeah, but all of a sudden, like a wave. it felt like a right over just... You got this from right beneath Section 55? Right, from the aisle, the stairway. Did you actually see any pieces of the stadium falling? Sure did, from the ceiling and the stairs separated, and pieces just fell to the lower deck. You see anyone injured? No, I did not see anyone injured. What were you thinking when the quake hit? I was a little scared. I was trying to support my wife here. She was scared more than I was. Oh, uh, it was scary. It was really scary. I mean, we were sitting there and everything. We were watching the whole stadium move back and forth. And then underneath our feet, this thing started rocking and it was popped out. We'd like to also bring you up to date that we now have word that a major fire is burning near the University of uh, California at Berkeley at Cal. It's near the library at Cal across the bay, of course, from San Francisco. A huge plume of smoke is visible for miles. These reports will continue to come in. There is no phone service in the Bay Area right now, so uh, many of our reporting crews are having to use cellular phones to try to make contact in the Bay Area. We are tapped into our sister station, KGO, bringing you the information as rapidly as we can. Bill Press is with us now. Uh, Bill, also uh, a longtime resident of uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and your impressions of what you've been able to see this afternoon and uh, what you've been able to garner up in the newsroom. Well, you can't comprehend the damage and the destruction, Harold. I mean, just looking at those cities, uh, those sections of the city I know so well, that, that marina there, the Marina Junior High School. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Carol and I took a Lamaze classes in that, in that building. I know that building so well, and you can see that fire. That's a whole block that's just being consumed. Um, it really does remind you of the 1906 quake, where it was the fire, as you pointed out earlier, how not the quake that destroyed that city. Incidentally, the epicenter for that quake was in Marin County, up at Olima, a little town of Olima, which is right at the, uh, on the San Andreas Fault, which then runs down right across the Golden Gate Bridge, right down the western side of San Francisco, uh -huh. and right down to Santa Cruz. Uh, interesting to me that most of the damage for this quake seems to be, however, on the bay side, not on the ocean side. Not uh -huh. right on the San Andreas Fault, but along San Francisco Bay, the uh, Nimitz Freeway in Oakland, which is right along the bay, of course, and the section south of Market Street, where there are uh, uh, several buildings down, and then the Marina section, which mm -hmm. is also in that eastern section of San Francisco. What we're watching here, of course, are players and their wives on the field at Candlestick Park. As we pointed out a moment ago, the, the quake hit uh, before the first pitch. And uh, what, why we're focusing on the players and their wives right now is because uh, they were the focal point at the time the, uh, the earthquake hit. But uh, the reactions of the wives and the players there obviously reflect uh, the feelings of not only the people who are in uh, Candlestick Park waiting for the game to start, but those throughout uh, the Bay Area. Uh, we understand right now, as we're watching uh, taped video from uh, around San Francisco, and you will see uh, smoke uh, coming from uh, fires, uh, the under
unknown origin right now. One only assumes that many of these are sparked by natural gas lines that have broken. Uh, Los Angeles International Airport was closed down due to fog conditions just five minutes before that quake today. And the international flights, mostly from Asia, were being diverted to Ontario, while a few wide-body planes were being allowed to land at LAX. But as we understand it right now, uh, SFO, San Francisco International, has been shut down. There has been uh, some damage to uh, the main uh, terminals there. We don't know how much. Falling plaster, we know for sure. Broken windows and the like. Uh, reports are that there are some uh, damage. Uh, there has been some damage, I should say, to uh, one of the main runways there. So we've got problems all up and down the coast of California as a result of this major earthquake that hit San Francisco. You know how it's because it is the World Series, it was interesting, obvious, I guess, that some of the focus would be whether or not there's going to be a game played there tomorrow. Uh, I don't think that's the focus at all. I mean, the focus is how soon this Bay Area is going to be able to bring itself back. And I think it's going to be weeks looking at this damage oh, before sure. uh, the transportation arteries are back in shape and before people uh, are able to resume a normal life there. Thanks, Bill. We're going to get some new information now from our sister station in San Francisco. KGO, you're on the air. Okay, well, they're not apparently quite ready, not ready for yet. That. Now I want to point out how far and how extensive this earthquake was felt. Uh, we pointed out as far north as a Sonoma. Uh, we have pointed out that people in Marin County, I'm working my way uh, south now from up north, Marin County felt this earthquake as well right through the Bay Area. The fire right here, right now. Apparently this thing is growing in intensity. It we we have watching. watched it. But I must say now, this tape is not a live shot. So we might be looking at uh, something that occurred uh, 15 to 20 minutes ago, and I don't know that we're doing ourselves uh, any service showing that at the moment. That fire was a chestnut in Fillmore, this being the collapsed section of the Bay Bridge. Here, uh, the people are being uh, taken out of a car, people who were injured. Uh, there have been reports that several people had gone into the water uh, as a result of what took place on the Bay Bridge this afternoon. Again, those have not been confirmed, but uh, this is uh, a motorist. Uh, there are actually, as we could see, two people who were uh, on that particular two car. Two vehicles lodged. And uh, this is just devastating. If you've ever uh, driven across this bridge, you can well imagine what it would be like uh, to be on that bridge when a quake would uh, begin mm. to shake in the first place. Every person's and, fear. And uh, have this thing collapse. It's a double-decker, and uh, it was built with the thought in mind that they would move traffic uh, in and out of uh, either side of the bay. And uh, Harold, at, at five o'clock, what is amazing is that, the, and thankful for that, there not was, were not more cars on that bridge. Mm -hmm. And I think again, because of the series, people were home; they were watching the game because that's the top deck goes into San Francisco from the East Bay. It really was a blessing. You know, there's some information coming in right now. And we, of course, we don't know how extensive the damage is. We want to make sure that everyone's clear about that. But there are unconfirmed reports that a shopping mall collapsed in San Jose, 50 miles south of. San San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned a little bit earlier San Francisco Airport shut down. Um, San Francisco Airport has been evacuated and some people there were hit with falling plaster. And uh, also, as you told a little bit earlier, Harold, a major fire blazing in the area near the library at the University of Berkeley. Taking a look right there, you see 6.9. We, we have a, uh, we'll take to Henry Alfaro in just a second. That graphic tells a lot if we could put it back up for just a second right here. 6.9, the epicenter near uh, the Santa Cruz area. Now, we have not heard from Silicon Valley, of course, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we have a whole lot of high technical uh, goings on in the Silicon Valley. If we are just to digest some of the reports that have come out from uh, Gilroy and Santa Cruz, that people there who were inside stores said that things fell off of the shelves rapidly, so industry will, uh, will suffer some problems as well. Henry Alfaro is out at Caltech. The people there have been monitoring the activity in San Francisco because, as Henry pointed out in his last report, uh, the uh, people at Berkeley have been knocked offline. It was so strong, it knocked them right offline. Hank, you're on the air. Well, Harold, here we have this uh, graph here. It's an illustration, and to get a real quick course, you know, we feel these things, and we see them, and uh, it causes a lot of uh, concern. But here in Pasadena, this bottom graph uh, is an illustration as to how quickly and uh, how um, effectively that uh, the Caltech Seismology Lab here is able to record any type of a uh, ground movement in the state of California. Once again with me is uh, Steve Bryant, an analyst, an analysis here. And uh, Steve, in very elementary terms, uh, can you explain to us what all of these uh, jagged lines mean? Okay, what, what they mean, uh, this, this is the station down here in Pasadena, and this is how uh, 
it was seen on that at that station. This is when the earthquake arrived here. And as you can see, it's fairly small. Uh, we didn't didn't see much to begin with, but you see it starts to really build up very strongly, indicating we've had a very strong earthquake. And along the bottom is a time scale. Now, your average earthquake that we feel around here lasts for about you know 30 seconds to a minute. Well, this is still going after three minutes. Uh, so this shook for quite a long time. No. Some indications that it shook for 30 seconds. Uh, can you actually pinpoint as to how long it did uh, occur? Well, on this record we can't because it actually keeps shaking after the record uh, stops on this page. Uh, but we're still seeing uh, some of the vibrations up on this as much as an hour later. And it's 6.9. 6.9. This is the interesting part down here is that there's still a lot of activity going on. But uh, it's, it seems to have uh, declined somewhat. Now, obviously, this is a pattern for any type of a big aftershock. Yeah, uh, generally what you see is a large main shock, and then as time, as time goes by, you'll get s gradually smaller and smaller earthquakes, and they'll get less frequent in time. Immediately after, you usually have the biggest and most frequent aftershocks. And we hear so much about the San Andreas Fault, and this, obviously, according to your report, was right on the San Andreas Fault. Will this have a domino effect? Is there a possibility that it can come down the state of California? Probably not. We're, uh, the area of stress up in San Francisco uh, is a lot, sort of a little bit different than we have down here. And in order for it to propagate down, it really probably would have done it immediately if something like that happened. Also, the area down by Hollister, which is farther south, generally has earthquakes all the time. And so it hasn't built up the strain to allow it to run through that area. I know it's difficult to predict uh, earthquakes, and uh, but was this a surprise to you folks down here at Caltech? Well, we certainly weren't looking to have this happen this afternoon. Uh, we had no uh, foreshocks of any sort that we could see down here, so it was just out of the blue that we saw here. Well, there you have it, that uh, even here at Caltech, where they uh, monitor all of these earthquakes, that uh, the magnitude was, again, 6.9, and uh, they were quite surprised, not only by the magnitude, but the, but the amount of damage that has been caused up there in Northern California. Reporting live from Caltech, I'm Henry Alfaro, back to you. Henry, thank you for that. Uh, recapping uh, for Laura Diaz, I'm Harold Green. We have one confirmed fatality in the Bay Area right now. We have been receiving reports from San Francisco. We have not heard from the areas near the epicenter. Preliminary reports given to some of the talk shows up there right now are not good. It sounds like they have suffered major damage in the area. One fatality confirmed right now. Our news continues live coverage of the major earthquake that has shaken the San Francisco Bay Area with Paul Moyer and Ann Martin. Thank you, Harold, very much. I can add to that, uh, and this is very much unconfirmed, but I talked to somebody who's got a sister up in Santa Cruz, and again, this is unconfirmed, but apparently the, uh, the damage up there is quite substantial. And this is one of these, uh, one of these incidents, one of these earthquakes where it, it, as the information begins to come in, excuse me, I just got here, I'm going to put the microphone on. As the information begins to come in, it is getting worse, it is not getting better, and we will try to keep you tuned. Again, the World Series is not on tonight. There has been a major earthquake. It has rocked the San Francisco Bay Area, causing widespread damage, knocking out power, starting fires, and postponing Game 3 of the World Series. The quake struck shortly after 5 o'clock tonight. It was 5.04. It measured 6.9 on the Richter scale. At first, they thought it was 6.5. They thought it was somewhere between 6.5 and 7. It was 6.9. Let me give you, in the way of perspective, some information here. In 1906, San Francisco, as you know, was devastated by an earthquake. The city was destroyed. That earthquake was between 8 and 9. Very strong. In Silmar in 1971, the quake we had here was 6.4. This one tonight in San Francisco, 6.9. It is still too early to gauge how many people were killed or injured. As Harold told you a couple of moments ago, there is a report now of one person that was killed, apparently on the bay, on the, uh, the Oakland Bay Bridge that connects the cities of San Francisco and Oakland. If you've been watching, you've seen the pictures of the upper span that collapsed down to the lower span, uh, a distance of about 50 feet, and there were two cars trapped in there. We have a report that one person was killed there. As Marianne Bannister reports tonight, this earthquake has caused a disaster.
The damage from the quake is shocking, to say the least. A 50-foot section of the San Francisco Bay Bridge collapsed, trapping a number of vehicles. Eyewitnesses say they saw people in the bay. It's not known whether they were dead. In Oakland, the double-deck Nimitz freeway completely collapsed. It's not known how many people are under that rubble. One car trapped underneath was on fire. The entire freeway was buckled from the tremendous strength of the quake. There are a number of major fires that continue to rage out of control at this hour. Bay Area residents are being advised to turn off their gas to prevent explosions. The Bay Area rapid transit system that runs below the bay has been shut down. One train and a BART tunnel through the Berkeley Hills had to be evacuated. There are reports of severe property damage as far away as 120 miles south of San Francisco. Electricity remains out throughout a wide portion of the San Francisco Bay Area. Candlestick Park, site of the World Series, has been evacuated so officials can check for damage. And there are two sections of the stadium in Wright Field that was separated by six inches from the magnitude of the quake. Marianne Bannister, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Um, the worst nightmare come true. A major earthquake just when a major sporting event was about to take place, the third game of the World Series, almost 60,000 people in Candlestick Park, and Marianne was talking about the damage to the park. The quake was centered near Santa Cruz, that is 75 miles south of San Francisco. Anne? All right. We have reports that have been coming in now from Washington, D.C., the Department of Defense. The Pentagon is ready to put troops into action in San Francisco if that should be needed. One of the problems that everyone in the rest of the country is having right now is that the phone lines have been cut to San Francisco. The airport is shut down. It is very difficult to get updated information. We have cameras there, but uh, we don't have phone lines, so it's been very tough to keep track of where there are trouble spots and where there might be casualties. White House Chief of Jeff, uh, Staff, John Sununu has tried to reach Governor Duke Majin. There are reports that he might be out of the country tonight. The White House is watching to see what has happened and what's necessary for the government to do at this point. You know, there was a ball game that was supposed to have been played this evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, they were just, just about to get started with Game 3 of the World Series at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And our Rick Lozano was up there to cover the game. He's now been covering the earthquake from the vantage point of Candlestick Park, where there was damage and an awful lot of people uh, waiting there to see the game. We're going to go to him live right now. And Rick, tell us what the latest is at the ballpark. Okay, thank you, Admiral. First of all, imagine, if you, if you can, being in an area of confinement and all of a sudden a 6.9 earthquake hits. That is what Larry Tallman and about, about 60,000 other Giants and Oakland A's fans were experiencing shortly after 5 o'clock this afternoon. It was more than just shake, rattle, and roll. I know that uh, you, were, you were quite shaken by this whole thing. I was on the, on the upper level of the second deck, left field, right out towards the edge. And when I felt I could, right away I knew there was an earthquake, I could feel the floor tremble. I turned around to look at my son, five rows from me, and looked up at the top of the stadium. That is the overhang, the concrete the overhang. overhang. And I could see the section separating and rocking back and forth like this. What were people doing? How were they reacting? Everyone just all of a sudden was silent. Everyone around us was just completely silent. I thought it was going to stop, you know, like... It, like they normally do. I thought it was going to stop. It kept going. It kept going. I look at my son, Brett, and I said, you stay there. You hold on. It kept going and kept going. And pretty soon, everybody started grabbing on this stuff. It was, it was unbelievable. The light poles were wobbling back and forth. And I thought, this is a little bit more than we need to get the Giants into gear. This is more than what, what it's going to take. I'm and and, it, and I, at that, I'm thinking all these things, it's still going. It must have lasted 45 seconds, a minute. It was still going. And all, I looked up at my son to, to make sure that he was holding on because all I could think, we're, we're on, the, on the upper level. If that thing decided to let go, so he was going to have to have a hold of something, and he was about 15 feet away from me. Now, Larry, we have seen physical evidence of structural damage to this stadium. Tell me what you've seen in that regard. After, after everything silenced down, um, the, the, the people were walking around with the walkie-talkies checking for um, problems. I heard one guy say, check the stairs on 54. We were right by that, so we walked over and looked, and uh, the stairs going up section 54 in the upper deck, there were... There were cracks going all the way up with dust around them that they had just broken. We have not heard as yet as to whether the game three is going to be played tomorrow. In your opinion, however unofficial it might be, should this stadium be used for baseball or for anything at this point? 
I've been I've been coming to the stadium since it opened, and uh, I love the stadium for what it isn't worth. Um, but if we can't play baseball here tomorrow, um, I don't know where they're going to be able the to play. The question is, would you feel safe here? I always feel safe here. I felt right. safe here tonight. All right. That's going to have to do it for now. Paul and Ann, we'll send it back to you in Los Angeles now. Thanks, Rick. Rick, thank you. Uh, I was at home about to watch uh, Game 3 of the World Series. Done some work earlier today. Was going to come in later on tonight. I, too, turned it in. And uh, what I saw was a special report from ABC about this earthquake. Uh, the World Series and all it entails in Game 3, that is one thing. People's lives, that is another. This report, urgent from AP, six people have been crushed to death in their cars after part of a four-story brick building toppled onto the vehicles on Bluxham Street, that's in San Francisco. This comes from a police lieutenant by the name of Jerry Kilroy. The building housed a company called Major Legal Services. The identity of the victims are unknown. As I said at the outset of our portion of this tonight, Ann and Bill Press, who joins us, it seems like as we get more information, it is getting worse. Bill Press is with us. He spent four years working and living in the city of San Francisco. He's here to help us with his coverage. I believe that we have some tape now shot earlier today of the two fires that are burning in San Francisco. This, uh, it says live, but it was shot earlier today. Was oh, this live? 6.48, 6 no, so PM, that's, all right. that's earlier 20 minutes ago. There are two fires that we know of. That, I think, Bill and Ann, is the Marina fire. Yes, this is in the Marina section of San Francisco, Paul. It's, uh, if you ever take Lombard to Golden Gate Bridge, it's just to the right of that. You see the San Francisco Yacht Club just, mm -hmm. it, just, just there. That's the bay, and soon we'll see that's the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. Also notice that the city is dark because all power is out in the city. This fire is out of control. It's consuming about two blocks. Now that is interesting in itself because normally you would expect the fire department to get right on something like that and get a handle on it. It could mean that they are spread thin or that communications are out and I they I think they did get, get right it. on it, Ann. I, these and are old buildings. Gone. These are built in the 20s, 30s. Yeah, that's, um, that's one right now. Like Tinder. From from they the are looks dry. of it, it doesn't matter how many firemen are there. They're going to take a while putting that out. But as Ann mentioned, all communications are down in the city of San Francisco. Telephone community. All right, here's the Bay Bridge. There are two major bridges. Correct me, Bill, if I'm wrong. There's the Bay Bridge and the Golden Gate Bridge. Correct. This is the Bay Bridge that connects San Francisco and Oakland. And Oakland. To the East Bay. And, and what you're looking at now, and I don't know what part of the bridge this is. This but is the upper deck part of the bridge, that, Paul, on its way into San Francisco. In other words, from east to west, that collapsed, a 50-foot section. Right. And this car, this is one of the cars that's on top of that. They're taking a victim out of the car and this is just you'll see right all right two cars those down two there. Car, yeah and the people in those two cars reportedly got out all right so the person who was trapped underneath perhaps was the because early reports anyway were that the people in those two cars managed to get out we but also had reports that squashed the underneath we also had reports from a, one of the radio helicopter uh, pilots in San Francisco that people were seen in the water that too has been unconfirmed up to now mm -hmm. Again, Paul, this is a major artery transportation artery linking. And it's amazing leaking. that more people weren't on that bridge and more cars aren't down there. Thanks to the World Series. I think I, you might be right about we that. We were speculating about that upstairs. Absolutely. That possibly they were home. Watch, they were getting ready to watch it on TV all over the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. That must be it. There is another section of freeway. It's called the Nimitz Freeway. This is the Nimitz Freeway. There when you is. go off... It, Toward Oakland now, and yeah. go down down the shore of Oakland toward the Oakland Airport. This is the Nimitz Freeway. It's a double decker. It's collapsed. The upper deck is pancaked onto the lower deck of that Nimitz Freeway. So down down toward the Oakland Airport, and there are certainly cars caught and people caught there in between. There must be, and those we've two. heard nothing about that. We've been watching those same I think pictures been able for to the get last them, for the last um, hour or so, see, and no reports. Let mm -hmm. me mention uh, yeah. the other fire burning, and I don't think we mentioned is it at the library. The, uh, supposedly the Berkeley Library is on fire. Or at least at least near. Near the library. The, Near the library. UC Berkeley, there's a uh, Our fire. sister station up in San Francisco, KGO, obviously has been on this story since the uh, the inception of it. Sydney Caharo in Sydney, I'm sorry if I mis mispronounce your last name, that's what I have here, is with us now from KGO. Um, you've heard us talking, Sydney. What more can you add to what we've just said? Well, I really can't confirm about the, the Berkeley Library and as as, uh, as far as the, the freeway, uh, you know, it's really difficult and I know it, so it, it sounds amazing that we really can't find out exactly how many people people were hurt or were killed uh, but in this particular case it is scary to look outside and there are no lights and I know that uh, uh, being in
touch with some of the emergency officials in San Francisco. They are also having the same problem that we are having, getting information, actually getting information from their own people. I talked to the CHP about 20 minutes ago. They say that the problem that they're having, their phone lines are down, so they can't get in touch with their particular districts and their people. Uh, so they really don't have a way of assessing damage or fatalities. Um, the word that I have received at this particular point is that we don't, we cannot confirm any at this particular point. Uh, but you've seen the pictures. We have this raging fire in the Marina District of San Francisco. Uh, we have parts of the uh, the Bay Bridge, the span uh, that is down. And I, I do want to let you know that particular span that went down uh, was the span that was coming into San Francisco. Any commuter traffic would have been on the underneath, and those particular cars that were crushed uh, were, I imagine, uh, underneath. Uh, I do know that the Coast Guard was un uh, was under the bridge, uh, from what I understand, looking for people who perhaps may have been uh, pitched off the bridge when the when the earthquake hit. Um, I, I wish that that we knew more, and we certainly have many reporters out in the field. Uh, we have some of our equipment out, especially some of our, um, our our antennas and our towers. So what pictures we're trying to get back right now, we're kind of stuck right in the San Francisco area. Sydney, uh, it's Paul Moyer down in Los Angeles again. We reported before you came on with us that six people were crushed to death in their cars after a four-story building toppled upon them in San Francisco. Um, can you give us any confirmation on This is from the AP, by the way. Right. Okay. Uh, they may. They have probably different information. I have not received that. Uh, we are updating our information on computers as quickly as possible. Uh, I just received some papers. I do not have that information, but that's uh, that's very possible because uh, all of the uh, media outlets in this particular city have people out, and uh, I don't doubt that they are in a lot of places that we aren't, and uh, vice versa. Sydney, have you heard anything further about that section of the Nimitz Freeway on the east side of the bay where we saw the double-deck freeway had pancakes? onto itself. We haven't heard any reports of injuries or whatever might have happened there. Not at this particular point. Uh, right behind me, we have our crews working, and we've got some people on live, so I'm not sure what reports they're getting in. We are getting some phoners from uh, other, parts of, uh, other parts of the city and uh, what we consider Oakland and, the, and Berkeley and the East Bay, but we have heard nothing yet as far as those particular freeways. I would hope that uh, perhaps in the next uh, 10 minutes or so we can uh, get a, uh, maybe a little better picture of what's going on here speculation that with the power out people would be trapped in some of these in the high-rise buildings in downtown San Francisco uh, do you know that to be true what we're, what we're hearing now, uh, we put out a call probably about 30 minutes ago over the air uh, asking for all, I think, elevator technicians and operators uh, to, uh, to report to work. Apparently, there are a lot of reports of people stuck in the elevators. We also have reports uh, our uh, Bay Area Rapid Transit system is, is shut down. Um, from what I understand, they're not sure if people are trapped in that. There is a tunnel that leads from San Francisco to Oakland. They're not sure if perhaps uh, uh, one of the trains uh, with with commuters going home uh, the ones that perhaps didn't stay in the city to to watch the game uh, perhaps are trapped there um, I know that in a lot of sections of town that there there are probably people who who are in the elevators and have no way of getting out and they're just they're calling all emergency personnel uh, uh, into into stations uh, to get to work to try to, to for those people down people. here that might not know what, what what BART or the Bay Area Rapid Transit is up in San Francisco it's San Francisco's version of a subway basically is it not yes, a right. subway. Yes. Yes, and and it is. One, one, would, one would assume that at 5.04 in the afternoon, there would be a lot of people going to and fro. And exactly. Um, um, what uh, what we call BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, I mean, that is a, one of the uh, uh, major uh, uh, commuting uh, um, uh, ways for people to get to work in the East Bay. It's always crowded. Five o'clock is one of the worst times. Uh, add to that, you had the World Series. A lot of people were using BART and then what they call Caltrain and the buses to get uh, closer to Candlestick since a, uh, there is not a BART station close to Candlestick like there is in Oakland. But many, many people were using BART uh, to get closer to Candlestick, so you you had a lot of activity, if not as much as with the commuter, uh, uh, with the regular uh, afternoon commute, you still had a lot of activity, people trying to get to the games uh, and, and people getting home, so we really don't know the situation there either. All right, Sidney Caharo, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I know Thanks we put you at a disadvantage, as are we down here in Los Angeles trying to get confirmation of some of these reports. We'll get yeah. back to you. Um, I mentioned that there had been a report that six people have been crushed under the rubble of a four-story building in San Francisco. We now get again from the AP confirmation from San Francisco police that so far at least six people have been killed 
in this earthquake. It was centered yeah. 10 miles north of Santa Cruz in Davenport. Now, Highway 17 between Santa Cruz and San Jose and Highway 1 have both been blocked. Two buildings in downtown Davenport have collapsed. All the gas in the city has been shut off because of fires. We have reports from UC Santa Cruz that there is heavy damage there, no power, no phones. Obviously, with no phones or no communication, it's very difficult for us to get information from Santa Cruz, which is very near the epicenter of this 6.9 quake that happened at 5.04 this afternoon. You know, it's interesting, if I can interrupt for a mm -hmm. second, this is a point we were talking about earlier. San Jose is much closer to the epicenter than San Francisco is, mm -hmm. but San Francisco is where the network was with all its cameras. So we're seeing lots of what's happening in the San Francisco to Oakland area. We're not seeing what's happening down in San Jose, and it could conceivably be a much worse situation in San Jose, but as you're saying, with no phones, we're not going to know. you didn't see it right away. What happened was, you, as you mentioned, all the networks, all the yeah. press there to cover the World Series, with all these big trucks and antenna and, and how many tens of tens of cameras, and for a moment, nobody could get anything out of there mm -hmm. beca because of A, mm -hmm. the loss of power, and B, um, and I'll use the word panic, although advisedly, deep concern on the part of people in Candlestick Park and in the environs right. feeling this 6.9 earthquake. Well, we've seen the traffic, and it is heavy traffic now in the city of San Francisco itself. We saw the lights as we were looking at the fire there, and there's probably uh, some of it people getting out, some of it people going to looky-loo, unfortunately, to see what's going on. Well, and that's, uh, that's, I guess, what you have to expect. I can, I, can, I can tell you that uh, the radio up in San Francisco, and they're, they're very strongly and often advising people in the San Francisco area to stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. And if you're out, if you can right. find out where your loved ones are, do it. And all the warnings that we should be so familiar with down here in Southern California. Rick yeah. Lozano was one of the first uh, reporters up in San Francisco to get any kind of report out. Uh, he was on with Ted Koppel in the network about an hour and a half ago. Let's go to him now. Uh, Rick, still at Candlestick? Still here, Paul, along with, uh, it seems, everyone who was here a couple of hours ago when the quake first struck. The parking lot is jammed with traffic trying to get out, so many of the fans have decided to stand close by and just wait for the traffic to filter out. You know, so many times in situations of disaster, as we experienced here today, we go in search of the... the, the First hand, the, the close up and personal type comment, and in 99% of those cases, we go straight for the adult point of view. We forget all too often that uh, these kind of incidents can be very traumatic to our youngsters. Got a couple of youngsters here with me now, a couple of bat boys for the San Francisco Giants who were on the field inside Candlestick when the, the quake struck. This is Brian. Brian, just tell me what you felt, what, uh, what you were thinking when this uh, earthquake hit. Well, when it hit, I was thinking, you know, it's the big one that everybody was talking about. We're on the fault line, and so the lights just might come down on us. And it was just general panic on the field, and not, there wasn't very much organization. Were you close to any of the players? And if so, what did you see? Yeah, I was close to the players, and they were just telling, they were just saying, like, well, I hope my kids are okay at home. I'm going to get out of here as soon as possible, see if my family's okay, my house, you know, just check up on their relations. Brian, thanks a lot. We'll let you go. We'll move over and talk to Dave, another of the San Francisco Bat Boys. Dave, were you scared when this thing hit? Yeah, I was very scared. Uh, I looked up, and the light towers were rumbling, and the, sh the ground was shaking, and the first thing I thought was get out of the dugout, head out to the field to be safe, and then I thought about my mom and my dad who were at home. I hope and they were okay. And what did the, what did it feel like out on the uh, on the field? Did uh, did you feel the earth moving? And and uh, what was it like out on the field in general? Well, uh, at first it just it felt like a little rumble, like it was nothing real big. And we looked up and the light towers were shaking real bad. And then all of a sudden the ground the ground just started really to rumble a lot. And I kind of first thing I thought of was get out of the dugout. I've got a question for you because I'm sure that in school you go through a lot of earthquake preparedness programs and I want to know from you if, if you had or if you were able to put any of that to use here today. Uh, kind of, sort of. When I was a fan of the Giants and I come back to the games, they always said in case of an emergency the fans on the lower deck always head to the field. It's the first thing I thought of when the earthquake hit was head onto the field. And you felt safe there? Yeah. It's probably the safest part of San Francisco right now. David, thanks so much for telling us what it was like. Thank you. And uh, stay on the field at all times if you can. Uh, once again, the uh, the.
traffic uh, situation here at Candlestick is uh, pretty messy, and that's putting it mildly. Fans trying to get out of the Candlestick area, headed uh, back into the uh, the inner parts of the city. They were are unable to do it at this point. We've got a lot of people surrounding us as a consequence. We'll be back as time permits with a little more from San Francisco's Candlestick Park. For now, Rick Lozano reporting live. Let's go back to you, Paul and Ann in Los Angeles. That's good. Thank you very much, Rick, for that. Some of the players in today's ill-fated World Series Game 3 hail from right down here in Southern California. This area, of course, the heart of earthquake country. Players like A's superstar Jose Canseco rushed out of the stadium with his wife. And some of the Southlanders talked about how that jolt felt. Oh, I live in San Diego, and, you know, we get 4.5s and 5.5s every winter. Uh, and, you know, you take your precautions, you get up and get under your arch or whatever, but this is a lot different. From my past experiences of growing up in Southern California, I knew right away what it was. So uh, I just, all I could envision was the whole uh, clubhouse. You know, it's on the bottom floor and two levels coming down on us. So uh, I just hightailed it out of there, went out to the back parking lot. All right, what you are looking at right now is some of the damage at Candlestick Park in San Francisco where fans uh, found chunks of concrete that fell at their feet and there have been splits apparently in some places and there has been damage in fact to the stadium, part of the reason that the game is not being played now and they'll be inspecting that to see whether it's safe to play any further games there. Uh, I have to tell you also that this is a word from Ontario International Airport tonight saying that Ontario is getting some diversions of air traffic from Los Angeles International being diverted out to Ontario because of the fog, not because of the problems up in the Bay Area. It is true that the airports in San Francisco and Oakland are closed tonight, and the airport in San Jose is apparently only handling emergency traffic right now. But the diversions that are happening right now in L.A.'s traffic, if you have someone who's coming in on a plane been diverted to Ontario, that is because of the fog out by the coast, not related to the earthquake in San Francisco. An effect we're feeling down here in Southern California from the earthquake up north. Another one, too. A lot of people down here felt this earthquake at 504. People in the uh, western part of the San Fernando Valley. Encino. And mm -hmm. Encino. People in downtown Los Angeles. I did not. I don't know if I Ann didn't, did I or was Bill in a did. Car. I yeah. was uh, mentioning earlier that uh, I was talking to a friend in Century City in a high rise. I was in my car very mm -hmm. near the studio, mm -hmm. and she's the first one who told me about the mm -hmm. quake. She felt it in Century City. I turned on the phone and discovered the quake was in San Francisco. However, oh, let, let me caution you that Kate Hutton from Caltech says that there is no uh, uh, con confirmation, bad word. There is no reason to believe, there is no connection between the earthquake up north and anything that might happen in terms of earth movement down here in Southern California. Right. Even though we felt it. it was at the same time. No, 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 no. I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about, I'm talking about having an earthquake down here I that's, gotcha. that's centered yeah. here. You're looking at a live shot in, uh, well, actually this was taken early in San Francisco. Fire. This is the Marina Fire, and again, Bill Press can tell you the intersection of this fire. It's a chestnut and Fillmore in the Marina section of San Francisco, residential section uh, near the bay, between downtown and the Golden Gate Bridge, and this is this the, bay, is the bridge. bay Bridge. How long is this uh, bridge, Bill, that uh, stems from San Francisco to Oakland? Oh, it's, a, it's a mile and a half, I think, Paul, and this is a, called the cantilever section of the bridge. It's between Oakland and Treasure Island. Uh, and this, this is the upper section of the bridge leading into San Francisco from Oakland, where a section collapsed. This car is on the upper section. I don't understand where the damage is. Well, there's, must have been you're trapped see, here. You're going to see in the next shot two cars that were, uh, there they are, yeah. mm -hmm. that uh, obviously slid down or were down there when, they, when the, the top section came down. Unconfirmed report that one person was killed on this bridge, but we can't confirm that. And uh, apparently only, apparently I say, because we had reports of people in the water, again not confirmed, apparently only two cars involved on this bridge Which so far. Which is absolutely that we remarkable and you can see when you that, think uh, about Oakland. what it could have been. Absolutely. And maybe the World Series is the reason for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And this East Bay Transit to bus there that just stopped just before the, uh, the collapse section. This is the Bay Bridge. It is not the Golden Gate Bridge. Those are two separate spans. By the way, speaking of transportation, we have word right now that rail traffic outside of San Francisco has been stopped until the tracks can be checked. There is apparently structural damage and broken water pipes at the Oakland Amtrak station. Some minor structural damage at the San Jose station as well. Now, are we back at the Another Nimitz? Major this is the Nimitz here. Freeway This here. is the Nimitz Freeway on the East Bay between the Bay Bridge and the Oakland Airport. It goes down the uh, western section of the city of Oakland. It's a double-decker freeway actually, and the top section there you can see has collapsed onto the lower section. 
there's smoke from at least one car that's trapped underneath. There must be many other cars under there. You can just see each section is just individually fallen apart, and then the whole freeway has collapsed there at uh, the lower part well, of the screen. It's difficult to see right here, but the, the, the top section was above the lower section. The lower section is also raised off the ground. Correct. So if it's going to pancake, there are two levels slamming down, not just one coming down on the lower level. Okay. It, it must be damage under there. there we has. are getting uh, bits and pieces of late information coming into us, and I might add, before we go any further here, that we are trying our darndest not to give you anything unconfirmed. Uh, the information is coming in so slowly, we are getting pieces of it by phone, by wire. We are giving you what, you what we can, but again, when it's unconfirmed, we are going to tell you that, and until we get solid confirmation, uh, that's the way it will stand. Bob Olson, a previous commissioner of the Seismic Safety Commission, says that there are lots of rapid aftershocks in the Santa Cruz area being felt right now. This copy is, I would say, three minutes old, so right now, meaning three minutes ago. The 6.9 earthquake was centered just 10 miles north of Santa Cruz. Now, ABC News is reporting tonight the greatest damage is in the Santa Cruz area. I can tell you now that I was on the phone about 45 minutes ago with a young lady who called me from Crestline who said that she spoke with her sister who lives in Aptos, Bill, and that is apparently up Ap near Santa Cruz. Aptos is a small town just on the coast, just south of Santa Cruz. And apparently, um, and how she spoke with her sister, I don't know, because all communication is supposed to be down, but apparently she indicated, and I will tell you that there is severe damage up there in Santa Cruz. ABC News reporting the same thing tonight. Governor Duke Majin is in France. An Air Force plane will fly him back to California as soon as possible. Um, we saw a shot of, uh, of President Bush about 30 minutes ago. He has been trying to get in touch with uh, Governor Duke Majin, has not been able to. That's the reason. There is no power from San Francisco to San Bruno. There have been some cracks in the runways at San Francisco Airport, and I can tell you they've been working on that airport for the last 30 days, and one of the runways has been down, and all the traffic's been snarled for the last 20 to 30 days. More damage to the airport in San Francisco. There's been structural damage uh, at the airport. Two air traffic controllers now, they tell us, have been hurt. That is the latest that we have according to uh, our information up to now. All right, and we have been told that Henry Alfaro is standing by out at Caltech, and we're going to go out to him and see what the latest is out there. The latest that we had heard was that the earthquake was being pegged right now at 6.9 on the Richter scale. Henry, does that still stand? That still stands, Annie. In fact, you know, in each of these uh, earthquakes, especially living here in California, they have characteristics. They are known as a strike slip, a thrust, and a normal. Now with me is Steve Bryant, a seismologist analyst, and we're going to borrow these couple of National Geographics to give you an illustration exactly what, what was involved in this particular earthquake up in San Francisco. You have to use a little bit of imagination, but uh, this area here, which parts the, the, the books, that would be considered the uh, San Andreas Fault, and you take it from there, uh, okay, Steve. Well, what happened was is that this is the section which has San Francisco on it, and this has the Great Basin over here, and what happened in this earthquake is that you had one sort of slide past each other uh, during, the, during the earthquake. And this is what we uh, considered a strike-slip earthquake. Right. And the Whittier? The Whittier was a thrust earthquake where you had uh, two pieces of ground where one actually rode up over on top of the other one. Mm -hmm. And the, the third type we have is a normal fault where you have two pieces pulling apart, basically, one drops down. So the strike slip, is that the one that causes the most damage, or is it just basically the magnitude that determines the extent of damage? It's the magnitude that really determines the amount of damage you have. The larger the earthquake, the more damage you have. All right, here we have an active area of San Andreas Fault. Now, you say it's big. What caused this bigness, or can it be determined? Well, what ultimately causes the size of the earthquake is how much strain is stored up on the fault, which is a function of how fast the strain accumulates and how long it's been since it was last relieved. And how long was it since relieved? Well, in this area, uh, probably since the 1906 earthquake. I don't know of any uh, sizable earthquake that has occurred on this fault in that area. Does this relieve pressure, and consequently you won't have another big one? Well, it doesn't say you won't have another big one. You just won't have one immediately in this area. What it does is it releases the strain right at that area of the fault. So you will not see another big one in that immediate area. Now, it's been several, what is it, a couple of hours now plus uh, since the earthquake took place. Does that mean now that the people living in there can be somewhat relieved on the fact that there won't be a, another massive aftershock? Well, you can't say that yet. The, the area around uh, this earthquake is still readjusting to the new stress that is in that area. So you can still have significant aftershocks, but they should be 
decreasing in size and also in the frequency that they occur. What is the warning to people up there? Uh, just be prepared, stay calm, and pretty much you've probably seen the worst. So just sort of uh, sit tight and make sure that you don't do anything rash. Living here in Southern California, obviously we're very much aware that uh, there's always talk about the big one. Uh, will there be any um, aftershocks that could affect this area? Probably not. Uh, the San Andreas Fault, even though it extends down here, uh, certainly isn't going to rupture all the way down to here. Well, that's it from Caltech. Once again, the uh, actual uh, record on the seismology uh, is uh, 6.9, and the epicenter was about 10 miles north of uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, reporting live from uh, Caltech, I'm Henry Alfaro, and I'm back to you, Paul and Annie. All right, thanks, Henry, Henry, thanks very much. We've been showing you pictures of one of the major fires burning in the city of San Francisco tonight, burning out of control in that marina area. There is another major fire, we understand, which is in the uh, somewhere close to the campus of UC Berkeley, close to the library on that campus. We haven't had much information to add to that. We don't know exactly where that second fire is burning, but this is new. Rescue crews now preparing for great fire danger in the city of San Francisco itself tonight. Safety crews are saying they have smelled gas all over the city and they are very worried about the danger that's posed by anybody who might be smoking there with gas leaking in the city people who live there are being urged to get out if they smell gas fumes. We told you before that the best advice usually during an earthquake is to stay put if you're if you don't have some place to go and uh, getting a message here that we want to check with somebody up in our KGO station, a remote. At any rate, the huge fire in the marina is being filled, fed by gas. Firefighters are not able to use water directly on that marina fire because of the danger of explosion. So that answers the question of how are that fire got to be so big. Are we looking at a burned out building here? What are we're, we looking at? We're going to go up to Lisa. Word out to their loved ones tonight, to their family, to their friends, that they all escaped just fine. The hotel has been evacuated. As you can well imagine, there's extensive damage, not just outside, but inside. Water damage, a lot of damage. Uh, apparently the fire department is saying the hotel is very shaky. Despite that, they are allowing the guests back in through the fire escape steps one floor at a time. They're taking in a few people to retrieve a few belongings. The people will be moved from this hotel to other hotels in this area, which are still open, although there is no power in this area. All of the hotels here are dark. Electricity is out here as it is in most other places. And I'm standing on Bayshore Boulevard in front of the hotel. Much of the road is closed. A few cars are getting through uh, southbound, but the road is completely blocked off northbound. Uh, we did uh, see one gentleman taken away in an ambulance from here. He was not seriously hurt, but he apparently fell and suffered bruises and contusions. He has been taken to the hospital. But again, here at the Amfac Hotel, again, major damage to the front of this hotel as the elevator shaft collapsed after it was hit by the water gallon tank, a 1,500-gallon uh, tank filled with water, which came crashing down when the earthquake hit. And that is the latest from here in Burlingame. All right, Lisa Stark, if you are just joining us, I'm Don Sanchez in the uh, KGO TV newsroom in San Francisco. A major earthquake struck today in Northern California. It uh, apparently registered seven on the Richter scale. That is the latest number. It struck at 5.04. Of course, it caused uh, cancellation of the third game of the World Series. The epicenter was 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz, located on the San Andreas Fault at the intersection of the Sargent Fault. Uh, and uh, that's the same epicenter as a quake in August that registered 5.4, and also the same area where there was a quake uh, June 27th, 1988, in the uh, Lake Elsman quake area, and that registered 5.7. San Francisco city government now is operating at 1003 Turk Street. Uh, nothing in City Hall at this point, 1003 Turk Street. Uh, the biggest damage are the most visible are several places, the Bay Bridge and also the Marina District of San Francisco. The Marina built on landfill for part of the Pan Pacific Exposition in 1915. The only building left there, of course, is the uh, is the uh, Palace of Fine Arts. And when this quake struck Northern California, this four-story building collapsed. Fire erupted. Part of the problem, obviously, with gas lines. They're urging everyone to turn off gas lines because, of course, they have ruptured in so many buildings and could lead to fire. You can see the cracks in this building. This is the uh, Marina District, uh, just uh, right near the water. This fire is still raging at this hour, and it's been going since uh, shortly after 5 o'clock. Uh, still a very difficult. In fact, uh, it appears that they're having the, the entire block now is uh, is ablaze in the area around Jefferson and Divisadero in the Marina District.
Let's go to the Bay Bridge because the Bay Bridge, that is the bridge that uh, connects San Francisco to the East Bay, Oakland and Berkeley, is closed. A section of that, a 50-foot section of the upper deck of the bridge, about a mile from the toll plaza, collapsed. Uh, there were automobiles here, as you see now, as uh, night falls that slid down that section that went onto the lower deck. One goes to the east, one goes to the west. We have seen people taken uh, out of vehicles there. There is one unconfirmed the report. just stopped. Everybody got out, was looking over the side of the bridge and had no idea what they were looking at. And next word you get is you evacuate the bridge. It's collapsed up front. We really weren't all that far from it. And uh, no, he's I'm sure people were hurt badly up there. We got back to Treasure Island because that's solid ground. People are staying there. And then they, what they did was they just took all the cars and drove them off backwards. Uh, again, that uh, was one of the people uh, who was on the bridge. All of the traffic was stopped. Uh, originally, uh, some of the people have had to leave their vehicles there and walk back to solid ground, but this is the uh, upper deck of the Bay Bridge, and they are clearing that away. Uh, but in the East Bay, there is more extensive damage along the 880 freeway in the area between Berkeley and, uh, and Oakland. And here the problem is uh, collapse. Again, there are two levels here. The uh, freeway has buckled. Uh, the top portion coming down upon the bottom. The smoke is perhaps from, uh, a, well, it looks like uh, it is apparently uh, from the lower level. So just like an accordion, it slammed down on the lower level. No telling how many cars, how many people were under that uh, on the lower section when the top section of I-880 collapsed. Uh, that is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the most uh, hardly hit areas. We go now to the South Bay uh, by phone, and we have uh, the latest from the San Jose area and Tony Russomano. Tony? No, we do not have Tony at this point. Moyer and Ann Martin uh, back in Los Angeles at the risk of, of, of confusing you, and we, we're not trying to do that, but that's our sister station in KGO. That was one of the anchors up there, and we are assuming that they have more up-to-date information than we do, and so when we see them come up on the monitor, we take them to bring you the very latest we can. Uh, he was trying to get a hold of somebody in San Jose. Uh, good timing. We are trying to surround ourselves in Los Angeles here with people who have lived and worked up in San Francisco. Bill Press is uh, one of them. Our Harold Green is another who lived and worked up there for at least, what, a year or two? Mm -hmm. And has family up there and has just talked to his brother, I believe, in yes. San Jose. Uh -huh. I have a family in uh, San Jose. I have family also in an area called Pacific which is immediately south of the city of San Francisco. Pacifica is in the 415 area code. You cannot get through on the 415 trying to call through uh, even to uh, KGO, our sister station, trying to make contact. We were able to get through on the 408 line, however, into the San Jose area, and this is not San Jose whatsoever. It's marina fire. This is the marina fire. We've uh, watched this throughout the afternoon. This has nothing to do with what I'm going to be telling you, which has to do with an area called Almondin Valley. I have family there. Uh, one of my brothers lives there. Uh, we spoke to him on the phone, and uh, he had just walked into the house when the quake hit. Uh, he's a lifelong Bay Area resident, and he said he has never felt anything like it. He said the quake hit an incredibly sharp snap that uh, struck the Bay Area just after 5 o'clock. Uh, there is great concern in that region right now about natural gas. There are apparently are pockets of natural gas throughout uh, the uh, Bay Area that there is a great deal of concern. Uh, he also points out that it is very difficult to get information. You see right now, uh, with what has happened with nightfall in the Bay Area, we have uh, many of the streets are dark. Uh, people who are in their homes are confused, as you might well imagine. They don't have any electricity. Uh, in their case, they're in a pocket near the Almaden Valley where uh, some of the services uh, have come back online. But as we continue our coverage throughout the evening, we're going to keep focused on that area near the epicenter, which was about 10 miles north of Santa Cruz, because it is through that region where we suspect we will sustain some of the heaviest damage. So you're up to date on a personal account right now. I'm happy to say that all is well with uh, the people in my family, at least on one side, uh, still having some uh, uh, another brother on the other side, unable to reach him right now, and I'm suffering a little bit of the anxiety uh, anyone would in
in this uh, particular situation. But I turn you back now to Paul and Ann and, uh, and to Bill, who have been uh, working on this throughout the afternoon. But I understand the frustration of anybody trying to get through. Here we're on the air saying, no. don't make those calls. And just out we're of a trying. lark, we make that <laughs> yeah. call. And, well, and you're living through. it. You're living yep. it, and the instinct is to do it. And we're happy to hear at yeah. least information about one member of your family yeah. up there. Yeah. Okay. When you're talking about the natural gas danger in San Francisco, and I've been there a few times, never lived there myself, it's a city that's built, my, my impression, on a hill, and it's a city that is fairly packed close together, but, and that sounds ominous to me. But the re what's really ominous is the entire, s or, or the sides of that city are built on landfill. They're built on landfill that was in from the bay, and that right. is the most unstable kind of soil, and that's where we're seeing most of the we're damage in the marina. We're going back up to San Francisco, around Bill. San Francisco. Thank you. But, Excuse me. <laughs> we're going back up to San go. Francisco. KGO is standing by, and they've got more on what's happening right now. Uh, it appears to be in just in people's houses. A lot of things knocked off of the walls, all kinds of broken family mementos and so forth. Again, I want to emphasize we do not have any reports of anyone killed down here. Uh, right, okay, now while you're talking about, about the uh, the damage there, we have been looking at pictures in San Francisco, that fire in the Marina District, also downtown businesses, windows around Union Square uh, have fallen out uh, and obviously, well, you can see one of the old buildings here in the Financial District uh, that was uh, damaged by this earthquake as well. Um, downtown uh, suffering a lot of damage in San Francisco. Cheryl Jennings uh, joins me again. Uh, we were in this newsroom, were we not, when everything shook? Uh... It was an incredible experience. For those of you who are just joining us from around the country, my name is Cheryl Jennings. We're coming to you live from the ABC studios in San Francisco. This afternoon at 5.04, there was a major earthquake which struck the San Francisco Bay Area. The earthquake was felt from north of San Francisco and Sacramento, Oakland, as far south as San Fernando Valley, which is in Southern California. Buildings were felt swaying there. We have Richter scale readings, conflicting readings from three different services, but they pretty much are close within the six point seven, six point nine to seven point range. The epicenter, if you have friends or family or if you're familiar with the, uh, this area, the epicenter is 10 miles northeast of the Santa Cruz area. Now we hope to bring you a list of the various locations which have been closed, which have been shut down, the bridges, the highways, that sort of thing. The story just doesn't get any better. We have had several people killed by the quake, at least seven people reported dead in the San Francisco area from that violent earthquake which struck just after five o'clock this afternoon. Police are telling us that six people were crushed to death when part of an old brick building fell on their cars on, on a street, a Bluxom Street in San Francisco. About 15 cars were crushed as well. We have reports of closures of the Bay Bridge. Um, for those of you who have been with us all afternoon, the Bay Bridge shut down when a major section, a 50-foot section of the Bay Bridge collapsed. The Coast Guard is telling us it has 241 footers in the water and a chopper in the air searching for possible cars. They don't know whether or not cars went off the bridge when that section of the bridge collapsed. It is the upper deck, the upper portion of the Bay Bridge, but they are out there just in case. Certainly we won't know if anyone went off the bridge until their families start calling, reporting those people missing. We're trying to assess the various numbers of injuries around the San Francisco Bay Area. We've had minor injury reports of cuts and scratches. One person in the San Santa Clara County area, San Mateo area, suffered a heart attack. Um, at this point, we have our reporter, Laura Marquez, standing by live with this report. Laura, go ahead. Laura Marquez is not, okay, Laura is not ready right now. We have word from Washington right now that President Bush is saying that the federal government is prepared to send help to the earthquake-stricken area here in California in the North Bay. Bush says that he is sending Transportation Secretary Samuel Skinner to assess the damage. Again, the Richter scale reading is ranging from 6.9 to 7, according to various services. It was so strong at the University of California Seismology Center in Berkeley that their equipment went off the scale. We had a reporter over there saying they haven't seen a quake this strong in many, many years. Uh, reports right now from around the Bay Area. San Francisco Airport is completely closed. Traffic is being diverted to San Jose and Oakland where some runways are open. Damage is minimal. If you're expecting people in or out of San Francisco, you can forget it for the moment. At San Francisco International, the tower is being described as a complete disaster area. All active duty police officers, firefighters, military personnel, doctors, and nurses are being called in to report. If you're watching this broadcast and you haven't for some reason heard this news, please report to duty all over the Bay Area. 
elevator mechanics. We've had reports of people trapped in elevators. They are begging for elevator mechanics to please report to your local message service and find out whether you are needed. In San Mateo County, fire is reported in progress at Fashion Island. Some building collapses are reported at the Hillsdale Mall. There are numerous reports of broken water pipes and gas mains here at the KGO Studios at the ABC Studios in San Francisco. We have had water main breaks. You can walk right outside our building and see broken glass hanging outside the building and water pouring into the streets and the entire neighborhood is blacked out. We have been running on generator power since 5.04 this afternoon. There are some injuries reported in Sonoma County, mostly elderly people with heart attacks, bumps and bruises from falls. There's also some minor, minor building damage reported. For those of you in the Bay Area who heard us tell about Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant near San Luis Obispo in Central California, we can happily report right now there is no serious damage. Earlier we told you that the uh, Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant had gone to low-level alert, a very frightening situation for those of us who aren't familiar with that. However, there is no cause for alarm. And again, we are pleased reminding people, check your gas mains. That is causing a number of fires around the Bay Area, Oakland and Berkeley, and of course, in San Francisco and the hardest hit right now that we are aware of is the Marina District where several buildings fell on the Divisadero Street area and people were roaming in the streets and a very, very terrifying situation right now. Uh, we had reports from people who were on the Bay Bridge at the time that section of the bridge collapsed on the upper deck. Two women told me that they saw a man, they were in their cars, heading to San Francisco from Oakland. They saw a man on a motorcycle waving madly at them, and they thought that he was just a little crazed or something. Then they saw all the traffic slowing down. Then they saw a mass of people running, running their way, trying to get out of harm's way. So apparently, when they were in the car, they had felt, they thought they had a flat tire. Many, many other people did. The folks just left their cars on the bridge, locked them up, and ran into San Francisco. I have with me right now Dan Levitt. You are out at Candlestick, Game 3 of the World Series. That isn't happening now, Dan. No, it's not, and uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly what the uh, method or what the operation will be here now as far as the World Series goes, period. It, at 5.04, I was standing outside of the stadium uh, in the van, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the Channel 7 vans. It started moving, and obviously I thought somebody was playing around with me, and so I jumped out of the van. As I jumped out, I saw the entire parking lot moving like this. I looked up at the structures uh, in the stadium itself. The light standards were moving. Uh, it was at that time that uh, Eric Christensen, my producer, and we took off and, and tried to get a hold of uh, some authorities. Uh, and the first one we could get to, of course, was the commissioner of baseball who was waiting in his box on the uh, first base side, waiting to see if he could get some word. And we finally got it from him, and this was it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are postponing the game because there is no power in the stadium. We would like you to leave in an orderly way. I don't believe there's any great danger. But we have no idea when the power is going to be on, and we have to get people out of here before it gets dark. So if you'll leave in an orderly way while there's still light, I think everybody can leave in a graceful fashion. Please leave. The game has been postponed. There'll be no baseball tonight. Thank you. A few words? Do you know the extent of what's happened so far? No, not all I have at this point is I talked to our operations center. They say that there is a building with partial damage at 6th and Brandon. There's also a building with uh, partial collapse around Turk and Fillmore, and that there is some structural damage to the Hall of Justice. I'm going to be leaving the ballpark now to go down to the Hall of Justice while they're continuing to get an estimate around the city of any kind of damage, and then we'll make a determination there as to what's to be done. But our command post will be located at Northern Police Station at Turk and Fillmore. This was the police car, Cheryl, that uh, came, one of the two police cars of San Francisco Police Department that came down to the playing field itself to alert those in the stands to please remain calm, stay in their seats. Uh, no one moved. They were telling everyone that the power was out in the stadium. And when you stop and think about what has happened here in San Francisco today, as you can see now, some of the players, this is Terry Steinbach, the uh, catcher, uh, Steinbach of the uh, Oakland A's with his wife. As you can see, she's obviously shaken as everyone was out at the ballpark. Uh, Terry trying to comfort her as they leave the field. Uh, Big Daddy Russell, Rick Russell with, I assume, uh, his mother, uh, his wife, uh, as they too, uh, he was leading them out uh, towards the uh, Giants clubhouse. Here's Matt Williams and his wife, every, Roger Craig. We, he wanted to know what was going on. We gave him our, our television uh, monitor so he, could, he was seeing pictures of the Bay Bridge, the span, the 30-foot span that had dropped. 
Here is Jose Canseco and his wife Esther. Uh, everyone obviously just in a didn't really know what to do. A very calm, I would say, though, Cheryl, uh, considering the circumstances, until it started sinking in, until people started getting reports as to really what was taking place here in San Francisco and Oakland. Uh, then it all registered as to really what was happening. It, it, they want some people wanted to play baseball, obviously, for a while until they realized yeah. how so serious this is. Dan, right now we're going to go to Laura Marquez, who is standing by live in the Marina District. Laura, go ahead. Well, Cheryl, this fire is coming under control. You can see the white smoke, and the fire chief tells me that when you see the white smoke, that means they've got it just about under control, but not before they had one building completely demolished. Uh, the building across the street also has tremendous damage. They are pumping water up from the bay and there are still unconfirmed reports of a couple some deaths. Uh, they're not sure how many injuries. Some people were trapped. Now, they, because the fire is coming under control, that does not mean the end of the problems for the people in the Marina District. You can see over here there is still extensive structural damage, so people will not be able to go home into their houses tonight. Uh, they're going to have uh, structural engineers checking out all of the buildings in this area because there are several cracks. Uh, they do say that they're not really sure when people are going to be going in. They hope that they can seal off and, and, and have this, these couple of blocks sealed and make sure that they are safe by tomorrow. Uh, still, once again, they do believe that there are some deaths, but no one can tell me how many. No one can tell me how many injuries, although obviously when you've got a number of buildings collapsing, you're going to have that. And, and that is the latest from here in the Marina District. Okay, Laura, Laura Marquez reporting live from the Marina District where you can see those pictures, those very frightening pictures, many buildings collapsed, fire, fire underway. Um, more terrible news from Oakland. The police department there says that as many as 40 people may have died in the quake, many of them in the collapse of the 880 Cypress Freeway structure. Uh, they say, however, the police say that the situation is under control and they ask that you please, please stay off the streets and stay at home. Driving is extremely dangerous right now. Right now I have with me Sandy Lee, reporter Sandy Lee. Sandy, you have been out and about. What was going on for you? Well, we were in the Marina District and that seems to be the hardest hit area and from what the policemen tell us, it's the, uh, it's because it's on landfill. I think we have some tape right now that shows some of the damage in those buildings. Uh, uh, what we saw, this was once a four-story apartment building. When we arrived, they were taking out victims. They, we saw three people. They had had minor injuries. One woman had a pelvic injury. Uh, at this point, we understand that none of the buildings have been checked. They don't know if people have, have been evacuated. Almost every building we saw in the Marina, Marina District uh, suffered some kind of damage. This building here was a three-story apartment building that uh, with 20 units and is uh, totally burned. Okay, and uh, we saw streets buckled, uh, garage doors. There is no phone. There are no phones in the area, so if they had to call emergency, we don't know how, how they'd get through. The only way I got back to the station was by a motorcycle. Uh, there is a, a gridlock in the area. People are standing around stunned. They uh, don't know where to go, what to do, or go home. The police couldn't send them away. Uh, the, 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 we have a gentleman now who's going to explain it would what be, happened. would be the landfill in this because the underground is of sand and landfill. It's very loose. We have older structures that are two, three, and four stories, some even five. Thus, they are old buildings haven't been restructured for earthquake proofing. And then we had a major earthquake, I believe, over six, and this is the result. So that's what we they tell us, that it's... Uh, People are still standing around. We, when we were coming back, all the lights were off to the city. There's no lights in intersections. There's almost a festive party area a f a atmosphere in some uh, parts of the city. We saw people dining on the streets. Mm -hmm. So people were shocked, and they don't know what to do. Okay, Sandy, thank you very much for that report. We have late word right now that uh, two people in that Bay Bridge collapse when the upper portion of the east, uh, east portion of the Bay Bridge collapsed, a 50-foot section, two people seriously injured. They have been taken to Letterman Hospital. Also in the San Jose area, the Office of Emergency services is reporting that highway 17 has a landslide on it is closed in both direction between uh, scotts valley and saratoga highway 9 is closed the chp has cleared fi a 50 car accident at 101 and 280 and there's a fire at cambrian plaza shopping center that is under control a pool chemical spill at uh, foxworthy and almaden that area has been closed off the nuclear regulatory commission reports that there are no problems
problems in any of the reactors in California. We had heard reports, very frightening reports, that there was some kind of a low-level alert at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant in San Luis Obispo, that is in central California. Uh, that earthquake was felt there at Diablo Canyon. No damage has been reported. The number two reactor is operating with full power. They're treating this, of course, as an unusual event. It is the lowest classification, though, of inspection. Rancho Seco, San, San Onofre, Vas Valacitos, Humboldt, and Aero Test in San Ramon, all reported to be in good condition. Once again, uh, six people reportedly crushed to death in their cars in San Francisco, the south of Market Street area of San Francisco, when a major earthquake in the Bay Area hit at 5.04 this afternoon. It knocked power off the air to ABC, to KGO Studios here. Right now, we have Johnny McCormick live by the telephone. He was a witness to the uh, collapse. Cyprus. Okay, I'm sorry, Johnny, you were with the, the Cyprus collapse? Go ahead, Johnny, you're on the air. Yes, um, it was very... Johnny, could you speak up, please? We can barely hear you. Yes, the, um, I think that the youngsters deserve a um, good thing because they helped a lot um, with now, the... Okay, hey, Johnny, we have a picture of the collapse of the uh, 880 section of the Cyprus, and I see a fire there. What did you see? Oh, I seen the fire, and I seen a person lay down with their head bust open and everything. Mm -hmm. Johnny, I'm having difficulty hearing you. I'd appreciate it if you could speak up just a little bit. What did you do when this collapsed? I ran. You ran. You got out of your car and ran? I wasn't, I wasn't on the uh, freeway. I was at the store. You were at the store, but you saw the uh, the freeway section collapse? Yes. Uh-huh. What went through your mind when you were watching this? I thought it was the end of the world. You thought it was the end of the world. You know, Johnny, I think a lot of people who have experienced this quake today felt the same way. This is a major quake in the Bay Area. The readings, 6.7 to 7 point on the various Richter scale readings that we're getting. The epicenter 10 miles northeast of the Santa Cruz area. I uh, want to update you again. The uh, quake shook, uh, was felt in Reno, Sacramento, Oakland, and as far south as the San Fernando Valley. Six people reportedly crushed to death in their cars in San Francisco. We have a report from Oakland that 40 people may have been killed when a building collapsed. The Coast Guard has two 41-footers and a helicopter out over the Bay Bridge, searching just in case cars plunged off the bridge when a 50-foot section of that bridge collapsed. Uh, as you heard, Dan Levitt report, Game 3 of the World Series was canceled by Commissioner Faye Vincent. He asked fans to leave the stadium in an orderly fashion. We have conflicting reports as to whether or not there there have, has been structural damage to the overhang. There have been some cracks in candlestick. They may be old cracks that are not dangerous at all, so we're just waiting to see about that. BART, our rapid transit system here in the Bay Area, hundreds of commuters were in BART stations. They, of course, ran when the quake hit. The trains are not running. BART inspectors are checking out the system. No injuries have been reported to BART. The train in the tube was moved, and the Trans Bay tube has been moved. The train was stuck for a short time in the Trans Bay tube. It has been moved to the Embarcadero station. Passengers were able to get off BART very safely there train service. Amtrak also halting service while they are checking their tracks. Amtrak stations in Oakland and the San Jose area are damaged and closed. The Coast Starlight train heading for Oakland from Los Angeles is stalled just south of Salina. The Salinas, the California Zephyr, is due to arrive this evening in Oakland from Chicago. It has been held up in Sacramento. Right now, our reporter Leslie Brinkley is standing by live. She is not standing by live. We have a tape report from our reporter Leslie Brinkley, which was recorded earlier. It's been a frightening scene here. As you can see just below me is where this crack in the Bay Bridge occurred, a 50-foot section. You see down there below the two cars, two cars that were on the upper deck when the bridge collapsed. They fell below. We understand that the people in both of those cars did get out safely. We do not know the extent of injuries at this point. Down below us, where this fell down, uh, there were people describing it as a garage door closing. And we don't know yet if there were any injuries or deaths down there. We do understand from eyewitnesses that there were one or two cars below that this portion of the bridge did fall on top of. You're looking across the bay right now. It's an eerie scene, an eerie scene to be standing here by this big gap in the Bay Bridge. Uh, there were a lot of commuters standing down below here a short while ago. They have since left. They have been ferried back over to the city. The link between San Francisco and Oakland is not working right now.
Okay, thanks for that report, Leslie. Right now, let's go to San Jose, where Police Lieutenant Scott Seaman is standing by. Lieutenant, please help us work through this. Okay. Um, San Jose appears to have suffered less damage than other areas. We have no reports of fatalities. We have uh, a number of reports of injuries, but they're limited mostly to broken bones, broken hips, and we understand that they're mostly elderly victims. And we have a couple of reports of heart attacks. All of our hospitals are open and operating, and uh, we have no building collapses, although we have had major structural damage to a couple of buildings in our downtown. Did you find that your city responded when the quake hit? Were you, you felt like you were prepared for this? We had uh, personnel, uh, all of our command personnel in the police department, and we opened the uh, emergency operations center uh, shortly after the earthquake. We initiated a callback of our personnel, and I just wanted to take a moment to say that we now have sufficient uniformed personnel for San Jose Police. We do not need additional personnel at this time. Okay. Thank you, Lieutenant. Now, we've had major power outages up here in the, the San Francisco area. We have power out all around us. We're running on backup power. What is that situation down there for you? We're suffering the same problems. Uh, a number of our problems are traffic-related and uh, seem to, to be all over the entire city, and we're expecting that uh, we'll be without power for six to eight hours. Lieutenant, they're advising us here that the streets are unsafe to drive on because of the numerous cracks. How is that in your city? We don't have the same reports of cracks. We only have one overpass at Southwest Expressway and Highway 6, Highway 280 that suffered about a four-inch crack, and Highway Patrol is responsible for handling that. Uh, our streets appear to be open, although they're very congested and all the intersections are uh, difficult to cross because of the power outage. Okay, Lieutenant, did you feel the quake yourself? Yes, I did. And were you, is this the worst thing you've been through? It's the worst I've been through. I'm uh, glad I was in the building and able to, to work for it, um, but it uh, is probably five or six times longer than anything else I'd ever felt. Okay, the important thing, though, for folks who are listening to you is that they remain calm. We are instructing people to uh, obviously do their own assessment at their house and, and care for their own families and neighborhoods. Uh, they need to be aware of the possibility of an aftershock, although we cannot predict that in any way. But uh, they need to, to be careful about uh, gas and water lines broken. And uh, if they have significant problems, we're urging them to call 911 so that we can uh, respond to them as quickly as possible. Okay, Lieutenant, thank you very much for joining us. That's Lieutenant Scott Siemens with the San Jose Police Department. They're not suffering as badly as we have up in the San Francisco area. Martin Wyatt is here right now. You were out of candlestick. When it was the, uh, uh, hit. when it hit, Cheryl. We have just finished uh, our, our live at, from 4.30 to 5. Eric Christensen, myself, and John Matroni, one of our producers, we were walking up a ramp at the stadium, on the outside of the stadium, heading to see the game. When this hit, it was a, a shake, a roll. I looked at Eric Christensen, it was incredible, because we looked up immediately up above us, all this concrete, we could actually see it swaying. It looked like on the mountain that uh, sits besides, or that huge hill beside Candlestick, it looked like a bomb had dropped because it was dust just exploding off that mountain. I've been in Vietnam, I've never been so afraid at that moment right there. We looked at each other and then we tried to come back to the uh, truck to see what was happening. When we got back there, that's when we saw kind of sh shocked ball players coming back from the field and of course I went on the field to see what was happening if the game was going to be called or not we've got a tape I think they're going to roll it now and you'll see some of the ball players who are coming back out when they found out that the game was canceled this had these shocked expressions Jose Canseco along with his wife now Esther uh, talked to Mark Gibson after this about what the wives were feeling like when this whole tremor came about Everybody pretty scared. Yeah, especially the ones that have their kids with the babies. They're like crying. They're terrified right now because they don't know if their kids are right. Yeah, but they're really scared. I'm really scared. I have no kids. And they have their kids with somebody else. I don't know. Growing up, did you get a sense that the thing was going to fall? Or, or, or how, how did it feel? I really thought that. See, we were coming up this ramp, and I really thought the top. All that snow was going to fall on our heads or something. I just panicked. Base, baseball is uh, secondary. There's a lot of people, I'm sure that have been hurt and uh, uh, that's really a primary concern right now. I, mean, I got my family on the bus and my parents are out did you, there. Did, have you found everybody in your family yeah. though? Well, I know that was your concern. Yeah, it's a big concern with something like this. You got 60,000 people here and biggest concern right now is getting everybody safe and out of here. Yeah, sorry man. 
It was an eerie feeling. I mean, ball players wandering around trying to find their families, not even concerned about the World Series. I mean, obviously, the impact of what the magnitude that had happened, it took a while for it to sink in because at first they were just milling around on the field. But when that impact started to sink in, they immediately were trying to find their families, trying to regroup, and to, to try to just... I mean, the game was just completely out of their minds. I mean, it, I mean it, 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 it's to get it. to safety. What should I do? And and it, as Pete pointed out, it was like people were in shock because it took them a while to react. And it was just a, it's a very scary feeling for me, being up there on the second level, looking up at all that concrete. I'm waiting for something to fall. And it was just scary. Very scary. Martin, thank you very much. We have Leslie Brinkley standing by live right now. Leslie, go ahead. It's looking bad over here in Oakland. The electricity is out in much of the city, and we have a bad freeway collapse. It's that ramp of the Nimitz Freeway that goes from Cypress, St Cypress Street on up to the Bay Bridge. About a six or seven block stretch of it collapsed during the earthquake. There have been ambulances going in and out of here all evening long. We understand as many as 30 or 40 ambulances. And and preliminary reports right now are that there may be as many as 8 to 40 dead. 8 to 40 dead, many others injured. Uh, this again is a stretch of the freeway. The upper ramp collapsed onto the lower ramp. And we understand that uh, the columns gave way. Those columns began to crumble and sway, and the freeway collapsed down. We're waiting to get in a little closer and get some official word for you, but it is a disastrous scene over here in Oakland. Okay, Leslie, thank you very much. As you heard Leslie Brinkley reporting just now, we have reports. Well, we just got a late report from Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy. He says that as many as 40 people, 40 people may have been killed in the Cypress section of Freeway 880 when it collapsed, major section of that freeway. One woman who was just on the air with us, Johnny McCormick, said that when she saw that thing collapse, she said it sounded and felt like the end of the world. Ana Chavez is sitting here. Ana, you have some late information? Well, uh, what we want to do is remind people of all of the things that they're encountering now, the closures if you're not aware of what is going on in the Bay Area, we're going to give you the updated list of what we have, ever-changing, of those situations that represent closures for our transportation infrastructure in the Bay Area. The Bay Bridge is closed. The Golden Gate Bridge is open in both directions. The 19th Street off-ramp is uh, southbound is closed, however. Um, earlier, we mentioned that the San Mateo Bridge is closed structurally. It does not look like it suffered any great damage, but traffic is being diverted to the Dumbarton Bridge, the Rich Rich bridge is open. San Mateo is still being inspected, by the way. The 280 extension, the elevated section from 6th Street to 101 is closed. The Central Freeway, uh, 101 at 9th Street, is closed in both directions. Uh, we also know that Highway 101 at University Avenue is closed. 480 is closed in both directions. Highway 101 at 3rd in San Mateo is closed. Major damage. Uh, there is the note of the closure in Palo Alto. 280 at Mora in San Mateo is closed. There is major damage damage there. Of course, as you look at these, you will probably uh, understand that wherever there has been an overpass, there is a likelihood of some kind of fracture or damage. Where you didn't see closures noted there, Highway 17 and Highway 9 are closed due to fires or boulders. We don't have a lot of information yet from the Los Gatos or Santa Cruz area, and it may be that the, the communications in and out of the mountains area is uh, part of the reason why. An update on injuries, in addition to what we told you a little bit earlier, uh, the governor reporting that 47 people may have been uh, injured in that collapse on the Cyprus. Um, hospitals around the Bay are reporting a, a wide variety of injuries. They say many of them involve elderly people who were shocked, uh, scared into heart attacks or suffered stress reactions when the, the quake hit. Right now we want to go to Willie Monroe who joins us by phone. Will? Well, Anna, I'm still here at the UC Berkeley Seismology Laboratory where they have been going over their charts and trying to find out as much as they can about this. They are sticking with their figures of 7.0 on the Richter scale. Of course, that's subject to change re pending review of the seismology stations around the state. As I mentioned earlier, when you get above 6.5 on these instruments, then the measurements are not quite as accurate. Right now, what they are doing is putting together a team of about four to six people to go down to the epicenter outside Santa Cruz to begin mapping the area and installing portable instruments there so they can measure the aftershocks and uh, see what kinds of effects will be uh, visible to the naked eye there. They expect to see as much as a three to five foot separation in the earth because of that, uh, that very severe earthquake. So that's what's happening here at the UC Seismology Laboratory. 
Thank you, Will. We should tell you about the range of uh, what people are saying this earthquake actually did. The U.S. Geological Service is saying that it may have been a 6.9. Caltech is saying the quake was a 6.7. They're going to argue about that, and you're going to hear different reports for some time. But we do know it was a huge shaker. Pete, maybe we should go over some of the emergency bulletins that have been coming in to keep people posted on what's changed. Well, we'll give you the most recent first. The Berkeley Public Schools have just decided they will be closed tomorrow. You're going to be hearing virtually every public school system affected by this quake making that same announcement. This, as far as I know, is the first one. And of course, it's going to go on all night long. You can assume that this will be a general announcement by the end of the night, just simply because of the nature of this and the difficulty in moving from one place to another. We've also been asked by Pac Bell to extend a warning to everyone to suggest, please, if you do not have to call uh, San Francisco, don't call San Francisco. Phone lines are jammed. They are also jammed in other parts of the country that are trying to call here. So again, the warning, if you don't have to make an emergency call, please don't do it. Uh, it, it might be good to point out a couple of things at this point, and that is, uh, partially coming from the trip we made from Candlestick Park here to downtown San Francisco and what we saw. Uh, two or three things leap out at you. First of all, if you don't have some place to go, do not get in your car. Don't go out there. It, 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 it's the worst possible thing to do at this point. Try to stay close to home. If you're concerned about gas leaks, if you're concerned about the structure of the home, then for heaven's sake, get with neighbors, whatever you have to do here in the city or in the outlying areas, and, uh, and stay out of the structure. The other thing is that we saw and smell gas leaks virtually every place that we went. Be very, very careful if you smell the gas. Uh, we saw a couple people trying to start fires on the street for light. Now, this was in areas of the town where we were smelling the gas. Don't do it. Don't smoke inside of a building. You simply can't do it. You can't take that kind of chance. We have an update now, unfortunately, of more injuries to be reported. We now understand that six people died in Santa Cruz in the City Garden Mall. At least 20 injuries were reported in the marina. This picture is one that became the first visible uh, serious structural damage. Mm -hmm. I think for most of us, it was the first picture we had. Uh, this was a 30 to 50 foot section of the bridge obviously just crushing down on the lower level. On a candlestick, this is the first time. When we saw these pictures in your report, we realized for the first time how serious this was. We have Lieutenant Governor uh, uh, Leo McCarthy, who is just here. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, if you could come on in. And I'll have you sit here, and Anna, why don't you talk to him? Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you for being with us. I'm going to give you my microphone so people can hear your answers. Uh, we heard earlier today uh, President Bush is going to make federal aid available to earthquake victims right. as quickly as possible. What does this mean for the state? Well, it, it'll help. There's tremendous extensive property damage. This was a 7.0 quake. It's a very heavy shake. Uh, we don't have a total assessment of the property damage yet because the most important thing is we're trying to determine how many fatalities there are out there. We've got this ugly news from uh, the city of Oakland, the collapse of the freeway structure yes. on 880. There are 40 plus deaths over there. We're talking to the Oakland Police Department. They're doing a good job, but it's a mess. But may I ask you quickly, because you're so close in touch with these things as a general, in a general case of these emergency situations, what you've asked for so far. Now, we've heard that Fort Ord is sending people up. The president all is already sending people out to evaluate the situation. Can you give us a sense of that? I think the state and local agencies are doing a very good job of assessing what's going on. Uh, so far, there's, there's no looting. There's no need to call out the National Guard. The local law enforcement agencies are on top of things in that respect. The dis disheartening news that we're getting is, of course, uh, there are a number of fatalities, particularly from the Oakland situation. And we're trying to find out uh, when the communication systems of the Bay Area will be open. The airports were closed down temporarily. Major highways in several places are... Any word on power yet? Uh, no. That's a real problem. I it's think. a real problem. This is a city of darkness right now, and, and I'm sure that uh, the utility companies are trying to get the job done and turn the light back on, but this was quite a shake, so they've got damage in a number of places. Governor, people all around the Bay Area are sort of getting an education with us as this breaks, how we're assembling the information. How do you do it? What does your office do? Who do you work with to find out what kind of help is needed statewide? Office of Emergency Services in Sacramento. Uh, uh, we, we stay in touch with Governor Duke Majin's office in Sacramento. Governor Duke Majin is in Europe. I've been in touch with, with him to let him know what's happening. 
and we go directly to the local police departments and sheriff's offices. They're doing a good job, they're on top of things, and they give us an up-to-date assessment. Governor, coming back from Candlestick Park through this, the city streets, and we had to take a rather circuitous route to get here, it took us about 50 minutes to an hour, we saw a number of things that were encouraging. Uh, people at the stick, first of all, remained very calm and remained around their cars, decided not to get on the freeways and so on. We also saw people trying to direct traffic of most of the major thoroughfares, tremendous. which was an extraordinary Absolutely thing. Absolutely tremendous. Also, Our citizens reacted to this was well, wonderful. I I wonder if you want to say anything about that, because there is some concern about darkness I and went, what people might do at this point. I went through, well, I, I hope everybody will stay in their home, or if they have to drive over bridges uh, or over highways that where there are serious cracks or rock, rock slides, just try to hold tight for a while, but stay in touch with your, your local, the police departments here and get the information that you can. Or phone my number at 415-557-2662, and we'll try to inform you about what's happening. But, but please don't go out if you are at home. The local law enforcement agencies are having a tough enough time with the amount of highway damage that exists around the Bay Area. Governor, we want, uh, Lieutenant Governor, we want to show you the latest pictures that we have of what was the most, probably the most catastrophic uh, part of this quake so far, the videotape from the Bay Bridge. Uh, this was the first sign, really, for a lot of people of how serious a quake this actually was. Earlier, when it first came in, there were reports that perhaps cars had gone off the bridge and the Coast Guard began searching the water below it. Uh, later, we understand that perhaps two injured people were removed from the scene. Uh, people who were on the scene said that it was like a garage door, a giant garage door closing down on the, the lower deck. And people who were on the bridge described just the most extraordinary kind of vibration and shaking and then being turned around, uh, made a U-turn, head to the other edge of the bridge and, and headed into town to try to clear that area. But uh, it's a, it, that was really probably the first time that and the Cypress extension that gave people an idea of just how huge a disaster That's this right. is. That's right. This is a very strong quake, and the strongest quake we've had in a long time. Well, I appreciate you being here and coming by. I know that you were coming to talk with the people from Nightline, uh, and that they're going to be doing extensive coverage from the East Coast of what's happening here in California. We might say that emergency people are doing an extraordinary job in getting information to us, which uh, so that we can get it to you, and that really yeah. this is the only way it's going to get out there tonight, and we thank you. Uh, I think what, you, what you're doing to inform the public is very important. Thank you both. Thanks all very right, much, Leo thank McCarthy, you. for being with us. We appreciate it. Let me give you an update now on all the airports again. We know the situation keeps changing, so for the those of you who are joining us in progress with our continuous coverage of the earthquake and the aftermath, let me give you some notes here. The San Jose Airport is uh, completely open and operational. There are no reports of damage or injury. San Francisco International Airport, however, is closed, and the control tower there, they say, is a complete disaster area. Apparently, we had a partial collapse of a control tower. There were unconfirmed reports that there was a partial collapse of a terminal. Oakland Airport, by the way, there are two runways closed and two Two runways open. That's the situation with the airports. Let's go back to that map that we briefly showed you there because it's important to try to, to try to understand in your heads how to move if you have to. And we're very concerned about people, for instance, that were in the city or at the stadium and how they're going to get home tonight. So let's go back to the map if we can, Kenny. Uh, this will show you some of the problems, the immediate problems. San Mateo Bridge is closed, but we do not know of damage there, only that they are inspecting it. There's considerable concern about rolling on the bridge. 880, that is the collapsed section in Oakland of the Nimitz Freeway. Uh, we know that there were at least 40 deaths at that point. That has been confirmed, in fact, by the lieutenant governor just moments ago. The Bay Bridge, we just showed you that damage there. There is no movement across the bridge. Obviously, there will not be for a great number of hours uh, into the future. And Funston Tunnel, we also understand there's a partly uh, uh, damaged situation there, and so that's closed. You're going to have to use side streets. You're going to have to take it carefully. And please, pay attention to the people who have voluntarily stood in the middle of those streets to direct traffic tonight. We want to remind you of an important information yes. resource you've got in your house, no doubt. It's your phone book. Any phone book. Get a copy of it and open it up. And inside you'll see some pretty detailed and helpful instructions on earthquake preparedness before and after. The stuff you wish you would have done before today and the stuff you might need to know about doing tomorrow. It has all of the kinds of information that would be very helpful if, for example, you're not sure how to turn off the gas, but you smell it in your home. So, by any means, if, you, if you're at all uncertain about what to do if you smell gas in your immediate area, you're not sure how to turn it off, open up the phone book and look at the instructions. And they're very clear. You don't need a lot of fancy tools. It's a pretty easy thing to do. All of the... Most, most people have the same kind of gas situation, right. the same things to turn, so simply look at that uh, instruction. All 
Back in Los Angeles, I'm Harold Grain. I'm Tawny Little. We have been watching live coverage from our sister station, KGO Television in San Francisco, which, as we understand it, is still working under emergency power. Uh, that television station, along with many other Bay Area broadcasting media today, knocked out of service shortly after 5 o'clock when a major earthquake rocked the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, you have to wonder, Harold, obviously the, the night has fallen now in uh, San Francisco. People are literally in the dark there, though, because we are getting television reports down here. We know far more than most of the residents in San Francisco, and I think how frightening it must be for those people after all that they've endured today. We now rejoin our reporters in San Francisco at KGO for their continuing live coverage on this Tuesday night. Still burning tonight. Uh, uh, again, it, as, as Anna described it, this is a gas fire. This is precisely what can happen if, if, you're not, if you're not terribly careful with that. And as we said, moving all across the city, that is the south and south central parts of the city tonight, uh, we smell gas. It, mm -hmm. it was everywhere at every intersection. A lot of you were tuning in in time to see our early uh, pre-game newscast and then for the World Series. Well, Pete Wilson, Dan Lovett, Martin White, and Mark Gibson were out at Candlestick, and now we're joined by Mark to bring us latest information. Mark? Mark, Mark can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yes, yes I can we hear can you. hear you. Okay, we're on Highway 280. Somehow we, we got lost in all that traffic on 3rd Street. We found our way back to 280. We were able to get on 280 South at Monterey. I understand it's closed from 6th Street all the way to 18th Street, but traffic's moving freely from Monterey South. Now, what we did find on Sneath, uh, Sneath Lane in San Bruno is panic buying at a gas station there. Uh, owner Ken Tyler says people have been queuing up since about 6.15. I mean, it looks like a gas shortage there, only worse. People buying everything, soda pop, uh, bread, and then lining up for gas. Interestingly enough, Jose Canseco drove his own vehicle from Candlestick. We saw Jose Canseco there still in his uniform because, you know, Pete, at Candlestick, they couldn't change their uniforms because there were no lights. Jose's there pumping gas. He almost ran out of gas. In fact, Mark, I can tell you, I was in the locker room, the, the Giants locker room, uh, shortly after this occurred to, to see what was going on inside uh, the structure of the building itself. It was absolutely like a dark room, absolutely pitch black. Can I ask you about this, uh, this panic buying situation? As we understand it from the governor and everything we've been able to learn tonight there is no reason for that if you're concerned about food supplies there will be food there are ways to get into the city they have more than enough uh, ways of supplying the stores and so on this is not going to be a problem the immediate problem now is damage obviously fires and so on so the, the panic buying is at this point pointless and i understand the same thing's happening in marin pete but uh, again ken kyler was saying people coming in saying you're the only thing uh, that we've seen open, and the lights are on in this area. Oh, they and, are. And, and the traffic lights are working. Uh, and then there's free access down 280. They see the, the gas station there, uh, people queuing up. And in fact, the police have come to start directing traffic at the intersection because there have been several accidents. So again, we would like to urge people not to panic by because there's no need for that. Mark, when you left the stadium, uh, now we left first, then Dan, and then you uh, apparently about 45 minutes to an hour later. What was the situation? People still in their cars, still sitting? on the trunks and so on, uh, uh, just milling around? It, it was sort of a, a, a semi-carnival atmosphere out there. Uh, some people still sort of lost, not knowing where to those, go. Those folks don't know how bad this is. That's the problem. They've had no communication. And In fact, people were asking me all along, Pete, how bad is this thing? Uh, I wonder if I have a home to go home yeah, to now. Yeah. But uh, along 3rd Street, people sitting on their stoops, uh, as you say, out in front of businesses, uh, it, it took us at least an hour to even get back over to 280 right. uh, from the, from Candlestick back Mark, up we, Third Street. We have some more information now. We also have, uh, we do Steve have Bell, Steve Bell. The Oakland CHP joins us now by phone. Thank you for being with us, and can you tell us what you know? Well, right now we're on scene at the uh, collapse of the 880 Cypress structure. There's about approximately one mile of collapsed freeway on the... Uh, northbound direction now. We're on scene trying to remove the vehicles, um, injuries, fatalities, and debris. Uh, we have videotape of that collapse. Can you tell us, when we first saw it, it was not apparent how severe it was because you saw that the road was collapsed. It looked like a sandwich, but we couldn't tell really how many people were involved. An estimate of injuries or numbers of vehicles that were caught? Well, we don't have an accurate estimate right now, and we're, going to, we're not going to give one as of yet. 
Uh, we do know it was during rush hour. However, the majority of people were on their way to the game, and it was light traffic, so we're hoping that the number was minimal. Officer, we've received reports from uh, the state emergency services people who say now the death toll is 50 at that area alone, at 880 alone. Uh, that uh, This is the area, about the mile stretch of this road that's simply sandwiched together. The upper part collapsing, and you know where it is if you've traveled, because you travel through that long uh, tunnel-like uh, uh, section of 880, and it's simply sandwiched together, as you can see we believe at least 50 people dead there that fire coming from one of the vehicles down uh, caught in between those two concrete structures we're also getting word from surrounding emergency rooms in this area in oakland and in the east bay that the people who are working in those emergency rooms are absolutely overwhelmed victims have all kinds of uh, various degrees of uh, injuries very severity of their injuries but they are overwhelmed doing emergency surgeries for people who were caught in that Officer, thank you very much. We'll be back to you, of course, during the course of the evening. We want to go now to a tape we took earlier, an interview with Mayor Art Agnos, to give you some idea of how the city is dealing with this. We Seems in reasonably good shape. Uh, the lights are out in most of the city, although the emergency light seems to be on in those areas like hospitals and those kinds of facilities. The, the, the most serious problem we can see from the air is a tremendous traffic jam, uh, mainly in those areas trying to leave the city. And uh, we're urging people to uh, stay home, not get in their cars, or get home through back streets if they're trying to go through uh, to their homes in San Francisco. Um, the chief and I were just discussing we need to try and get some extra help along 19th Avenue, uh, the area out by the marina. That fire seems to be under control now. And what we need to do is get the traffic that obviously is trying to get out of the city through the few outlets we have, that is the Golden Gate Bridge and down the peninsula, moving smoothly. Right now, it seems to be heavy traffic. Did you get a chance to look at the Bay Bridge, Mayor? Uh, yeah, we went by the Bay Bridge. It's a little bit dark there, but it clearly is badly damaged with the upper deck sort of dropped down into the lower deck. There's no traffic moving. I'm talking to you, cold, 8.30. Okay, to Koppel. Koppel is coming to you. And Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy. And then the Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy is on the phone right now. Thank you. Harold Green and Tawny Little back in Los Angeles as we bring you our continuing coverage from our sister station, KGO, in San Francisco. Reports coming in now, and it is uh, apparently uh, getting worse. The lieutenant governor of the state of California, Leo McCarthy, has now let us know that the death toll stands at 50, including as many as 40 people who died uh, when a freeway in Oakland collapsed uh, today. And all of the video that we've been seeing, I mean, we're feeling the same emotions that you are at home, I'm sure, thinking how close that is to us in terms of hitting home and living in an earthquake area, mm -hmm. and, and how frightening it must be, the thought I was trying to get out a few moments ago for the people in San Francisco. You're seeing a television picture emanating from our sister station in San Francisco, but they are operating on a generator. The people, a generator the people at home basically are without power and if they don't have the battery operated radios or whatever that we're supposed to have when we live in an earthquake area they have no idea right. what is going on other than obviously something very tragic and of huge proportion Tony let's bring everybody up to date in the Los Angeles area right now San Francisco is the scene of a major disaster tonight following a powerful earthquake that jolted the Bay Area that quake has been measured as high as seven points on the Richter scale as we mo mentioned a moment ago, according to Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy, the death toll is now at 50, including as many as 40 people who may have died when a freeway in Oakland collapsed. There are widespread reports of collapsed buildings, bridges and freeways, major fires and powder outages. As Mark Coogan reports now, it will take days to assess the final toll from this disaster. The damage from the quake is shocking, to say the least. A 50-foot section of the San Francisco Bay Bridge collapsed, killing at least one person and trapping a number of vehicles. Eyewitnesses say they saw people in the bay in the water down below. It's not known whether they were dead or alive. In Oakland, the double-deck Nimitz Freeway collapsed. It's not known how many people are under the rubble. One car trapped underneath was on fire. The entire freeway buckled from the tremendous strength of the quake. There are a number of major fires that continue to rage out of control at this hour. Bay Area residents are being advised to turn off their gas to prevent explosions. The Bay Area rapid transit system that runs below the bay has been shut down. One train in a BART tunnel through the Berkeley Hills had to be evacuated. There are reports of severe property damage as far away as 120 miles south of San Francisco, along with an unconfirmed report that a shopping mall collapsed in San Jose. 
Candlestick Park, site of the World Series, has been evacuated so officials can check for damage. There are two sections of the stadium in right field that were separated by six inches from the magnitude of the quake. Mark Coogan, Eyewitness News. It, of course, would be an understatement to describe the scene in San Francisco at this hour as chaotic. Buildings have collapsed, fires have broken out, and there are many, many reports of people trapped in their homes. Some neighborhoods of San Francisco resemble a war zone. Bricks, broken windows scattered across much of the downtown area. Rescued crews are combing through areas of town trying to assess the damage. Some people who escaped injury remain in shock tonight in San Francisco. And, uh... It, everything just started shaking, and it's a plaster and lath building, and just whole sheets of plaster were coming off the ceiling and the walls. And um, I was in the bathroom painting, Randy was in the living room, and I ran to the uh, bathroom door and stood there, and he was trying to get into a doorway, and the floor was falling at such an angle, it, it made him fall down. There had been a courtyard in the backyard, and all the rubble and the, the pipes from the boiler all had fallen over so we had to crawl over and I held the baby so we could crawl over and hand the baby from one to another so we could crawl across the, the all the debris in the back. The damage is so extensive in some parts of town it is virtually impossible to travel across sections of the Bay Area. Public transportation including the BART subway system has been shut down. Nobody is going anywhere. Tony, while much of the coverage of today's quake has centered around San Francisco, many other Bay Area communities have been very hard hit. Well, since the earthquake centered in the Santa Cruz Mountains, much of the damage is near there. And we now have a report that at least six people were killed when part of the City Garden Mall collapsed. A reporter at a Santa Cruz newspaper says tonight the quake was the scariest thing that he's, he's ever lived through. Reports now from Watsonville, Scotts Valley, Felton, and San Jose says that thousands of windows are broken. Homes in Los Altos Hills and Aptos were heavily damaged. Buildings also collapsed in Santa Clara County, including the partial collapse of a mall in San Jose. San Benito County has also been hard hit. But details from those outlying communities is still coming in very slowly tonight. But these are the key areas because it is there near the epicenter, of course, where we always find the heaviest damage has been sustained. Uh, I made a call up into the uh, San Jose area to a brother who lives in uh, the uh, Almadin Valley, which is right next to San Jose. Apparently, this thing hit like a rocket. I mean, there was a big smack, and it, uh, it took everybody's uh, breath away when it hit. But that particular region of the uh, San Jose Valley and uh, the Almadin Valley got through relatively unscaled. The same report, uh, I mentioned that I have somebody else in my family who lives south of San Francisco in the town of Pacifica, a gentleman from that town in Los Angeles on business call to tell me that he had gotten through to that particular city. No known damage at this time, but again, uh, we are concerned about that area down near the epicenter, down near Santa Cruz and through uh, the Silicon Valley, and uh, we are awaiting reports, uh, uh, damage reports, and uh, possible injuries there tonight. Tom. Harold, we might be able to get some new information right now because here in the Southland, people are starting to arrive from the Bay Area following the quake. Our reporter Ta Pam Thompson is standing by live right now at Burbank Airport. We are told a flight has just arrived there from San Jose, perhaps bearing new news. Pam. Yes, well, Tani, the uh, passengers who came off that flight said they were very shaken. Uh, the San Jose airport had lost all its power. However, a few flights were able to get out. Um, the, the passengers w wanted to get home or get back to their families, but we're standing by with a man right now who was trying to get to San Francisco. Of course, the San Francisco airport is still closed. Uh, Bjorn Barsky, you are a tour um, manager. Tell me, uh, how did all of this affect you? Well, uh, I have 44 uh, Scandinavian people here, and uh, we're on a round trip for 22 days in the United States, and uh, this is the uh, last but one stop. We have San Francisco, which should be the highlights of the trip, and uh, we have been to Burbank uh, and uh, Universal Studios today, and we went on the little train, and uh, we have the experience of an earthquake, you know, on that little train, and uh, they uh, joked about me and said, have you ever had any earthquake over in San Francisco? And now I've never felt it. And when we came over here, that suddenly it struck us and uh, we heard about it and my people are really shocked but I'm glad I could get some rooms for them. Will you still try to go to San Francisco? No, I don't think so. I, what I've talked to my people tonight and I think they are really uh, thinking of not going to San Francisco. 
I think they have a mess up there. They are shaken up just by hearing about it. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Well, the situation here is actually pretty quiet right now, and I talked to the uh, operations officials over at the Los Angeles International Airport, where they say somewhere between two, three hundred flights to San Francisco were canceled this evening. The Oakland Airport and San Jose or or airports are now reopened. Uh, however, they say at LAX things are pretty quiet. Now, another problem they're having over there is fog. That has nothing to do with what happened up in San Francisco uh, earlier today. The fog has delayed flights and many have been diverted. Nevertheless, the operations people say things are pretty quiet at LAX and they are uh, uh, moving along as smoothly as possible uh, despite all of the problems. Back to you in the studio. Okay. All right. One of the things we should point out, uh, there are a lot of people in San Francisco because of the, uh, the Bay Area World Series, but San Francisco is a tourist city. Absolutely. And on any given day, there are over a quarter of a million people from around the world staying in San Francisco. So we have a lot of stories undoubtedly still untold from those folks who were in the high-rise hotels in the Bay Area today. And Harold, you mentioned the World Series. There are about 60,000 people waiting for the World Series to start at Candlestick Park. When the Tembler hit, there were so many injuries related to the Tembler. Our sister station, KGO, that you've been watching all evening in San Francisco, did talk to the director of first aid there at Candlestick Park. Uh, there were uh, two heart attacks that uh, probably were related to the anxiety of uh, the quake. Uh, there was one uh, episode of head trauma related to uh, uh, an object falling uh, from the uh, stadium itself. Uh, lots of uh, minor cuts and bruises that, quite frankly, we didn't uh, see. I think people were very uh, good about evacuating in a timely fashion. and. Uh, uh, orderly, and I don't think there was any sense of uh, panic that you might expect from a sort of an excited crowd of 62,000 people. And of course, considering the number of people involved, most of those were very, very lucky to escape without injury. And you have to think of the panic that ensued after that and what could have happened had it not been a controlled crowd, and it was. Yes, as we have heard from Rick Lozano throughout the afternoon, the people in Candlestick Park uh, conducted themselves uh, in, uh, in splendid fashion today. Rick, uh, once again, standing by with this live report uh, on this Tuesday night from Candlestick Park. Rick? Okay, thank you, Harold. And uh, indeed, uh, fans here at Candlestick handle themselves very well. They should be commended because uh, things could have been much worse had we had a, a panic type situation. That did not occur and uh, things are all the better for them. Fans are still milling about, although Candlestick is uh, relatively quiet at this hour. Fans have been able to get into their cars now and head toward home. We have shown you throughout the course of the evening some of the physical evidence that there is structural damage to Candlestick Park. With me right now are John Martin and Todd Law, a couple of fellows who were up in the uh, upper deck when the earthquake hit. And as you can see, they have gotten themselves about a 50-pound souvenir. Uh, so, well, he says 60 pounds. He's holding it, so he should know. Todd, tell me about where you picked this up from, and uh, was there any danger that uh, this uh, perhaps falling on anyone or injuring anyone? No, this came off of a stairway. It was uh, down on the ground after the fact. Uh, he was up in Section 53, and uh, he uh, actually had to dodge some pieces that were falling from uh, the you know upper uh, shows up on the top there. Now this is not the only big block of concrete that we have seen. You were up closer to it obviously than I was. Uh, did you see other physical damage to the stadium? Uh, all the section 53 stairwell is all broken apart. There are fans out there trying to get pieces left and right. Underneath the stairwells there are some uh, safety type screens that caught a lot of the foliage. I don't want to keep you here holding that heavy block too long, but I must ask the question we've asked other people about whether they would feel safe uh, re-entering Candlestick Park if they indeed decide to go through with Game 3, say, tomorrow or the next day. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. I got uh, um, down at uh, Brown First Base when it hit. I took a 360-degree photograph as the tr uh, place was shaking, and I felt pretty safe there because there was nothing above me. Of course, where he was, it was a different story, so they might have to shut down uh, that part of the stadium. They were actually evacuating it while we were down on the field before they decided to get everybody else out of there because some people, I think, might even got hit. Okay, so John, the, since you took uh, the brunt of the shaking and, and quaking here, would you feel safe going back where you were located? Sure, I'll be back tomorrow if they're having a game. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. You can, you can set that down. Souvenir hunt is on here at Candlestick as fans continue to pick up scraps and souvenirs of uh, a day they won't soon forget. We must say that Candlestick Park takes an awful lot of heat. People make fun of it because of the, the crazy conditions that can, uh, that can occur here with the high winds and the cold temperatures and whatnot. But Candlestick Park, for all of its faults, no pun intended, 
held up very well considering the circumstances. That's it for now. Rick Lozano live in San Francisco. We'll go back to you in Los Angeles now. Thanks, right. Rick. Rick, thank you very much. Some new information here. The latest that we have on the San Francisco airport is that it is closed, and it is a disaster area. We have some reports that the control tower at SFO has collapsed. We also know that two air traffic controllers have been hurt, and we have unconfirmed reports that a terminal at that airport has also collapsed. Now, Oakland Airport closed, too, but is open just to emergency traffic. The, the question right now about, earth, uh, about airports in the Bay Area for just a second is the fact that you have international flights particularly Asian flights coming into San Francisco. Exactly. It is our assumption they would be diverted to Sacramento, but we're not quite clear on that. And uh, if they were to be diverted to uh, Southern California at this hour, we are having a fog problem along the coast. So we'll bring you up to date as soon as we get some information from some of the people with the major airlines as to what will happen with those flights that are coming in from the Far East. When news of the earthquake hit the White House, Chief of Staff John Sununu immediately began searching for Governor George Duke Magian, who's in France. When Sununu reached Duke Magian, he sent an Air Force jet to France to bring him back to California. President Bush says the federal government will do everything it can to help with emergency aid. The Department of Defense, the Pentagon, is ready to send troops to the Bay Area. Vice President Dan Quayle is in San Diego tonight awaiting word from the president, and he's prepared, as we understand it, to survey the earthquake damage tomorrow. We already have reports the troops from Fort Ord have been moved up into the San Francisco area. Now, the latest we received in regards to looting in the area is this very optimistic report. According to the San Francisco mayor, Art Agnos, the city has had relatively minor damage, so we'll get through all of that. All vital facilities are operational, he says, and he points out, as of this time, there are no reports of looting in the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, the big talk of town is this one occurred on the San Andreas Fault. And uh, the quake in 1903 was, uh, was over eight when it, uh, 1906, when it hit San Francisco. This one was around the seven mark. Henry Alfaro is out at Caltech right now to bring us up to date on the very latest there. Hank? Well, they continue to be very active here at Caltech, and with me is a Steve Bryant, who is a seismic analyst uh, with Caltech and the U.S. Geological Survey. Steve, you've been busy uh, updating and getting all the information. What do you have to report now as far as any aftershocks, any seismic activity up in Northern California? Well, the aftershocks are still continuing at this time. Uh, so far, the sequence looks fairly normal as for a main shock aftershock sequence. So pretty much we're seeing what we would normally expect to see. Are they big in terms of magnitude, two, four, three, what is it? Well, from this point, we're estimating somewhere between magnitude three and four for sort of the average ones we see, uh, maybe as high as five for the biggest one. This seismic activity, does it mean now that there's a settling in the uh, San Andreas Fault uh, at the epicenter? Well, there is a readjustment of the ground around where the earthquake occurred. Uh, since part of the stress has been relieved, uh, the rest of the area has to adjust to that new level of stress. There have been some reports of people here in Southern California saying that they felt anything. Have you been able to uh, actually register or see anything on these seism seismographs? Well, it's possible that they may have felt the main shock if they were situated, uh, say, at the top of a very tall building or something like that, where you would be favorably situated to feel it. Uh, for the most part, people wouldn't have felt this one. Once again, it reached as far south as around Santa Barbara and even a northern portion of San Fernando Valley. You had indicated that this was a very major, a very severe earthquake that relieved a lot of tension along the northernmost tip of the San Andreas Fault. That San Andreas Fault follows a long, long way and it passes right here in Los Angeles. Again, this type of situation creates a lot of nervous people. And the question is, among a lot of people here in the Southern California, Los Angeles area, they had a big one up there. Will there be any repercussions and will it come down this way? Uh, no, we don't believe that it will uh, travel down the fault. Uh, the, the stress along the fault between Northern California and Southern California uh, is different. It's relieved a bit around the Hollister area, south of the Hollister area. So it won't, it won't propagate through that area. It won't come down the fault. Once again, the time frame between the earthquake up in San Francisco about five, four or five minutes after five, and is there a grace period in which the people can finally say, look, we've passed, uh, we've overcome the, the, the greatest time of, of fear? Uh, well, the most, most activity you'll see is right after the earthquake, and for a magnitude earthquake of that size, we expect to see aftershocks for days or possibly weeks. 
Uh, but pretty much after that, things should be starting to settle back down. There may be the occasional aftershock even months later, but they will be fairly infrequent. Well, that is somewhat good news that things will be settling down. Uh, we've been watching the uh, tape that uh, they've been taking in San Francisco and have been able to uh, observe the tremendous amount of damage. So uh, hopefully things will be settling down and uh, we'll continue to stand by here at Caltech. Reporting live, I'm Henry Alfaro. Now back to you. Okay. Henry, well, Henry thank yeah. you very much. At least one person, possibly two, died when part of the Bay Bridge connecting Oakland and San Francisco collapsed. Two people were pulled from cars that were balancing between the bridge in the bridge construction. Now, traffic on the top of the Bay Bridge goes into San Francisco. Traffic on the bottom goes to Oakland and the East Bay Area. Traffic reports say that there was stop and go traffic on the bottom level and that the top level had a moderate amount of traffic. There were reports of some people in the water below the bridge after the collapse. We don't know if they jumped into the water or if they were thrown into the water out of their cars. That remains to be seen at this hour. Well, Tanya, you know, fires sparked by leaking gas are always a danger following a quake, and that's exactly what's happened in the Bay Area. One of the major fires is burning an entire city block in what is known as the Marina Pacifica District of San Francisco. That fire is difficult to fight because firefighters cannot pour water directly on the flames because it's fed by gas. And we now have a late report that a number of the water mains through there have broken. They have actually buckled. Don't forget, San Francisco is an old city underneath. So a lot of the things that are needed at times like this have simply fallen apart. Eyewitnesses report right now that gas can be smelled on nearly every corner in the city. Residents have been pitching in to help the firefighters. You're watching them right here. They realize, of course, that this is going to be a very big job. The buildings burning in this blaze were apartment buildings near the corner of Divisadero and Jefferson, and that's right near the marina just south of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, the latest word is that firefighters finally have that fire under control uh, just moments ago. It was reported to be out. Other fires have been reported in Oakland and near the library at the University of California at Berkeley. We also have information that in several of the neighborhoods uh, that uh, the smell of gas has touched off uh, numerous fires. You saw just a sample of it there, residents with buckets of water in their hand, reminiscent of uh, the turn of the century uh, fires that destroyed the city of San Francisco. If you recall, that quake was 8.3 they estimate 8.3 on the Richter scale, but it was not so much the earthquake back then that caused all of the problems. It was, in fact, the fire that swept through San Francisco. Uh, there have been no reports of damage from any of the six nuclear power reactors in California. Diablo Nuclear Power Plant, uh, 200 miles south of San Francisco in San Luis Obispo, declared an unusual event alert when the earthquake hit. Pacific Gas and Electric says that's the lowest of the emergency classifications. Plant safety crews did a detailed search of the facility, but found no damage there at all. And I wanted to add something to the story about the fires that you did just a second ago, Harold. We had had reports earlier that they, the firefighters were having a difficult time fighting the fires because of the lack of water pressure, whatever, because of these old water lines breaking. In fact, the mayor later came out and said that's not true, thank goodness, because... Uh, mm. what a, oh, so they've updated it. Yeah, that would have been a desperate situation. Mm -hmm. We understand that right now Ted Koppel is interviewing, or will be soon, Gov uh, Lieutenant Governor McCarthy. When that happens, we will bring that to you. He, mm -hmm. We can assume that he will have the latest information. Okay, we're going to toss to the network right now Ted Koppel, live from New York. And he'll return to, to California about 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. What is happening here is we have the Lieutenant Governor's sound. Ted Koppel in New York, you are unable to hear his question. The lieutenant governor was responding to the question, obviously, when will Governor Duke Majin return to California from France? And I believe I heard the tail end where he said sometime tomorrow. Well, it, it, uh, we have one report that it was felt as far south as San Diego County, but the real damage is, is in the East Bay and South Bay area. Uh, you've already reported the tragedy that occurred over in the city of Oakland when the upper level uh, of a major highway structure collapsed there are a number of fatalities over there now. The Oakland police chief or, are, are trying to get things under control. Uh, there'll be 40 plus fatalities there. Uh, that, that's the worst piece of news that we have. Yeah, we're, trying to, we're trying to confirm reports of fatalities in a few other places. Most of the reports we're getting are very serious property damage to transportation network pieces around the Bay Area. And there are also a great number of cracks in in many, many buildings, some of the older buildings, brick buildings, are reported to have collapsed.
Now you're talking again about the uh, about the Bay Area principally. What about That's further? Correct. What about further south in places no, like San, San Jose and Hollister and Santa Cruz? Oh uh, well, that's we count that in the Bay Area. That's that's the South Bay. Uh, the epicenter of of this earthquake, 7.0 earthquake, was uh, they're triangulating it. It's somewhere in the San Benito Santa Cruz area. Those two smaller counties border on Santa Clara County, which contains San Jose, as you know. So there will probably be a good deal of property damage in that South Bay area. Governor McCarthy, this is something that quite clearly uh, California has been bracing for for years, an earthquake of this magnitude. It's what you feared. It's what you've prepared for. Give us a sense of how those preparations are coming into play now. What is being done, uh, and uh, for example, in terms of uh, electricity backup, in terms of being able to uh, just sort out the information? That seems to be one of the biggest problems tonight. Nobody seems right. to know exactly what's going on. Right. The, 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 a lot of the communication systems were knocked out. Uh, in some places, there were good backup communication systems. Uh, a lot of the transportation uh, networks, uh, freeway systems, were severely damaged. Uh, the Bay Bridge you've already reported on. Two bridges going, spanning the South Bay, San Mateo Hayward, and the Dumbarton Bridges were closed for inspection. So, of course, cumulatively, all of that together caused a great deal of turmoil. I think we're in much better shape, more prepared to handle uh, a major calamity of this kind now than we have been in previous instances. We don't take this lightly. Uh, state and local agencies are trying very hard to communicate with each other. Certain parts of the communication systems were knocked out. Cellular systems, for instance, in parts of the Bay Area are not working. They've been knocked out. So it's tough for some command posts in, in some police stations to communicate with their officers in the field at, at uh, injury, uh, reported injury areas. Governor, I don't know if you can tell, we were just looking at a, at a high shot uh, that was videotaped earlier on of that uh, huge fire down in the marina area. Maybe you can just look up at your monitor and you'll see what I'm talking about yeah. there. We also saw some yeah. ground level shots of that. And I was told that one of, the, one of the problems that the fire department is facing is that many of these fires are caused by ruptured gas lines. That's uh, right. What, what is being done? To, and uh, some of the reporters right there at KGO have been saying that as they go out in the streets, there is at almost every intersection a smell of gas. Now, you face what seems to me to be almost a paradox of a problem. On the one hand, you don't want to send people racing out of their homes and just going they don't know where. On the That's other right. hand, is it safe for them to stay in San Francisco tonight? It is, and they ought to listen to radio broadcasts uh, as to whether they should move out of their homes. Right now, people should stay in their homes, uh, not, not uh, compound the problems uh, in an already glutted transportation system. Uh, the fire department and the utility companies are out checking all broken gas lines, uh, doing the best they can to move very, very quickly. This was a heavy shake, 7.0. Those, uh, those entities are moving very, very quickly to, to try to seal up any gas leaks. We will warn people uh, with the help of the television and, and radio whether there are any danger points. Do you, have any, uh, do you have any figures right now on how many dead and how many injured? Any cumulative figures? The worst problem is, is the uh, freeway collapse over in the city of Oakland in the vicinity of 14th Street in Cyprus. Uh, I've been in contact with the Oakland Police Department three times tonight. Uh, they are waiting for an update from their command post uh, on site. I'm going to try to go over there in a few minutes myself. Uh, it's going to be very bad news. All right, Governor McCarthy, thank you very much. As more information becomes... All right, we've been listening to the Lieutenant Governor speak with uh, Ted Koppel, of course, from uh, Nightline. We would like to point out some new information that we have received from the uh, Bay Area, the Nimitz Freeway. Uh, we have been pointing out that at least 40 people were killed in that freeway collapse. Uh, some new information that I've uh, been able to garner here is that uh, in Santa Cruz, six people killed in the collapse of a shopping mall there. Heavy damage reported, many fires, uh, broken glass, 
and the power out. At UC Santa Cruz, uh, apparently it escaped major damage. The campus uh, uh, evacuated, fear of natural gas leaks there. But up here is one, uh, one thing that caught my attention. They tell us that Highway 101 at University in Palo Alto has collapsed. And if memory serves me correctly, that would be uh, down near Stanford. So uh, this is new information that uh, the 101 at University in Palo Alto has collapsed. Again, this is the area we are trying to get the information from. It is near the epicenter, and it's in that vicinity that we expect to uh, receive more reports of heavy damage. So far, we've received reports from people that many of the brick fronts on houses have uh, come off, uh, windows have shattered, uh, the stores uh, have sustained major damage with food stuff scattered all over. We're, we're up to date on that uh, region of California right well, now. Well, even more than that, Harold, a CHP is reporting that a J.C. Penney store in Hollister has collapsed, mm -hmm. and that's the California Highway Patrol saying that. Also, that a bridge on Highway 101 in Hollister has collapsed, and there are unconfirmed reports in San Jose that a shopping mall has collapsed. Now, the one that Harold just told you about was in Santa Cruz. Right. And there are, of course, buildings off their foundations and, and buildings that are standing. The upper floors seem to be in jeopardy of collapsing in a number of structures. We've, we've been told about that. You know, uh, with an earthquake at any given time, uh, it, there is not a real pattern. Despite the fact from the epicenter, the uh, shock waves are sent out. It's been our experience. We, we, we witnessed it uh, when we covered the uh, Whittier Narrows quake that certain areas will sustain exactly. damage, yet a matter of uh, one block, uh, east, west, north, or south of that particular area, uh, they, they get through it relatively unscathed. So uh, if you have family or loved ones uh, in that part of uh, the state tonight, stay tuned. As that information comes in, we will bring it to you. Also, AT&T would like people not to try to call the Bay Area. Obviously, that's the thing that you want to do to check on your friends and your loved ones mm -hmm. up there. But they want to keep the phone lines in the Bay Area open for emergency calls that are, are so needed. Okay, let's continue on right now. As we well know, the timing of this quite formidable. The quake struck just minutes before Game 3 of the World Series was to get underway at Candlestick Park. Reporters talked with the Oakland and San Francisco players as they gathered their loved ones around them and then they prepared to leave a quite badly damaged ballpark. All of a sudden, uh, I just felt like I couldn't run. Something was up, like I had a few drinks or something. I don't know. It just kind of equilibrium was all messed up. I felt like I was going to fall down. Uh, we looked up and saw the... Uh all the windows shaking and then my concern was my family just trying to find out where my family was knew we were in an earthquake uh kind of puts things in perspective makes you realize uh, just the insignificance of uh, a baseball game in the world series even though it's a big deal uh the more important lives and family and uh, that was my first focus my first feeling i was in the clubhouse and everything blacked out and you know the dust started falling it was shaking pretty bad we just decided to get out did you know it was a quake right away i mean at first, you know, you just could hear the rumbling. You didn't know if it was the people in the stands or what, but, you know, all of a sudden everything started shaking and the blackout came and we all decided, you know, we got a big earthquake, let's get out. I've been in an earthquake, but not nothing like this that probably scared a lot of people or the damage that it have caused. I haven't been in one day. This part was the strongest earthquake I felt. So you knew it was one as soon as you started feeling the shake? Oh, yeah, we knew it was one, you know. It used to always happen around this area once or twice a year, so we knew it was earthquake. Well, first of all, your, your, your primary concern is, like, where's my family, where's my kids, my wife? You know, so, you know, the guys went out in the open area and then we started looking for our families. And, you know, they say aftershock is coming, which is uh, supposed to be just as uh, bad as the quake itself. Well, at a time like this, uh, you know, you've got a lot of people here that, and, and because of us and everybody, everybody's mercy. So we wanted to get all our families together. Everybody else can, you know, came and went too far. We came in groups of 100 or 200. So just get everybody together and now we're in the buses and we'll start heading home. Well, that location, Candlestick Park, where the Giants and the A's were to play Game 3 of the World Series, was damaged during the quake today. There are cracks in that stadium. However, a complete damage assessment hasn't been made just yet. A baseball commissioner, Faye Vincent, talked with Al Michaels outside the stadium a few moments ago about the possibility of playing at Candlestick Park tomorrow. We have agreed to meet tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock with representatives from the government from the mayor and from uh, the state. And I think at that point we'll get more facts, good intelligence as to uh, how difficult it would be to play uh, tomorrow night. Certainly on the basis of what I know now, it seems uh, unlikely, but we won't really know until tomorrow morning.
Candlestick Park was built to give during an earthquake. That was back in uh, 1959. Maybe I might be off a year or two there. Uh, some of the fans walked away with pieces of concrete from that structure. They didn't get to see the ball game today. They wanted a souvenir, but I have a hunch that uh, anybody holding a ticket to game three of the World Series between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland Athletics uh, will be back at the ballpark as soon as word, uh, word is given out when that game will be resumed. There has been some speculation, I might point out, that because of the damage there, because of the probability that there is damage over at the Oakland County Coliseum across the bay, yeah, and the fear of aftershocks, this is just an outside possibility being bantied about by some people as we understand it. Dodger Stadium could be the site of this World Series if they're ever to get this World Series uh, completed, seven-game World Series. That is a very, very big outside possibility right now. But when you think about it, with two uh, of the major stadiums uh, impacted by today's earthquake, uh, they can only hold off a World Series so long. I mean, if you get away about a week or so, then I think uh, the, the entire World Series would be in jeopardy unless they uh, moved, every, uh, moved all of the teams and, uh, and whatnot to uh, a different part of the state. Of course, sir, what we've been talking about is the 6.9 earthquake that hit San Francisco, the Bay Area, around uh, 5.04 this afternoon. It is a, an enormous natural disaster, naturally. It is 6.9. As I said, at least 50 people were killed. Our Marianne Bannister now has an overview of this situation for us, if we can take her report now. The violent earthquake caused a double-deck Nimitz freeway in Oakland to cave in, trapping a number of people underneath. So far, authorities say at least 40 people died in this collapse. It happened during rush hour. The quake caused caused a 50-foot section of the San Francisco Bay Bridge to cave in. One person was killed on the bridge. Witnesses say they saw several people down below in the bay, but it's not known whether they are dead or simply searching for survivors. Many sections of the Bay Bridge resembled a war zone. There are reports of collapsed buildings, bridges, freeways, major fires, and gas explosions. Six people died when an old four-story brick building in downtown San Francisco collapsed onto some cars. Six more people were killed when part of a shopping mall collapsed in Santa Cruz. There's also an unconfirmed report of another shopping mall collapse in San Jose. The quake forced the postponement of Game 3 of the World Series. Candlestick Park was evacuated so officials could check for damage. The quake was so strong it caused two sections of the stadium in right field to separate by six inches. Because of a breakdown of communications and power outages throughout the entire Bay Area, it'll take days to gauge the final toll of this tragic disaster. Marianne Bannister, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. That is all the information we have here in Los Angeles on what is taking place in San Francisco. I'm Harold Green for Tawny Little Eyewitness News. We now join Ted Koppel and Nightline in the east, but we will be back, Paul Moyer and Martin. We will have an expanded 11 o'clock Eyewitness News and our continuing coverage. We will uh, continue to... Uh, they're going to take a break right now. We'll tell you right up front because uh, we don't want to cut away and they'll, they'll have a commercial on the air and that won't do anybody any good. Let me run a couple of things by you while we have a couple of minutes here. Then we will join Ted Koppel. Uh, we, have, we understand now, uh, Tawny, that uh, two California Air National Guard units uh, are being activated to help with the effort in, uh, in Northern California. Uh, we now have also some information about that major marina fire and how many people have been uh, impacted by it. Twenty people have been injured in that fire in the marina section uh, of uh, San Francisco. And uh, we also have information right now that one person has apparently died of a heart attack. And uh, there are some 50 others in buildings and highway collapses in San Francisco at this hour. Okay, Harold, I was just handed this. Uh, we earlier told you that Vice President Dan Quayle is in San Diego at this moment. We now know that he will go up north tomorrow to take a look at the earthquake damage. He'll be accompanied by Transportation Secretary Sam Skinner. He will also be accompanied by his wife, who, interestingly enough, she's very active in disaster preparedness, was recently in San Francisco participating mm -hmm. in an earthquake drill. So they will be traveling up north tomorrow. Well, the Bay Area, like Southern California, of course, has perhaps the best emergency systems response systems in the world we have been preparing uh, for uh, an earthquake of this magnitude for a long time as you recall eyewitness news uh, just uh, three or four months back uh, devoted an entire newscast to a exactly. simulated earthquake over a, a three-hour period showing what would take place what was needed to get through it and uh, all of the things that we predicted would happen 
are taking place tonight in San Francisco, but the emergency systems are all in place, and uh, the people in the Bay Area right now, their biggest problem, of course, if they haven't sustained a personal injury, is that they are without the necessities, they are without power, they are without water right now, and without... Uh, uh, Let me go through that for a second, Harold, because we're getting some information, obviously, secondhand from people who are calling, telling us what information they have called from relatives or whatever, mm -hmm. talking with them on the phone. I'll, I'll go through some of the, the uh, thank you, some of the towns up north and try to tell you what the situation is. In Santa Cruz, we are told downtown area is heavily damaged. They are without power. Many, many aftershocks. No reports of injuries. On the campus there, those students who live on the campus are now being required to sleep outside. They tell us it looks very much like a war zone and the streets are buckled there. There is no water, no power at the homes. Now, this report says that every house is damaged. That sounds like, obviously, a very large statement. We'll have to check more on that. In Monterey, they have no power at this hour. Watsonville, they tell us that downtown Watsonville is heavily damaged. Fort Ord, some homes are damaged. In Vallejo, uh, the, the naval base there has some damage to some of the structures. In Felton, the downtown area, heavily damaged. This is beginning to sound very much the same every place that we go to. San Francisco Airport, everyone dove under the counters there seeking some kind of shelter. Panels fell off the ceilings. Lights fell out of the ceilings. Uh, Los Gatos downtown was evacuated because of gas leaks. Again, very much the same thing that we've been hearing all evening. The downtown area there looks like a disaster area. Highway 17 closed to lands because of landslides. Uh, San Jose to Santa Cruz. Highway 9 closed because of fires. That's between Los Gatos and Saratoga. Mm -hmm. All right, and we were just watching the local efforts right there. People pulling fire hoses, helping out uh, the fire department, everybody pitching in. All right, a moment ago we said we would go to Ted Koppel and come back to Los Angeles after Ted wraps up business on Nightline tonight. So let's join Ted Koppel in progress from the East Coast. We have our generators working. We've had several live shots coming into our affiliate here, and uh, you really can't see much of anything. We're trying to, again, get a handle, just like most of the officials are, on what uh, the extent of the property damage, the fatalities, that sort of thing. We're still getting reports in, but I've given you the very latest as far as the 40 to 50 dead on the freeway. We have seven um, uh, right across the bridge in San Francisco. There was a building that collapsed, seven confirmed dead there. We know one for sure in that Bay Bridge fatality you saw that video, two seriously injured, and then again the six people in Santa Cruz. Um, I think the scary part at this particular time is the fear of the unknown. We just don't know uh, the extent of the damage, and I think tomorrow when uh, uh, perhaps the sun finally shines, we can see exactly what has happened. Sydney, what I'd, what I'd like to suggest that we do next is what we have been doing for much of the evening, and that is hitchhiking uh, on the back of your camera crews and, and what KGO is doing. Uh, I assume you're still on the air live. KGO is on? Yes, we are. All right. Well, let's take a look at what you folks are doing. Okay, let's see if we can switch live. I, I know we have some video, but let's see if we can switch live. I'm not sure if we can do that at this particular time. Do you know if we can see The station is really incredible, south of Market. There are bricks down on, on, onto the streets, onto the sidewalks, but perhaps the worst devastation, the worst thing that we saw south of Market tonight was the facade of a building that collapsed on 6th Street. People who travel the 280 freeway in San Francisco probably have a pretty good idea of where this is. This is the 6th Street on-ramp to Highway 280. Now, bricks fell down on the top two floors of this building and crushed people who were getting into their cars. You can see these cars that were squashed almost flat. These unfortunate people were, were just leaving work. They were getting into their cars. The quake hit, the bricks came down, and they really didn't have a chance. Patrolman Keith Singer, who was on the scene, says that they never had a chance. He was there as the workers were working, trying to dig these people out, trying to help them but they really feel that the rescue people got there just too When late. the earthquake hit, uh, the top two floors of the building, the, the wall gave way and uh, trapped some people in their cars down below that were preparing to leave for uh, home. What kind of uh, emergency response did you have here? How would you get at them? Uh, within, uh, within about two minutes, we had uh, two fire crews, uh, about uh, three uh, police units, and we uh, had a PG&E crew working with a backhoe around the corner. We uh, we got them, they brought their, their backhoe over and uh, assisted in digging out the vehicles. 
The best estimate at this moment is that four people are dead. We don't know exactly what offices occupied that building. There were a number of them. Officials say that, that people were constantly in and out of there. But again, they believe that four people died in the collapse of that building. They're asking people to stay out of that area right now. There are obviously other buildings in the area that also have been weakened, so there is always the possibility of people just walking down the street being hit by debris. Do not go to that area. That's, that, that is part of the problem that uh, they talk about with the facades of buildings, depending on their age, and that's why you can't have overhangs and that sort of thing. Do you have any idea uh, the age of that building or how well it might have been constructed? You really can't tell. It does look as if it had some reinforcing, that someone had tried to bring it up to an earthquake code, but it was only the top two floors that collapsed. The rest of the building seemed to stay intact. It was not people inside the building who were hurt, mind yes, you. Right. You could see the office furniture. You could see uh, plants that were that were right next to the to the edge of the building where the wall collapsed. But it was people down below on the street who uh, were killed. Yes, uh, devastation there, and of course in the East Bay as well. Paul, thank you very much. The East Bay is that terrible, terrible. Uh, those pictures that we've shown you earlier of uh, Freeway 880 as it collapsed. We'll go back to Leslie Brinkley live there now. Leslie. Uh, yes, we're standing here right now where there is a disaster scene unfolding before us. Off to the side here, you can see a column. It's a column of the freeway that actually collapsed here at 880. Uh, it gave way. There is a section here from 18th Street all the way up to 32nd Street, this section of the Nimitz. The upper freeway ramp collapsed onto the lower freeway ramp and sandwiched all the rush hour commuters, all the traffic in between. It's unbelievable, 14 city blocks of it. Uh, we had some of the rescue workers here describing things they saw in climbing up there and trying to rescue people. Uh, one of the descriptions was that uh, they were walking wounded on top. They were taken away, that there was an eight-passenger van that they saw sandwiched to only about two or three feet high. Uh, they are pulling bodies out from underneath this lower ramp. There were just some injuries on the upper ramp, but those on the lower ramp, there are a lot of fatalities. We know there are at least 40 fatalities right now, and there may even be one rescue worker says he thinks it's going to take several days before they can get in the heavy equipment to lift these two freeways apart, and that there may be as many as hundreds dead. We don't know right now. Uh, we do know that there are an incredible number of crews out here working on it, trying to get the rescue work going. We are also told that just behind us here, as you see that man coming down the ladder, uh, they are trying to rescue a little boy and a little girl. Uh, their parents in the front seat of the car were killed. Uh, a column crashed down in the middle of the car. The two little kids were in the back seat. The girl, nine, has already been taken out of the car into the hospital, but her brother, a seven-year-old boy, uh, is still up there, and they are working right now on trying to get him out. He's still pinned in the back seat of that car. Those children were screaming, uh, but rescue workers I've talked to say they haven't heard a lot of other voices and a lot of other people up on that freeway ramp, although they are climbing up on ladders and on ropes and trying to work their way in as best they can to see if there are any other survivors. Back to you. All right, Leslie, uh, thank you very much. We'd like to take a look now to, at a tape uh, from earlier today, uh, one of our helicopter shots, uh, sky scene above that uh, 880 freeway. What you see, obviously, is a car crushed and burning. Uh, as the road buckled and it collapsed, uh, as less, as you could see from the ground level uh, pictures, uh, the upper level of 880 collapsed on, on the lower, and uh, that's indeed where the devastation took place. We had a woman call us who saw that, who witnessed the bridge collapsing, that, that little freeway section. She said the two decks were so closely squeezed together, there was no room for cars that were on the second deck. Uh, the quake hit, of course, at 5.04. That was the commute hour. She saw some victims being pulled out. She said that emergency vehicles were all over the place. She said as soon as the quake stopped, there were young men in the neighborhood near Peralta Avenue. They got ladders, and they tried to go to the aid of the trapped motorists. And as you heard Leslie and Don reporting, the death toll on that extremely high. Unfortunately, as many as 40 people at this point are being reported as having been killed in that collapse of the Cypress uh, 880. Yes, and of course, another place that uh, is damaged and closed for, well, at this point, we don't know how long, is the Bay Bridge, the cantilever section. That's the section uh, coming uh, right near Oakland uh, in the East Bay, when perhaps a 50-foot chunk just uh, simply gave way and came down onto the uh, lower deck of the Bay Bridge, stopped traffic, and people had to get out of cars and walk back to, to land, or in some cases, um, they simply turned around eventually.
Italy, I guess. They kept uh, people on the bridge. They turned around their cars and were able to drive off. We had one report of one fatality and two serious injuries. Those people were airlifted to Letterman Hospital. Also, the Coast Guard sent out a helicopter and two 41-foot boats to look for possible cars which may have gone off uh, when that section of the bridge collapsed. We just don't know. Yes. Uh, we haven't heard any reports yet. Uh, we're trying to get that information for you. We certainly hope not. Unfortunately, the death toll around the Bay Area is very frightening. As many as 50 people, um, seven or eight in San Francisco. Is what you are watching is live coverage uh, of our colleagues out at KGO, the ABC station in San Francisco. Uh, they are talking over some of the videotapes. Some of that, I must say, I have now seen three or four times, and maybe you have too. And it wasn't until just a moment ago that I realized, for example, that what we had seen was not one stretch of highway that had buckled, but actually uh, had sandwiched together where the upper level of a highway had collapsed in on the lower level and the vehicles uh, between those two sections. All right, we are back in Los Angeles. This is Paul Moyer along with Ann Martin and Bill Press, and we are going to attempt to update you as best we can on what's happened today and tonight in San Francisco. Very quick recap. Uh, I'm not trying to be repetitive here, but maybe some of you have just tuned in. There was a 6.9 quake. It's centered near uh, Santa Cruz, about 50 miles south of San Francisco today. <coughs> this is a major, major disaster. The death toll is now 50. It is expected to climb. National Guard units have been activated. Vice President Dan Quayle will visit the area tomorrow, we understand. And some of you might have just seen the pictures from the Nimitz Freeway near San Francisco. Late reports there say as many as 40 people have been killed in the collapse of part of that freeway. Also, we say the earthquake was centered near Santa Cruz. I have been talking to a young lady named Dana Bales, who has been talking to her sister in Aptos near Santa Cruz. It took her two hours to get through to her sister, the 408 area code, the way she did it, automatic dial, and two hours later she got through. The devastation up there is very, very heavy. I'm joined now by Ann Martin. Ann? Well, we've been, a lot of us have been taking phone calls upstairs. I talked to a man who was calling to report that he'd heard from his son, who is at Stanford University, and he was happy to be able to say that at Stanford there apparently was minimal damage, no injuries, that the boy knew of at any rate. He said that Kansas had been, uh, classes had been canceled tomorrow so that it would give them a chance to look over the campus and make sure that the buildings are safe. But that was good news from there. Otherwise, we've had reports from Santa Cruz that downtown is heavily damaged, no power in Santa Cruz, lots of aftershocks, and the kids at Santa Cruz University, or University of Santa Cruz, are uh, being asked to sleep outdoors tonight. Uh, and so it looks like a war zone there, our, co our caller said, that streets were buckled, there was no water, no power. No power at Monterey, downtown Watsonville heavily damaged, houses damaged at Fort Ord, Mare Island Naval Base has damage to buildings there, Felton is heavily damaged downtown, and you've heard some of the reports from uh, the different airports. Um, One of the people that was, uh, that was really first on the air with this was, was Rick, Rick Lozano, mm -hmm. who right. was up in San Francisco to cover the World Series. Obviously, Game 3 has been posted possibly canceled and Rick is with us back on the line now from Candlestick. Rick? Okay, thank you, Paul, and uh, we're going to make this very short and hopefully as to the point as possible because we do not want to detract from the, the very serious nature of what has occurred today in Northern California. We will say quickly that Candlestick Park is virtually empty now. We have a few people still with us who, uh, for some reason, have decided to stay on, but uh, for the most part, people have returned to their homes. Candlestick Park, there is some structural damage. There is some question as to whether it'll be safe for people to return there. Uh, we understand that Commissioner Faye Vincent of Major League Baseball will hold a press conference tomorrow morning at about 10 o'clock to discuss the status of the World Series and of Candlestick Park. A team of engineers will be here to uh, determine the structural damage that has been caused to the facility and whether it is safe for people to re-enter the park. We do not want to make light of a very tragic situation, but uh, I did want to point out that people have been carrying chunks of Candlestick Park out of the facility and taking them home with them. One enterprising young man had a, about a 50-pound block of Candlestick Park. I've got a very small piece of it. He promptly took a hammer and began chiseling it into pieces. One person, as a matter of fact, uh, very many people, paid a dollar a piece to get a chunk of the stick. And here is one such example. That's going to do it for now. We will be by to update you on any... Uh, uh, further developments that may occur here at Candlestick Park. But for now, Rick Lozano live in Northern California. Paul and Ann, back to you in Los Angeles. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. There is talk, of course, of moving the uh, World Series to another venue, possibly here in Southern California. The last time 
a major sporting event in this country had to be moved from one city, one part of the country to another, was in 1942. The Rose Bowl was moved from Pasadena to Raleigh, Durham in North Carolina. The reason for that, obvious, the attack on Pearl Harbor. There was concern about an attack mm -hmm. on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So we will wait and see. That probably that announcement might be made. It could be made later tonight. It might be tomorrow that we'll find out what's going to happen with the World Series. Our Mark Coogan is out at Whiteman Air Park in Van Nuys. We understand there are some volunteers who are perhaps getting ready to go up to the Bay Area, and we'll go out to Mark and get the exact situation. Mark. Yes, Ann, we're at the Whiteman Air Park in Pacoima, right outside, uh, well, at the north end of the San Fernando Valley with a couple of men from the Civil Air Patrol. We have Doug Fajardo, Steve Langton, Fellas, what kind of help can you offer? You're standing by to wait till you're called in, I take it. Yes, definitely. At the moment, we're just operating communications here, keep trying to find out what is needed in the search area. Uh, if we're called up, we've got uh, airplanes that can move equipment, uh, uh, small personal-owned, uh, mostly aircraft. Uh, You'd be doing what? What sort of help could you call? Could you offer if you were called? Uh, medical supplies, uh, blood, whatever's needed in that order. Uh, doctors, whatever we can provide for the community up there. What do you hear up north regarding which airfields are open? Because we know San Francisco, the main airport, is closed. Oh boy, um, we're in the wrong room. I need uh, don't have the status board in front of me. Uh, but it's tough, remember? I take it, right? You've got problems. San Francisco's closed, we know. How about yeah. Oakland Airport or San Actually, I understand San Francisco can handle some emergency traffic, especially the light planes such as we're flying. Uh, I believe that we're setting up in the Concord area, uh, in the, at Buchanan Field at the, for the moment. Uh, Lieutenant that, Langdon, you've done this before. Yes, I have. That'd be a Mission Control headquarters up there by tomorrow morning. And we're ready to go either there at Buchanan or possibly at Livermore. And you'd be doing, you'd be flying experts in, taking reconnaissance pictures, that sort of thing. You wouldn't be heavy supplies, I take it. As deemed so by their mission control. Mm -hmm. Steve? Doug, Doug. whatever is available. Um, the aircraft that we have are generally four and six place aircraft, so we're not a C-130. Uh, we don't have, we aren't going to fly a C-130 with supplies to feed half the city. Uh, but in the case of a specific area that needs immediate relief we could fly some limited supplies medical supplies uh, we've often had to fly blood uh, similar types of supplies into specific areas as needed uh, it all depends on what assistance is requested are you expecting a call this evening it's possible that's what we're standing by here for very good Gentlemen, thanks very much. You can see that there's a lot of help that is standing by, and if assistance is needed, some of it will come from right here in Pacoima. Now back to the studio. Thank, Thank you, Mark, you, Mark. From uh, Whiteman Air Park in Pacoima, right near Van Nuys. A oh. thought occurred watching KGO's coverage, which has been excellent, our sister station in San Francisco. How many people in San Francisco and Oakland were able to see that station up there because of all the power outages? Probably not too many, but we got to see it down here. So they were servicing maybe more of Southern California than they were Northern California. Talking about power, it's restored now in Oakland, but San Francisco is still without any lights tonight. We have reports from ABC News that they could be without power, they being people in San Francisco for days. Phone lines are down in some areas. The 415 area code, impossible to get through. The 408, some people can. The phone companies are reminding you to leave the lines open and wait for family and friends to call you from Northern California. Not that's, bad advice. That's good advice. Now, you've had some luck getting through. Maybe not into 415, though. Which area code Actually, did you it wasn't 415. It, all, it confirms what you just said. I, I did call up. I was supposed to fly to San Francisco tonight. I called a friend of mine in San Francisco, got through to her. She lives in the Noe Valley section and said, in fact, that the city is dark. There are no lights. There's no power anywhere. She was not able to watch anything on television nor hear on the radio. What they were able to do is go out and sit in their car. Uh, get the news. That particular area Off of the, the city was unscathed. Mm -hmm. Get uh, Turn on the car, listen mm -hmm. to the radio. Or uh, she said that with the city dark out in the streets, people were just gathering at street corners around somebody who would have a portable radio. It was mm -hmm. the only way they could find out what was going on What in do people the city. do in an emergency like that to make you feel better? You gather around other people because yeah. it gives you a sense yeah. of security. We, we are looking... 
I'm sorry, well, go ahead. Keep well, she also said that the, uh, the gas department was going through and they were shutting off gas mains one by one and gas lines one by one, just telling people there's going to be no cooking, no showers. I mean, this is really emergency status, survival in that city now for the Lieutenant next couple Lieutenant Governor was being asked if it was safe to stay at home because we've had reports earlier tonight that there was a smell of gas throughout the city of San Francisco, and he did say that the, the utility people were checking the gas lines. And this shows that those shots, that it can be more dangerous outside the buildings and inside mm -hmm. because of the stuff it falling. falling masonry. Here again is yeah. the Nimitz Freeway. That Where does that go? Again, it goes from the Bay Bridge south. It's the 880, the Nimitz, from the Bay Bridge south through the western side of Oakland, down the bay toward the Oakland Airport. It's a raised double-decker freeway, and the top layer collapsed onto the uh, bottom layer of the freeway. When rush we, hour traffic. When we first started reporting on this, uh, nobody was really sure how bad this was. The network wasn't, and we weren't here. So, but we sure know now. And the later it gets, the worse it gets. There's been other uh, other testimony here that the, we, we knew that the phone lines were out up there and that it was tough to get through. Apparently their cellular systems were knocked out and the police stations and command stations are having a very tough time Look at this. By the way, communicating this, too. This, this, this is a marina fire. They had to bring water up from the bay in order to fight this fire and those are volunteers who are running that hose up from uh, San Francisco Bay to this uh, there is a shot. fire in the marina. I don't know, excuse me Bill, if we have it here, but nothing tells it more. There, there were two fellows with, with, with uh, uh, pails of water, and it looked like the old fire brigade trying to stop that marina fire. That really spoke volumes. Mm -hmm. We still don't have any pictures from the South Bay, do well, we? We haven't seen anything no. from Santa Cruz or from San Jose. We've heard that that shopping mall mm -hmm. collapsed. We mm -hmm. haven't seen anything from there. Maybe six people dead in that shopping mall. You see uh, Santa Cruz apparently escaped uh, mm -hmm. major damage. The, the, well, I the think we should talk about that because I've had calls from several people who say that the epicenter was obviously closer to San Jose and Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have video from there? We don't because the media is in San Francisco yeah. because communications lines are down in the South Bay. They're down yeah. in Santa Cruz. I've been trying to get through to Santa Cruz and Monterey with, with and no success. Probably the, uh, driving there is not easy either. You can imagine a lot of people would be out in their cars leaving San Francisco if they felt that it wasn't safe there. Or That is the black hole, and ABC News is calling and telling us that that is where the most severe damage is. Mm -hmm. the, the young Santa lady Cruz I area. talked to that uh, spoke with her sister up near uh, Santa Cruz said that her sister lives in a mobile home park. And again, this is what we were talking about. About 50 of the people in that mobile home park gathered right in front of her trailer. And... Uh, by the way, the last I heard, the San Francisco Fire Department did have this marina fire uh, under control. They had not Okay, so when you Good. look at pictures Good. of the marina fire as we did, taped earlier. it was taped earlier and apparently... Okay, this is new. Uh, talk to me in the booth. I understand this, this is, is new this tape. Is, we're going to see a column of a freeway here that collapsed. I believe this is the Nimitz. This and is again this, was the Nimitz. A, this was the reporter, uh, uh, Leslie Brinkley, I believe, who was, who was right. covering this. And that's a column of the freeway there on the Nimitz. Now, there are now, this, people working trying to yeah. pull. And this video is in San Francisco and at the corner of 6th and Towson. Those are cars buried under, the the, under bricks from the facade of a building that collapsed at the corner of 6th and Townsend. That's just where the 6th Street Freeway goes We're looking at that or the Nimitz? No, this is back in San Francisco. The other, we started on the Nimitz, now right. we're back in okay. San Francisco. Okay. These now are that cars looks like rubble. buried under rubble that fell from this building. Uh -huh. You see, so uh -huh. inside the building, again, the people were safe. This collapsed onto the street. Uh, and again, these are the volunteers running that, uh, that fire hose up from San Francisco Bay, helping the fire department get this uh, huge marina fire Varying reports on looting here. We've had a phone call or two saying that there's looting downtown. Police are trying My, to stop in another... The, in the Embarcadero. Mm -hmm. My friend told me that there was uh, looting reports. She had heard reports of looting in the Tenderloin. The district attorney, Arlo Smith, issued a report that anyone caught would be uh, summarily dealt with. Mm -hmm. Well, one hopes that tomorrow we're not going to have uh, numerous reports of that kind of activity, but uh, one has to wonder if we might. I would hope not. It's a city that pulls together. Again, this is all... This marina area has so much damage because it's built on sand. It's built on landfill. It is very unstable. And if you look at any seismic maps, they show you that this, these areas around the bay, around the waterfront, are the, the most likely to go. And this, this certainly proves that there's no foundation there. These homes were built around the turn of the century. They're wooden. They're not earthquake safe at all. And with this, with this tremor of this magnitude, uh, they just fell in on themselves. To look at those houses, we would guess that the epicenter had been somewhere close to the center of the One city. In fact, so. it was 50 miles south, wasn't it? So It was, and the, and the San Andreas <laughs> Fault is actually on the other side of San Francisco. It's on the Golden Gate. It comes, mm -hmm. the, the San Andreas the Fault comes side. right down the Golden Gate Bridge.
Just one, think of it that way, right down the bridge. The bridge is built on... One also wonders about uh, the unreinforced masonry buildings in Southern in Southern California when we look I, at those pictures. I shudder to think there of We are going back to our sister station now. They are there, KGO in San Francisco, and here they are. The producer on okay, else. very good. All right. This is what we know at this hour on this quake that hit shortly after 5 o'clock this afternoon. It is a quake that Caltech now says measures between 6.9 and 7 on the Richter scale. I'll be arguing about that for days, and it really is pointless to even mention it, save that you understand the severity at this hour. The death toll is at least 50, and we're, we're only giving you the figure because we want you to understand the severity of the quake. It, we, we know, we are certain now, because of damage, that it's going to go much higher than this. This is one of the reasons why. Uh, this is uh, the Marina District in San Francisco, and the kind of thing that happens when, as we understand it, a natural gas explosion occurs because of a leak. And this is still burning tonight at this hour. In fact, has been burning since shortly after the fire began. This is the other major area of concern, and we understand now at least 40 to 50 people died in a one-mile-long collapse of the 880 freeway, the so-called uh, uh, Cypress area. Uh, what, what happened here simply was that the top section of the freeway collapsed onto the bottom, uh, literally sandwiching the people uh, driving in rush hour traffic. And uh, you can see the fires created from certain of those vehicles along that line. And the damage just terribly severe there. And at least 40 people are dead there. Now to the bridge, and this was the first sign this afternoon as we were out at Candlestick and we finally got back on the air, Anna and I had talked to you briefly and to Cheryl, and this was the first sign we had of the severity of the damage here. This is a 50-foot to 40-foot section of the Bay Bridge. That is, uh, of course, the uh, westbound lanes, and it collapsed onto the, uh, the lower section of the bridge. The, uh, the airport structure, of course, is the thing that we've been updating you about. And right now, we want to go to Frank Crocker, who's at San Francisco International. Frank? Anna, what you're looking at right now is the main control tower above the International Building at San Francisco International Airport. You can see that the temporary lighting has been set up. We are told that the damage is, is very minor in the tower area, that it is functional. They had to put in temporary lighting. They lost one pane of glass when the main tembler hit around 5 o'clock. No one was injured up there. They are operational, but the airport remains closed. As you can see, it's a ghost town up here. We're on the departure level. We are finally allowed up here. There are uh, garbage trucks and, and trash hauling trucks that have moved up, and I'm going to show you why. We'll, we're going to take a walk inside the terminal here and show you exactly what happened out here. As you can see, it looks uh, pretty much like a war zone. Ron, if you can pan down here. This is all the uh, drop ceiling in the new international terminal. It's that uh, fibrous, like, cardboard substance. It's pretty lightweight. So uh, this all came down in, in the quake. You can look up uh, at the ceiling, Ron, where you can see where the, the false ceiling had dropped. They've had uh, major water leaks in here. But as far as structural damage goes, they say they have inspected the airport. They can't find any major structural problems uh, in the buildings. The runways are okay. They've checked those out. But still, they've decided that they really can't they really can't even entertain the notion of flights going in or out. They evacuated some 15,000 people when all this happened. When we first got to the airport, weren't allowed up here, there were people walking down with their luggage. And uh, a lot of people were complaining, didn't even know the severity of this whole thing, obviously. They'd just gotten off flights. They were out here waiting to go on flights. Uh, we had to tell them that uh, this was a major earthquake. There were injuries. There had been deaths. There were fires in the city. And, and people were pretty much sitting around outside with their luggage waiting for buses in shock. So the airlines were arranging hotels. Uh, they've been busing people out of here. Uh, uh, they've sent people home who live, obviously, in the Bay Area. They don't know when they're going to reopen this airport. Uh, they're talking about having a meeting at maybe midnight to reassess what's been happening uh, with the cleanup effort. As you can see, there is a lot, a lot to clean up. So they're going to meet at midnight. They say that they really don't think that uh, the airport will be able to reopen tomorrow. It may be as, uh, they say that they, they may be, have, be able to have partial uh, operation, but that the airport couldn't go back to full operation, maybe for 48, maybe as, as many as 72 hours. So everything is pretty much up in the air out here. Once again, the airport is shut down. Most of the damage is, is what you can see. It looks a lot worse. It really does look a lot worse than it is. It's false ceiling that came down. They only had minor injuries out here. They had one woman uh, who was fairly advanced in, in, in a pregnancy who had some problems. They put her in an ambulance, got her out right away. She uh, reportedly tonight 
site is okay. And uh, that's about all we know out here. They're trying to clean up. They've got work crews coming in. They're going to meet at midnight. They don't know when San Francisco International Airport is going to be reopened. Back to you. Thank you, Frank. We've been hearing reports about what might have happened at SFO. It is shocking to see that that's what actually happened and that Frank says it isn't that bad. Let me give you a couple of bulletins that have come in while Frank was on the air. Uh, we have a number now for people in San Jose. If you see water leaks or main breaks in San Jose, we have a number for you to call. That's area code 408-279-7888. Again, to report water leaks in San Jose, call area code 408-279-7888. Another note, AT&T is blocking all phone calls coming into the Bay Area, and here's the reason why. They say that so far, more than a million calls have been attempted. Uh, they say that's two and a half times the normal capacity. The bulletins we brought you earlier, Pac Bell's urging that you not make any calls unless you absolutely had to, this is the reason why. And so they've sort of taken charge and blocked calls coming into the region unless they were absolute priority and emergency calls. Well, we have a couple of people who... Uh came that close tonight and uh, we showed you that first video the first sense we had that something was very severely wrong just how bad the quake was and that was our own helicopter video of the uh, top section of the of the bay bridge collapsing uh, onto the bottom section about a 50 foot long section that created that chasm now this was our own video earlier tonight uh, again there you see it well Thomas and Debbie Kelly from Oklahoma City were driving on the Bay Bridge right behind a car that actually drove into that chasm. In fact, you can see the car there, and they're here with us now, and they had the presence of mind to do what a lot of us, probably even in this business, wouldn't have done, and that is to pull out their home video camera and to shoot this. And uh, this is the video that you actually shot. Thomas, Debbie, can you tell us what we're seeing here? Now, you're right at the front of this. Yeah, we are. We came up on it, and then we turned around. We saw the break in the bridge, and we turned around, and I pulled out the camera when we saw this. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. And that was my reaction. Oh, my gosh. And I just froze. We couldn't believe it. All right. Now, you could see the break uh, at that point. You, yes, you we had just turned around. All right. uh, we were sent up there with about 100 other vehicles, and it, it was sort of mass confusion when we got to this break. But these two cars were quite a ways back behind the rest of the group. Thomas, you say you were sent up there. Were they already aware of damage? Uh, at, uh, we understand the first street. Here's the slow motion which we've put together of this car going oh, off the edge. Was, you were given permission to go up there. It was after a mistake. The they to, sent a, a, about 100 cars by mistake. told us to turn right to, at the to bridge. To turn right and go across. So, and when we saw it, we decided this is not what we need to do. Well, they clearly then did not know that the bridge had broken at this point. Here we are seeing it again. Even the, even the folks trying we to handle it. We had heard somebody. rumors. We, we were told or rumored that there was a break in the bridge, but when we got there and they said turn right and go across, it was, well, you know, oh, maybe we don't know any better. Maybe we maybe we were misinformed to begin with. Can you t As you ahead. looked at what was happening in the other cars around you, how were all the other drivers responding? Did they know by the same this thing time, you did? By this time, they had already turned around, and there were three vehicles on the bridge at that time. The one that went in, the, the Toyota pickup, and us, and that was it. And when we turned around, we saw these people coming, and we thought, well you know, stop him, stop him, and right. I don't guess the guy ever saw us, because he was just going well, 50 or 60 miles lane. an hour, yeah. right. and uh, just passed us and never recognized it, he never stepped on the brakes, it didn't appear. Could you tell us now what you saw after that occurred? Did you see the emergency vehicles come, or did you yes. simply get off the bridge? No, we were there no, we for an hour and a half, uh, we, we saw the people on the other side attempt to rescue several times, we saw the uh, Coast Guard land, a, a helicopter, the a first attempt, and then uh, he took off again, and they, they brought Brought, Caltrans brought uh, three uh, winch trucks up, and they kept trying to get parts of the car. The whole axle and everything was bent up underneath, so there really wasn't anything good to get a hold of. There was a lot of fuel that had, had spilled down and, and run down the face of the, of the, of the broken section. I just, it's horrifying to watch this, and we're showing this to folks again and again just to give you an idea of, of what happened out on that bridge. These two folks uh, uh, were just trailing along there, apparently had been given permission to go up on the bridge, even though we knew of the earthquake. Uh, they simply did not know the hole was there, and uh, and you saw what happened. Now, those folks have been taken out of the car. We do not know their condition at this time, though we do understand there were some severe injuries. We uh, watched them re rescue the two of them. The uh, driver, we watched them do CPR and then give up. Now, oh, I don't know if that... 
means they got him started and mm -hmm. transferred The driver was in very bad on, condition the whole right. time. He, he really didn't seem to have any cognizance. The passenger seemed better able to understand what was going on and was very, was trying to get out of the vehicle most of the time. All right, then. One of the things that's very baffling for people who haven't been on that bridge or who don't drive it regularly is the space, the distance that you're talking about, that someone could accelerate after being turned around in an emergency situation to that point. Uh, was yeah, there... we, were, we were on the bottom deck originally, and everyone was locked in because, of course, of the, the fallen section. And what they did was they turned the, the, the people that were going to Oakland originally who were blocked in off onto Treasure Island and then up on the upper deck, and they were told to turn right. And like I say, a hundred or so cars, and we were from out of town, had no idea what was going on. Which is extraordinary. And, uh, and, and as you approach the thing, uh, it really wasn't obvious. I mean, it looked like a mirage in the desert or something. You could just see a very, you know, slight gradient difference. And uh, going 50 or 60 miles an hour, you really didn't have any time to react. Well, we thank you for your quick reactions sure. and that extraordinary video tonight. Again, this is being seen across the country, and now I think people, when they see that kind of footage, will understand the predicament that this uh, this area finds itself into. And uh, and uh, Godspeed in getting back to Oklahoma. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thanks and again, very much. Yeah, Thomas and Debbie Kelly, and this is their home video tonight after they were given permission to go up on the Bay Bridge, and this is what they saw. These are the vehicles that we have seen all through the course of the night uh, being, you know, the, the rescue attempt that went on. That these vehicles on the, in the eastbound section, that is the up, uh, upper section, uh, uh, actually collapsing and falling onto that lower section. It's incredible that they had the presence of mind to take the pictures in the middle of such an urgent situation. Yes. Right now we want to go down to the South Bay where our South Bay Bureau Chief Rigo Chacon is standing by, I understand, with the mayor of San Jose, Tom McHenry. We're from the, reporting from the uh, Emergency Operations Center here in the South Bay. Of the three largest cities in the Bay Area, we appear to be the luckiest. The most visible example of the fact that something was wrong was uh, simply in traffic. Traffic lights all over the city were out. Traffic jams were horrendous, but that was by far the most visible item we saw. The damage that we saw throughout the city was minimal. Uh, one building uh, lost a wall. It was a building that was about to fall anyway. So the damage across the city is not something to worry about. There is a strong message coming from the water officials. Apparently there are ruptures in at least three locations that have diminished the, the flow of water. And the call is going out to the citizens across the county to conserve water as much as possible. Tom McHenry, the mayor of the city, is here with me. Tom, I understand you, uh, you made an offer to Mayor Agnos uh, because the situation up there is so much more critical. Tell me about it. Well, we haven't been through to ART yet, but through the emergency channels, we're, we're offering police officers and firefighters, as we have already done to the county of Santa Cruz. Uh, they don't seem to need it at this point. They have things as well under control as is possible, but as you know, Santa Cruz uh, has been hit very hard, as has San Francisco. Relatively speaking, we're in pretty good shape in San Jose with so far, and I emphasize so far, no fatalities, although the hospitals are, are doing a large business and some of the injuries are probably fairly serious. I overheard you earlier talking to people in Santa Cruz. Tell me about the situation as far as people trying to commute between here and there. That's out of the question right now? Uh, absolutely. Uh, highway 17 is closed. The center divider on 17 that divides uh, uh, the highway, the safety barrier, it seems to be shattered almost entirely. Highway 9 through the Saratoga Gap is closed. Uh, I'm told, but I'd advise people to check on this that uh, Route 120, I believe it is, through Watsonville might be open to get into Santa Cruz from, uh, from the south. But as of now, the major, uh, the major Highway 17 is closed and, according to Chief Deputy over there, uh, should be closed for some time. I guess we can't overstate the message to the public about water conservation at this point, right? No, I don't think we can. Uh, I think really absolute emergency use of water only. Uh, you, of course, we have emergency officers and firefighters at many, many places in San Jose. All the hospitals are open. All the highways are open in this area. Area. It's going to take some time to get help to people who need it, but uh, please be patient. There's a lot of officers and a lot of firefighters and a lot of medical people around, and if you need their assistance, uh, they will be there. Just be patient and uh, keep calm and notify uh, the proper authorities, 911, as you know, uh, if you need any help or assistance. Overall, a pretty lucky place. Uh, I think we're pretty lucky so far, and of course our heart goes out to uh, Santa Cruz and San Francisco and other places where fatalities have occurred this time, and so far I, I guess we've been a little lucky down here. 
I know, again, the, the message on the water is very, very strong. Conserve as much as possible. If you see a leak in your home, if you live in this area, you see a water leak in your home, don't rely on water people to go out and, and, and fix that and turn it off. Take it upon yourself to turn, turn the water off. Simply not enough personnel, but the, the call for conservation is, is strong because if there is an aftershock that will uh, further rupture those pipes, obviously the situation could be critical. I can't answer your questions because we're in a building that is, that is uh, impenetrable by airwaves, so uh, I'll send it back to you. Okay, thank you, Rigo. Again, for people in San Jose who notice major main leaks, here is a number that you can call to get repair. In area code 408, the number is 279-7888. And if you need in instructions on how to purify water, should the event arise that that's the situation you need to purify water, check in the white pages of your phone book in the front section of the phone book, and you'll see very clear instructions on how to do that. We're going to tell you that again and again. There is an enormous amount of information on earthquakes the telephone company has put in those books, and any one of them, any of the white pages, Pages has that in there and will be very valuable to you in the next couple of days. Laura Marquez, one of our own reporters, is with us now, and she has been in the, the, at the scene of that horrible fire in the Marina District and give us some idea. And we'll be rolling, uh, we'll be rolling tape of, uh, of both uh, that that we have most recently, that tonight, and then uh, earlier when that fire first hit. Mm -hmm. Give us some notion, uh, Laura, of what what you saw down there when you first arrived. Well, when we first arrived, we headed down to Cervantes, and okay, first of all, what you're seeing here are aerials of the fire, I guess, coming up um, in that marina district. Uh, when we first arrived on the scene, there was a collapsed building uh, that was, right here we're seeing some of the fire. What they did is they got a lot of residents from the marina district to come out. Yes, they came out and helped. What they had to do is they had to truck the water down from the bay because they didn't have any uh, of the water going. You can see this this here. One, this was, that was a four-story apartment building that had completely collapsed to the right there. That is where the, that's the fire. And that was started by a ruptured gas break. They did have to evacuate some people there were some injuries now there was collapse prior to this fire in other words some of these buildings collapsed this was not part of the explosion process here that that's correct? right this fire was started by a, a rupture of the gas main but most of it was the the collapsed buildings you can see the garages that were buckled down completely, undermined. completely so many of them uh, the buildings you as I say four-story buildings that are now two stories two stories completely down under un, on the ground can you give the basement the garage estimate of the size and the area involved here and this is Beecher and to visit Daryl right, right. Beach this is, well, it's actually Jeff Jefferson and Divisadero, and they evacuated um, a two-block area, but the whole area around it, they have evacuated people and told them not to go back. There's I live in the area. There's a school right there. Was that damaged at all? Uh, Marina Middle School? Right. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? We did not have a chance to see that. I do know that that was where they were taking some of the injured, mm -hmm. so they were using that as one of the sites that they were taking some of the injured did, in this evacuation this center. get up as far as Chestnut in the business uh, district? They said that the Chestnut area is built on uh, not, at, not the sand, and that is why the Chestnut Chestnut area seemed to do better, but we were driving down Chestnut, and you could still see a lot of cracks in the building. Yeah. It's this really a block up from the fact, bay. Right. A block up from the bay is where most of the damage really was. As I said, the, the number of buildings that were buckled was was really incredible. Well, right, now, this when is... you were there, excuse me, no. when you were down there, it was incredible to see that many residents so quickly organized on the scene instantly. Everybody was trying to help. Everybody was directing traffic. They were pulling in the hoses. They were keeping people back who had no business being there. Um, we saw some residents go tearing into an apartment building and break the windows to try and go in and see if there was anybody in there. They were searching for people that might be trapped. They had to come out of some of those buildings because structural engineers were concerned they could collapse with any kind of an aftershock. One aftershock and those buildings could be down on the sidewalk. So the suggestion there is that if you're in that older section that this is probably not the, the firefighters to the told me, I floor. asked him, I live around the block, I said, what should I do? And he said, I recommend that anybody that lives in that marina district should not stay in their house tonight. All right. As we've heard, uh, Mayor Art Agno says that there's going to be added security on the streets and that at this point, anyway, there doesn't seem to be a terrific problem with security. But obviously, with that kind of evacuation underway, all people who can help are needed. And all military personnel in the Bay Area are being asked to check with their units. Now, this is not, repeat, this is not a recall. But in case they may be needed, all military personnel in the Bay Area should check in with their respective units as quickly as possible. We're going to go to David Sampson now. Uh, one of our producers here. He is at uh, San Francisco General Hospital uh, with us now. David, can you tell us what's going on there? Yeah, Pete, one thing that strikes out here in all the panic that people are talking about, it's remarkably calm here at San Francisco General Hospital in the emergency room. They took in 25, 30 cases of people earlier tonight, mostly small cuts and abrasions. 
And but those have mostly been patched up and let go. And it's a, it's a quiet night even for for earthquake weather. I mean, you'd expect to see a little more action here on any on any night. It's very quiet. They were there was uh, one person injured in the the Townsend the brick collapse on Townsend and Fifth. That person is uh, described as an older woman um, uh, in critical condition in the operating room right now. They're trying to. Uh, get her back on her feet. Um, but uh, there was some talk that a couple of people from the, the Oakland collapse were going to be shipped over here, possibly by helicopter, but that appears not to be happening now. So the, the, apparently it's just very quiet here now, and the one woman from the Townsend and Fifth uh, accident is still in surgery right now. David, some patterns are making themselves clear here, and perhaps we can begin to be optimistic about certain aspects of this. Certainly not those two areas, the marina, the collapse of the sections of freeway, and the reports of damage at some of the malls, but it appears to be that, on, that, 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 that people were injured uh, seriously only in those concentrated areas. At least this is what we're finding out at this hour. Is that correct? It appears so, Pete. The 25 or 30 people who did have scrapes uh, were, were a variety of places all over the city, but the serious injury, the one serious injury they had here was from 5th and Townsend. I the see. rest of them were very minor. Okay, thank you, David Sampson, reporting live. Coincidentally, David Sampson works for Dr. Dina Dell, so right. when he takes a look at an emergency room, might be with slightly uh, better trained <laughs> eyes than years, most. Right. Um, another update from VA Hospital in Palo Alto. Apparently, two patient buildings have been evacuated, but strictly as a precaution at the VA Hospital in Palo Alto. 200 patients have been moved into other buildings, and they are not calling in extra nurses there. No earthquakes, uh, no earthquake related related injuries at the VA hospital in Palo Alto. Again, Kaiser Hospital is asking all employees who can to get to their respective work centers. If they can't, go into any Kaiser Medical Center. We're seeing uh, we're seeing some eerie, I think, similarities between this and the Los Angeles quake in which we saw that severe damage back in the 70s, that severe damage to uh, freeways and uh, damage to hospitals and so on. Some older structures uh, that, uh, that were undermined for one reason or another. Uh, we just got this message from Bard, and it's a general message, but uh, this will help some folks who are concerned about getting from one place to another. And again, we're the emergency people, the state and local, are asking people not to travel tomorrow unless absolutely necessary, unless listed by us here or uh, on radio. Bart says the Concord line was not damaged. Just starting service from West Oakland to Concord now. Richmond service from Oakland should begin soon. Fremont lines and the Transbay tube service still down. Engineers check for damage there. They are hopeful that by morning, they will at least be able to run as far as the Embarcadero Station. Again, the Embarcadero Station in the East Bay. A power outage is currently preventing service in the Daly City. BART will run all night tonight. They're working as fast as safely possible in getting those trains rolling again. Now, here is a classic example of what we're going to run into here, and we hope that you bear with us, but not more than 45 minutes ago, I told you that BART was down for the night. Now we're getting this report. So we will go with this one until we get a later report. It's all we can do. We have a couple of other updates, new information involving the schools. UC Berkeley, Stanford University, the Berkeley Public Schools, Oakland Public Schools, and San Francisco Catholic Archdiocese are all saying that all elementary Catholic schools will be closed, all public schools in those areas will be closed. Officials uh, are going to call us tonight to help us get the word to parents and staff. In Oakland, uh, principals are advised in the Oakland Public School District to please report to their schools tomorrow and to assess the damage. Parents and staff who have questions about the closure and how long it will be in effect can call the Oakland Public Schools at this number, 836-8253, tomorrow after 8 a.m. Again, UC Berkeley, Stanford University, the Berkeley Public Schools, the Oakland Public School Districts, and the Ca San Francisco Catholic Archdiocese all say their schools will be closed. All right. Let's, uh, let's uh, try to update folks uh, so that you know that we are not suddenly isolated here from the rest of the world. First of all, our own broadcasts uh, have been going out all night long uh, by ABC Network, which of course was set up to do the World Series tonight, and uh, Ted Koppel has been bringing these reports all across the country, so people do know what's happening here. We have uh, been in touch with the White House repeatedly. The White House almost immediately reacted to this. They have already sent Samuel Skinner, Secretary of Transportation, here to assess the damage to freeways in particular, but the Bay Area in general, and they have said that damage aid, that is disaster aid, is understood. That means that they will most certainly go forward with that. One of the problems was that the Governor Duke Majin was in Europe at the time this all occurred, and uh, 
uh, he is now being brought back, as we understand it, by Air Force Jet uh, to take command here. Though the Lieutenant Governor uh, Leo McCarthy has been with us tonight and uh, is already well in contact with the emergency services people in the state. Officials at the Federal Emergency Management Agency are gathering right now in Washington, laying down plans to help us recover from this. FEMA officials are already being sent to Sacramento, we are told, to help with paperwork to speed up the aid. And you'll remember that after Hurricane Hugo, the federal emergency officials were uh, were blasted for acting uh, perhaps a bit too slowly in that first uh, 24 to 48 hour period. Well, that apparently is not happening this time. Um, what uh, we're getting some information here. It's coming to us constantly. I want to go back to Anna. I'm going to go down to that map and, and try to use the big map downstairs. Okay, so why don't you carry on? Uh, one of the things we're getting a lot of calls about, Peter, and what I'll talk about now for a little bit is the shelters that are open right now. The Red Cross shelters in San Francisco. Here are the locations. Um, uh, the Moscone shelter yeah. is at 3rd and Howard Streets. The, go to the main entrance. So which way, Don? This one or this one? Which camera? Thank you. Uh, Moscone shelter at 3rd and Howard Streets. The main entrance of the Marina Middle School. The address is 35 Fillmore Street. St. Ignatius is 37th Avenue and Pacheco in Oakland. Uh, we have uh, this shelter in Oakland at 2111 East 14th Street. The public information line in Oakland is this number, 273-3856. Again, the public information line about shelters and help for earthquake victims in Oakland is 273-3856. Uh, right now, we are getting a bulletin from San Francisco police. They recommend that all San Francisco residents uh, remain in their homes. San Francisco police are reporting there are some serious disturbances on the street, and right now they recommend that all people who live in San Francisco stay within their home. We've already heard from the lieutenant governor a little bit earlier, and we do now confirm that the governor is on his way home to California. Governor Duke Majin was in West Germany on a trade mission, but he's cutting short his trip, of course. Leo McCarthy was here earlier and told us a little bit about that. He should be arriving tomorrow, and before heading home, he reportedly watched news of the quake on TV in Frankfurt. Uh, the one thing that does surprise me from the report on this earthquake is the, the failure of some of the uh, highways and roads and bridges. Uh, I've always been under the impression that those have been uh, constructed uh, to withstand these earthquakes. And so uh, this is something that I think that we very definitely uh, have to look into immediately. And to yeah. All right, uh, Paul Moyer back in Los Angeles along with Ann Martin and Bill Press. We're going to do a cutaway from our sister station, KGO in San Francisco, in just a moment to bring you up to date as best we can on what has happened today. We're continuing our coverage of the devastating San Francisco earthquake that happened at 5.04 this afternoon. The Bay Area tonight, the scene of a major disaster following a catastrophic quake that rocked Northern California. At least 69 people have died from the earthquake that registered a powerful 6.9 on the Richter scale. It was centered about 50 miles south of San Francisco, about 10 miles from the community of Santa Cruz. There are numerous reports of freeway and building collapses. Of course, the Bay Bridge, you've probably seen pictures of that. Major fires, power outages, communication breakdowns impossible to get through to San Francisco. I might add, it bears repeating, if you have friends or relatives or loved ones up there, please don't try to call, let them call you. It is going to be some time before a final death and damage toll will be known. The death toll is expected to climb much higher than it is right now. Two National Guard units have been uh, activated. We just heard our sister station say that uh, residents of San Francisco have been ordered to stay in their homes. There are reports of looting, there are numerous uh, activities going on in the city of San Francisco. We've had unconfirmed reports of gang activity. Vice President Dan Quayle is on his way to the Bay Area tonight. And what you're looking at now is a uh, video that was shot earlier today. And I believe this is on that Bay Area, the, the Bay Bridge between San Francisco and Oakland. We saw earlier that, that amazing home video shot by the couple that was on the bridge at the time it went down and we saw that car. There it is right there. That was shot by two people in a car with their own camera. And you saw the car kind of go down and back up. 
and, and, and apparently the person in that car was unaware. We saw no brake lights. They just hit that dip, and that person was severely hurt in that car. Um, we are attempting, as I say, to bring you update as best we can on what happened today in San Francisco. Well, we do know that the update uh, on the, the death toll on that section of the Nimitz Freeway that collapsed, they are now guessing the CHP, in fact, has confirmed 60 people have been killed when that section of freeway about one mile long pancake, the two sections, the upper deck and the middle deck coming together there. 20 people are estimated hurt in the Marina Fire in San Francisco. We have six people crushed in cars when a building collapsed on Bluxholm Street in San Francisco. Another six possibly dead in the collapse of the City Garden Mall in Santa Cruz. Today's quake also put an Air Force tracking station out of commission. That tracking station is in Sunnydale and it is needed for the upcoming flight of the Space Shuttle Atlantic. Atlantis. Air Force officials say some crucial equipment, including computers, was knocked off tables and shelves. As you knew, the Atlantis was supposed to take off tomorrow. No word yet on whether the flight will have to be postponed because of the problems caused by the earthquake. The Sunnyvale facility is needed to track the Galileo space probe after it is deployed by Atlantis. So we have another complication there caused by this earthquake. Paul. We said the earthquake was centered near Santa Cruz. We have uh, not gotten a lot of information or uh, pictures out of Santa Cruz is because communications have, are, are totally or almost impossible to get to south of San Francisco. Um, isn't it ironic that this happened in San Francisco when the media from around the world were there to cover the World Series between Oakland and San Francisco? We have reports from Santa Cruz, the, the thin reports we're getting, that seven people have died at the Pacific Garden Mall there. The area is without power. Many homes have lost fireplaces. Gilroy reporting broken glass, a tank exploded at a gas station there, electricity also out in Gilroy. We have reports of people sleeping in parks, afraid there will be aftershocks. There have been plenty since this happened at 504. We have reports of looting and a shootout in Oakland. We haven't been able to confirm that. Stanford University, which was heavily damaged in the 1906 quake that destroyed San Francisco, is reporting minor damage, but there's a bridge collapse at University Avenue down there. That links the East Bay to the peninsula. We also have reports of damage in Pleasanton. And uh, as Laura Diaz reported, I'm sorry, not Laura Diaz, Ana Chavez reported right. up in the Bay Area, gangs of young people with baseball bats were seen roaming some isolated San Francisco areas. They don't have lights up there. They don't have power. And they, she said that there have been some incidents now. And this might be the sort of thing that she is referring to, gangs of youngsters who are roaming the streets with baseball bats. As she said, people in San Francisco are being advised to stay in their houses if they live there. Fire is a big problem there. Fires sparked by leaking gas are all always a danger after a quake and that has been happening tonight as well. Earlier video we have now of one of the major fires that was burning an entire city block in the area known as the Marina District of the city is exactly the fine of kind of fire that could create the next problem for officials. That's the sort of thing that gets sparked by a gas leak. That fire was in fact fed by a broken gas line and this makes these fires very difficult to fight because they can't pour water directly on the flames and as Bill Press pointed out earlier they also ran out of water pressure and they sent volunteers with a hose down to the bay to bring water up the hill. The buildings burning in this blaze were apartment buildings near the corner of Divisadero and Jefferson, which is near the marina just south of the Golden Gate Bridge. After fighting that fire for about three hours, firemen finally got that fire under control. We have estimates now that 20 people were hurt in that fire, and we've been telling you tonight that there was another major fire that broke out in Berkeley. We haven't had any details on that. Originally, we were told that it was burning near the library, library on the yeah. UC Berkeley campus. That is it. We have not heard anything new about that at all. Okay, Talk. folks, uh, I'm trying to get as much information as I can. We're going to Laura Diaz. Where is Laura Diaz? Talk to me. An emergency center? somewhere? Red Cross, I think. She's, she's at the Red Cross here yeah. in Southern California. All right, thank you very much. Laura, it's yours. Okay, Paul, we are at the Red Cross Emergency Operations Center, as you just said, and the folks here tell us that the phones have been ringing off the hook, and soon, right after 5 o'clock, they've received about a 1,000 phone calls so far, and people are calling here from Southern California what they want to know. Are their families okay up in the Bay Area? Unfortunately, Red Cross officials tell us they don't have any answers. If you call here, they are not able to trace your relatives. Right now, we're going to go to Peggy McKinley, who can give us some information about what you can do to help. Exactly what can you do, Peggy? At this point, we're doing a lot of talking to the families, trying to assure them to please be patient. We're not hearing staggeringly high numbers on people injured. We want them to watch the media. You're our best source. We'll be giving our information to you and hoping 
that that information can get out. The best thing they can do now is forward monetary donations to us so that we can keep that relief going to these people. And that can go to any Red Cross Center, correct? Exactly. In Los Angeles, we're at 2700 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles 90057. You just need to make checks out, American Red Cross, earmark those for disaster relief and get them to your local disaster, local American Red Cross. Peggy, it has been quite a month for disasters. First Hurricane Hugo, now this. This would seem to put a great strain on your budget. How are you able to respond given this? It absolutely strains our budget. We went into this year with $18.5 million lo allocated nationally for disaster relief. Because of Hugo, we expect to spend over $42 million there alone. That's before we go into this massive disaster relief effort. Again, too early for us to tell how much we'll actually be spending. It's going to go on weeks, and right now we're at the damage assessment stage. Now, folks usually think in terms of food, clothing, blood, that type of thing. Are any of these helpful in this disaster? We've had no requests from that area for blood at this time. What we have been asked is um, what we're trying to do is get through to the Red Cross in that area, find out how we can best help. We will be sending up canteen trucks and personnel as it's requested. Uh, things like clothing and food, we understand that's what those people will need up there. It only causes a log jam for us to send those things up. Better that we get the money up to the Red Cross in that area and they can purchase what they need up there. How soon might you be able to assist families in tracing their loved ones? Well, I can tell you, for us to take that information now before we even know the areas that are affected will only slow down the process when we are able to take that information. We're asking that people be patient. It may be a couple days before that system is up. Our top priority is for those victims tonight. Let's get them into shelters, make sure they have a warm place to stay and food to eat. And as soon as we're able, we'll get out to these areas and try and assess who's safe, who's not. Again, please keep in mind, most of you can't get through because of damage to the phone lines and people trying to reach one another and, and jamming up those lines. Okay. Thank you very much, Peggy McKinley. As you heard Peggy say, please do not call here right now. This is not the time. I know that you are concerned about loved ones, but they don't have the information for you here. What you should do is send a check to the Red Cross Center, any Red Cross Center. It should be earmarked for disaster relief. That is the very latest. I'm Laura Diaz reporting live from downtown Los Angeles. Back to the studio. Laura, thank you very much. We have more on the Southern California angle to this Northern California disaster night. We've got reports that automatic tellers bank cash machines are not working in Los Angeles tonight because of the earthquake in San Francisco earlier today. Two banks, Security Pacific and Wells Fargo, have confirmed that phone lines are down from the Bay Area, disrupting the service which is linked to San Francisco. We don't know how many banks are affected or how long the service will be out. We also have more damage reports from San Jose. A bank building in downtown San Jose apparently has collapsed. We don't have details on that. We're told it's an older building. These reports are coming in very quickly to us. We are trying to confirm them as quickly as we can. We also have, and let me bring Ann and Bill Press in on this one too, a new report of the death toll. Mm -hmm. 200 people, perhaps, on Highway 880 in Oakland, that being the Nimitz mm -hmm. Highway. 200 people, according to AP. 200 dead and another 400 possibly hurt. That's the section of freeway that pancaked, and we all looking at it were afraid that it was going to be a disaster, and it apparently is. Again, this is that section. It's like driving it. It's like a tunnel going from the Coliseum up toward the Bay Bridge. You're on the lower deck of this. You can see there it the is. upper deck is going south. The lower deck, where everyone was injured, is, is going north. And the top deck just collapsed on that lower deck. The whole thing is raised, so you just have those people crushed. 200 people, according to AP. And God knows how many cars you can see, and that's, I bet, just still an early count. It is impossible to look at this tape, and I know that this is a selfish thought, but I bet it's a thought that's shared. It's impossible to look at that tape, know that the, that the, the earthquake is seven points, more or less, 50 miles away, and look what happened to that freeway, and look at the freeways that we live surrounded by, what would happen here? I think that is a, I think that is a, is a thought that probably is shared by many people, although Bill Press or Ann, correct me if I'm wrong, that freeway is nothing like what we have here, is it? Is it older? Is I don't it think it's older. I don't know. I, I think we have freeways here that are in... in, in no, no, I understand, but the structure of it. I don't know of any here like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any tunnels like that. We have some certain overpasses, which are four levels or so. Right. But this, mm -hmm. is, this is a mile and a half, and that stretch of freeway that collapses 14 mm -hmm. blocks long. It leads, by the way, to this bridge where we have the 50-foot section there of the Bay Bridge that collapsed. And we learned by listening to that couple earlier oh. that they actually were heading, now they were heading 
out of the city. The people mm -hmm. that actually ended up down. Right. They were heading out of the city. They were rerouted over to Treasure Island because the bridge was closed. And then mm -hmm. someone mistakenly told them to go back on the bridge and turn right instead of turning left back towards San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So they were following the advice and they went up on the bridge. They turned right, right into that uh, hole in the bridge. Well, Another just, ironic yeah. twist of fate in, oh. this, uh, in this story. Remarkable Absolutely. that the couple with the camera didn't just keep zipping along and go right over the decline as as the couple in the well, first car Well, that did, would be you know? one's one's natural inclination would be let's get out of here yeah. unless you're a news person yeah. and you want to find out but and these people and it, it shows you we're going to be using that kind of home video more and more and more it sure on does the news as the years go by video. henry alfaro at uh, i believe caltech henry well, Paul, just a few minutes ago, we had considerable activity here. The seismographs behind me were very, very active. Those needles were going back and forth. An indication, I am told, that there was another aftershock. With me, Kate Hutton, the uh, seismologist here at Caltech. Kate, how big a magnitude was this aftershock? Because I did notice those needles were going pretty, pretty good. Okay, I only have a guess at this point, but it's probably in the fours. And what does it mean? Well, it means that it was felt fairly strongly in the area up there um, and, you know, might have caused a little further damage. I don't think it was big enough to cause too much further damage. Now, it's been five, approximately five hours since the earthquake took place, and during that time it was relatively quiet. I've been talking to a number of people here, and all of a sudden you have more activity. Does that mean there's more earth movement within the uh, San Andreas Fault? Well, aftershocks have been going on at a fairly steady rate, not... Um, every five minutes but there have been some and each one of those is a little bit of further movement on this on the san andreas fault in that santa cruz mountains area enough to further fray the nerves of people living in northern california that's probably the the biggest effect yes once again there's been talk that officially it was 6.9 now you indicate there's a possibility that there's a seven why the change well, I'm not really sure at this point. Uh, these are two different numbers that I have heard attributed to the National Earthquake Information Center, and I have not had a chance to call them and find out what their most a um, accurate estimate is. At this point, there's really not much difference. Um, both of these are first-night estimates, so um, I wouldn't take the tenth of a point too seriously if I were you. Any changes now? The fact that earlier was reported that it was centered about ten miles north of uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, we still believe it's on the San Andreas in that in that area north of Santa Cruz, yes. There is some good news, the fact that it didn't happen in San Francisco, correct? Uh, that distance is definitely in San Francisco's favor. If it had been farther north on the San Andreas Fault, it probably would have been quite a bit worse. It hit a lot stronger on the Bay side than on the Oakland side. Any indications as to why? Well, I can only speculate, but... Uh, most of the damage that we've been seeing on the on the TV is in the Bay Area, right around San Francisco Bay, which is prone to liquefaction um, because of the sediments, the waterlogged sediments there. And I suspect that they were probably amplifying the the, the shaking quite a bit. Everything broke down in Berkeley, and uh, so you have to more or less guess, or how severe is it in Berkeley as far as your people are concerned, the seismology lab up there? Well, actually, we got the location from them, so they're not completely down. Uh, but we haven't heard from them for a few hours, so I don't really know what the situation is. So really, down here in Southern California, we just have to wait to see if any more action takes place. Uh, as we do anywhere in the state at this moment. Yeah. You know, people, again, here you have the San Andreas Fault. Northern California extends all the way down to Southern California. Again, I've, I've asked this before, but I think it's worth repeating that a lot of people get very, very itch, itchy around here in terms of it happening here. Is there that possibility that the power can come down this way? Well, historically, the seismic activity in Northern and Southern California have been pretty independent. Um, we haven't really had much correlation, so um, it would be only a very small chance, very small chance. The historical significance in terms of previous, how does this one compare to previous earthquakes in California? Well, it's quite a bit smaller than the 1906 earthquake, uh, but it's bigger than the San Fernando earthquake uh, and a bit smaller than the 1952 Kern County earthquake. Um, it's a little small, just a slight bit smaller than the Soviet Armenia earthquake, uh, which is sort of an interesting comparison. Uh, it shows us how well our building construction uh, requirements here in California have been, have been helping us. Well, that certainly is a positive note, um, but uh, even though it's small, it has caused considerable damage, as has been reported here on Channel 7 for the past few hours, and uh, we'll continue to stand by here at Caltech. Reporting live, I'm Henry Alfaro. Back to you, Paul and Annie.
Henry, thank, thank you. you. And the, the thought occurs that if this doesn't cause people to get ready for the eventuality of one down here, I don't think anything will. All the things that we've been told about knowing where you could turn off your gas and having water stockpiled and batteries for your radio, mm -hmm. all of those things are coming into play up there. And aren't knowing what they? to do. Yeah, and knowing and being prepared in and your brain. And this, yeah. this isn't, quote, the big one. Oh, no. I this mean, this big. is big, seven, and major damage and a lot yeah. of loss of life, but the big one that they're talking about and it could happen on the San Andreas, or down here is, a, is in the neighborhood of an eight. And look at the structural damage here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From our public freeways and infrastructure. Yep. We are going to go back Scary. now to our sister station at uh, KGO in San Francisco, who is doing a marvelous job of keeping everybody, including us, down south informed. So again, here they are. ...to what has obviously been a major uh, earthquake. What about the power? Any, line, the, any idea? The power is coming up. Uh, I'm informed that in the Hunters Point Petrero area, power is on in many parts, as well as south of Monterey. The uh, PG&E tells me they expect within an hour and a half to have the southern part of the city fully operational. And if things continue to flow as well as they have so far, we could well be uh, in pretty good shape, except for the marina, which had some major uh, impact because of the fire uh, by morning, if not before. So I think by morning most of the power will be back on. That's what I'm being told, but there's no guarantees yet. What about but that, the number of people who have been put out of their homes? Any reading on that? No, I was just about to go out. I was just about to go to the uh, two Red Cross centers that we have, the Marina Middle School as well as the Convention Center. And I'm told that there are some elderly people that were evacuated from the uh, Park Merced Towers a lot of, a lot of at folks. SI, at St. Ignatius. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go check them out and see how they're doing. Is there any indication what are, what are about Candlestick Park and the structural damage? Well, I was there. And, uh, quite frankly, that's where uh, everybody really uh, was uh, taking it rather casually. Uh, uh, people were uh, sort of enjoying the, the, the whole experience as uh, a happening, not realizing, obviously, the serious damage that was done elsewhere. There wasn't any serious damage there. Nothing fell. The power went out, but people thought that would be plugged in very soon. And so it was kind of a light uh, hearted kind of atmosphere there and people were calling for the ball game to start uh, some 15 20 minutes after the uh, earthquake hit because they didn't realize the what had happened in other parts of the city I'm I'm not sure if it's been open uh, do we know do we know if the airport's been open yet I believe that uh, they're allowing leaving, out no they're, they're, they're allowing outgoing flights but none incoming Is there any indication of an impact in any landfill area in the city uh, any sinking well, we're, we're, we've got our city inspectors and people out uh, now trying to survey buildings. They're doing it in a sort of priority area. Our aerial surveys, although it's dark, do not show anything from the air, but we'll be doing it again in the morning. How long are the schools liable to be closed? Well, we're certainly going to we'll close them for tomorrow. Uh, we'll, take a, we'll make a decision. The superintendent will make the decision with the school board uh, in the afternoon tomorrow to see where we are. City Hall? City Hall, I'm told, had some damage. Uh, the uh, Department of Public Works Director, Dick Evans, is down there now looking at the dome where he thinks there may be some kind of damage to the upper dome. And uh, he needs to check that out to see if we can use the building tomorrow. Don, this is uh, Jim again. We're uh, winding this up. I think he'll be go going in a, in a few minutes. I am told that the mayor of San Jose uh, is on a ham radio right now waiting to, to talk to uh, Mayor Agnos. I'm not exactly sure what he wants to talk to him about, but a ham radio operator came here about a half hour ago and uh, asked to see the mayor and has set this uh, connection up. That's what we're going to be standing by uh, for. Uh, unless you want to take it back, we'll continue with Mayor Agnos. Just a quick question, Jim. Uh, there has been a warning about people, uh, two people, to stay off the city streets tonight. Now, is that because it's unsafe or just simply they don't want uh, the, the traffic there because uh, lights are out? It is mostly because of traffic. There has been some looting, but Mayor Agno says that uh, it is, for the most part, been fairly minor, uh, mainly down in the, in, uh, in the Third Street area and also in the Hayes Valley. There have also been some isolated uh, incidents of uh, muggings and, and some broken glass here and there, people attacking cars, but that, that's about it. Uh, but for the most part, they're just really afraid that uh, people leaving their homes to go out and look at the, at the damage is just going to cause more problems. The police uh, and other emergency people uh, just need the streets to be cleared. Now, 
and tomorrow, by the way. The mayor has uh, said several times tonight that people who don't have to go to work in San Francisco shouldn't come to work because, for one, they don't want traffic, and another, they're not really sure how much damage has been done to any buildings uh, down, especially in the downtown area, in the high-rise area. All right, Jim Vargas, thank you for that latest uh, with uh, Mayor Art Agnos. Yes, the, uh, the harsh uh, reality of the light uh, as, as dawn breaks uh, tomorrow will perhaps also, reveal even worse uh, conditions than we thought. I understand also the uh, cracks in the street, so it's not going to be safe for your car. Even if the traffic lights were working, yes. it wouldn't be safe. Uh, we have a couple of reports we want to bring to you right now. We've got Frank Crocker standing by live at the airport. Uh, we're not going to go to Frank right now. Um, we want to tell you that there are several shelters being set up around the Bay Area. In San Francisco, the word we have right now is the uh, there is a shelter set up by the Red Cross at, at the Moscone Center, 3rd and Howard Streets, the main entrance. There they are on your screen, Red Cross Shelters, the Moscone Shelter, 3rd and Howard Street's main entrance, the Marina Middle School, 3500 Fillmore Street, St. Ignatius School, 37th Avenue and Pacheco. Now, if you're in Oakland, we have a couple of shelters set up there, the Red Cross does, 2111 East 14th Street, and also there's a public information line in Oakland. If you need to know where to go or what to do to get help, 273-3856. They asked me to mention this, but I think it goes without saying, uh, all, all police officers in uh, the Bay Area are asked to respond if you're off duty. Go The same thing with the fire departments, especially in Oakland and San Francisco. Uh, hospital staffs, Kaiser no longer needs all available employees back as they did a few hours ago. All all other major hospitals in the Bay Area say they are returning to normal operation at this hour. And as you can see, we're being handed information well, fast well, and, changing, and furiously. Course, yeah. So uh, this latest item was handed to me. Tommy, uh, Thomas and Debbie Kelly of Oklahoma City tourists, uh, they came within a few hundred feet of disaster tonight. They were on the lower deck of the Bay Bridge heading mm -hmm. into Oakland. They and about a hundred other drivers were apparently misdirected onto the upper ramp heading toward the chasm created when the upper deck fell. Oh they had their home video camera with them. They were rolling as the car in front of them, this is what we were afraid of, as the car in front of them had plunged into the abyss. Now here is raw videotape, here is their raw videotape, and then a replay of their appearance here in our newsroom just about an hour ago. Let's take a look. Oakland Bay Bridge, it's just a little bit after, after the uh, earthquake. They sent us down here Surprisingly, in the wrong direction, there's another car. Ooh. Gosh! That could have been us, but... Yeah, we, that could have been us, but we just turned around. Thomas, we need to go down there and help. This is the video that you actually shot, Thomas. Debbie, can you tell us what we're seeing here? Now, you're right at the front of this. Yeah, we are. We came up on it, and then we turned around. We saw the break in the bridge, and we turned around, and I pulled out the camera when we saw this. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. And that was my reaction. Oh, my gosh. And I just froze. We couldn't believe it. All right. Now, you could see the break uh, at that point. You, yes, you we had just turned around. All right. uh, we were sent up there with about 100 other vehicles, and it, it was sort of mass confusion when we got to this break. But these two cars were quite a ways back behind the rest of the group. Thomas, so. you say you were sent up there. Were they already aware of damage? Uh, at, uh, we understand the first street. Here's the slow motion which we've put together of this car going oh, off the edge. Gosh. You were given permission to go up there. It was a the mistake. They to. sent a, a, about 100 cars by mistake. Told us to turn right at the bridge. Turn right and go across. So. And when we saw it, we decided this is not what we need to do. Well, that video Goodness. is very, very frightening. I understand that we had two serious injuries. We don't know if those people in the car were injured. I, I can imagine just by looking at the video, I assume they were. We had one death reported from the Bay Bridge uh, tragedy tonight and two serious injuries at this point. There may be more later. We certainly hope not. Two cars that we know of when the, when there was that collapse slid down that particular section and landed on the, the lower deck. And that uh, was earlier. home video. A couple visiting us yes. from yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah. Thomas and Debbie Kelly of Oklahoma had their home video camera rolling with them as that car rolled into that split created when that section of the Bay Bridge collapsed. Uh, Vice President Dan Quayle and his wife, uh, along with the Transportation Secretary Sam Skinner, plan to tour the area tomorrow. Uh, Quayle had been here earlier in the week. He was in uh, San Diego today to wrap up a, a tour. Actually, he was in San Francisco earlier this morning. Uh, and uh, Mrs. Quayle, of course, was in San Francisco recently to participate in, of all things, an earthquake simulation drill. Okay, now we have uh, we've had reporters out at the airport, San Francisco International Airport tonight. That airport is closed. There was major damage to the tower. Uh, let's take a listen to some of what was said tonight about that. 
Well, that's a, that, that truly is a tough one. As you can look behind us, it's really a function of, of the number of people we can put to work cleaning up the facilities, taking down a lot of these ceiling tiles which are suspended. We're concerned about aftershocks. Uh, I think if, if we don't experience any aftershocks and can move forward fairly crisply, uh, we would hope to, uh, hope to uh, start accommodating flights sometime tomorrow morning. Okay, of course, you can see San Francisco International Her Airport. A lot of damage there. I'm sure there were a lot of people. That's the newer section there of the airport. Well, airport closed tonight. Traffic is being diverted to San Jose and Oakland. Some runways there are open. Damage there, hopefully minor. Yes, and I understand that some flights have been allowed to leave SFO, but uh, there are no incoming flights. You heard the mayor say that a little bit ago. Uh, so it's difficult to figure out how to get around flying or, or driving. We've shown you some of those closures a little bit earlier uh, in, this, uh, in this broadcast. Uh, let's go to Pete Wilson now with uh, the more definitive word, perhaps, at least at this hour, Pete. Well, this is what we have, uh, again, the latest uh, for you folks in terms of transportation and the way the Bay Area looks tonight. And I'll try to guide you with this map, but again, it's a little difficult to see the map because our lighting is very, very sparse. The, uh, the floor crew here has done a remarkable job trying to give us, uh, give us a sense of what this, this is all about tonight. And I might add here that you may be seeing our ugly faces on the air hour after hour after hour, both earlier and uh, continuing on into the night, but there are a hundred people here just tearing around and working trying to get this information out to you, and uh, they're doing a heck of a job with it. Let's begin, and if you get a sense of this, we're looking as though we were in the Pacific, east toward the Sierras. Uh, at the top of the screen, this is the north, that is the south, all right? Now, Petaluma, Highway 101. Everything as we understand it is good in, that, in, in this area. Marin County and north, very, very little damage has actually been reported, though people certainly felt the earthquake. Now, you'll begin to see the bridges as we work them in here. The Carquinas Bridge is open at this hour, has been open about an hour and a half as we understand it, though there was some confusion, may have been open the whole time. Benicia also is open. The Richmond Bridge was closed for a time, is now open. So there is full movement both to the north and to the east toward Sacramento, at least for those folks who weren't trapped in other areas by the freeway collapses. Now let's continue to move south. The Golden Gate Bridge as it uh, uh, bridges to Marin County in San Francisco. This has been open. They inspected it, but it has never been closed, as we understand it, during the course of this evening. That bridge, uh, as people have been remarking for years, perfectly constructed for uh, earthquakes of this type. However, the severe damage we have showed you occurred on the Bay Bridge, and uh, the drop of about a 50-foot section of the upper deck of the bridge dropped onto the lower deck. You saw the cars and that remarkable footage, that home video we had earlier from those folks from Oklahoma. Uh, it is difficult to tell how long it will be before they get that bridge moving again. Obviously, both lanes, uh, both directions cut by this, and we have no way of knowing. Uh, the crews are already out there trying to assess other damage to the Bay Bridge, but it is a serious, serious problem, and that is a well, really, the main thoroughfare from east to west in San Francisco. BART. Now, again and again, we've been going over the BART system tonight. There are stoppages through most of BART. They will work hoping to get the main tubes operating by morning. There is no damage within the tubes, but they have damage on some of the BART stations and so on. So you have that difficulty. Continuing now to move south. And again, I'm trying to show you this map uh, from north to south. Now, 680. That is, uh, of course, out in Walnut Creek. We have very little damage to report from there. We understand there are some ramps that uh, have reported cracks and so on, but very little specific damage. It is here, 880, where we have seen the real disaster in San Francisco. And, of course, those of you who have driven this section of bridge know that it is uh, uh, a tight little freeway. Uh, the the uh, northbound lanes on top are underneath the southbound lanes, and it collapsed, about a mile of it. And the 200 deaths that we have reported, and those are very tentative figures, occurred in that section of freeway that literally sandwiched one on top of the other, trapping the cars at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and rush hour traffic along 880. 880 is, for all intents and purposes, useless. 580, there are some freeway entrances and exits, as we understand it, which have been damaged and are not usable tonight. The San Mateo Bridge was closed for a period of time, for about two hours. They inspected it thoroughly. They say it is safe and it has been reopened for some time. We do not know what traffic has been moving like on the bridge. The Dumbarton, closest of all of these bridges to the epicenter itself, which of course is way south in Santa Cruz, is open, has been open all night. So, 280 as well, uh, and I should mention this, of course, it's the freeway a lot of people use, has had damage uh, to report because it runs virtually along the San Andreas Fault, but as we understand it, most of the sections of that are open. There are problems at Mora, at Highway 85, 
and at Magdalena. They are all sections closed, that is, along Highway 280. Very quickly, other southbound road closures, Highway 101 at 3rd, again in San Mateo, all right? Uh, Highway 280 at Highway uh, 85. Uh, is closed. Highway 101 at University, that is in Palo Alto, that is also closed. Highway seven, uh, 17, that's of course down in Saratoga and Scotts Valley. Northbound 17 at Granite Creek on the way to Santa Cruz, that is the epicenter there in the mountains. And there is virtually no way to get from San Jose to Santa Cruz as we understand it tonight. Highway 17, Park Street overcrossing, also support structures damaged there. In San Francisco, 280 extension, the elevated section from 6th and Highway 101, that would be approximately here, closed. Central Freeway, 101 at 9th Street, both directions blocked. And uh, 480, both directions, northbound 101 and 3rd, that is also closed tonight. The bridges uh, I've already run over, so I think we essentially have it. There are a couple of problems in San Francisco specifically. Highway 101, the Golden Gate Bridge, again, is open. But Lombard Avenue approach has heavy, heavy traffic, continues to have tonight. 19th Avenue approaching the MacArthur Tunnel is uh, closed. Uh, that is uh, near the Golden Gate Bridge. So, uh, there you have the basic traffic situation, and again, all of the emergency people are urging that you simply stay off the roads unless you are trying to get home. Do not come back in the city to sightsee or for any other purpose until you are further notified. Emergency people only. Let's get back to uh, uh, Don and Cheryl, I believe, up in the newsroom. Yes, Don? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, Pete, thank you. We have, we'll add uh, two other items uh, to that report that you had because the CHP has just called us and said that two bridges, two bridges in the Santa Cruz area have collapsed. Uh, uh, one uh, on a highway out of Santa Cruz. There has been significant damage. The Slough Overpass on Highway 1 collapsed. Slough Overpass. And the Murray Street Bridge in Santa Cruz. Significant damage, but no injuries reported. And that is the good Use, I guess. Yeah, um, the ROM Systems and ROM Company in Santa Clara, the, it's the makers of telecommunications equipment, they asked us to let their employees know they have 3,000 employees. ROM Systems in Santa Clara says that it will be closed tomorrow. The company says do not show up for work. That will help certainly ease some of the transportation crisis that we will see tomorrow because of those closures. I have a note here that San Jose State University will also be closed tomorrow. Oakland Police Department is telling us that there is sporadic looting. Unfortunately, people are taking advantage of this terrible situation. Sporadic looting, about half a dozen incidents so far just in the last hour. They say that they think they have this under control, and there is also looting reported along 3rd Street in San Francisco. Well, there is some normalization of service, perhaps, at least with BART. BART reports that uh, it has West Oakland to uh, Concord service. It has begun now, and uh, BART will be running every 20 minutes at uh, every stop along the way. They are now checking the Richmond and the Fremont line, and, of course, we'll uh, keep you posted as BART lines open up. We, we mentioned earlier, of course, that there was very little damage in the area east of the East Bay Hills, but uh, BART is back with the service every 20 minutes now, so that's that's some encouraging news. Hi, Laura Marquez is sitting with us now. She's been out at the scene of that terrible, terrible fire. Laura, why don't you give us an update on what has happened? And in the Marina District. In the Marina District. In the Marina District. Yeah. The fire was brought under control uh, about three hours after the uh, earthquake started. Uh, what happened, it was a ruptured gas main that started the fire. The whole Marina Marina District, though, there are several buildings that have collapsed. Uh, they are uh, four stories. Uh, all of a sudden, they now look like two stories. A lot of structural damage. You can see here the structural damage in that area. Um, this area, I'm not sure exactly. Oh, this is North Point and Scott here. Uh, this is just one example of it. There were people that were trapped inside the buildings that they were bringing out. They do not have any confirmed reports of, or they don't know exactly how many injuries, how many deaths. As I say, the fires were started by the ruptured gas main. Uh, there was a big concern that they were going to spread to the other buildings because there was no water in the fire hydrants. And that was part of the problem. They had to bring water up from the bay. They had to bring hoses from, up from the bay. Uh, you can see the sidewalks. The sidewalks were buckled under. The streets were buckled under. Here, that was a four-story apartment building that was collapsed down. Uh, they did finally get some water coming up from the bay, and that did help. The fire did spread to a couple of buildings next door. Didn't completely damage it. This is night video. You can see here that the fire is coming under control. It's white smoke, and that means that things are better, but not after the building was devastated. There's nothing left to it. It did spread over to the uh, couple of other buildings, uh, but that was brought under control, and what they have to deal with now is the structural engineers have to come in and take a look at all of the buildings and decide if they are safe for people to live in. How, how were people... Uh 
handling this situation, uh, the emergency, the rescue effort, the people who live in the neighborhood or who perhaps volunteered, panic? Uh, calm. Or, Actually, they were really? very calm. And as I say, they pitched in to help carry the hoses up. Uh, they pitched in to help keep people away from the scene who did not have to be there. Uh, people were out on the Marina Green, which is about a block away from this district because they had evacuated it. Everybody seemed to be very calm about the whole thing. They were uh, not going to panic, and they were just going to stand by and help it at all, at all if necessary. People were going and getting blankets for some of the people that were trapped inside the buildings. Very helpful, very orderly crowd. There are some uh, magnificent homes along Marina Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And the boats then there, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Did you see any boats that were damaged? I did perhaps? not get a chance to see the boats, but that parking lot that is right where the boats are is buckled up. It is just one bump after another. And the buildings along Marina Boulevard, I didn't see any of those collapsed as you did a couple of blocks up, but you did see a lot of cracks in buildings. I wonder if anybody have you had a chance to check the Palace of Fine Arts, which... Uh, we did drive around the Palace of Fine Arts. It's still standing, but of course, you know, it's been around since 1915, so... Yes, yes. <laughs> well, and it will stay. All right. Well, Laura, I know uh, you live, I guess, in that area. Area too, so you're a couple a of blocks away. Um, I checked my building, and it's uh, it's got a lot of damage to it. Mm. They've evacuated it. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Well, well thank you thank for that you. report, Laura. We have lots of, of little bits of information for you. The good news in San Mateo County is that there have been no deaths reported. Uh, there have been 108 injuries, unfortunately. In Burlingame, seven people were injured at the Amfac Hotel. Uh, and I understand that a Safeway had a roof collapse in that area. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, we mentioned earlier that there are a number of uh, shelters. The Red Cross has set up tonight. Uh, Marina Middle School is one, certainly in the area where there was damage. Uh, but another is the Moscone Convention Center in uh, San Francisco. And our Carolyn Tyler joins us there now. Carolyn? Yes, Don, I'm here live at Moscone Center. This is one of those three major centers that the American Red Cross has set up as shelters for some of the people. There's been a steady stream of the stranded coming in here since about 6.30 tonight when word got out that there's food here, that there's water here, phones, and that people are safe here. A lot of people have been worried about looters on the streets or just where they should go. This is one of the places where they've come. There are a couple of hundred people inside, and we talked to some of them just a few minutes ago. A lot of them are tourists who... Because we work over on Market Street in an older building, and it seemed like a safe place to go. There's no big, huge buildings around. All the glass was crumbling on Market Street. There's no place else to go if you live in the East Bay. How do you get there? Where in the East Bay do you live? Lafayette, through the tunnel, through the tube. And so I think we'll be here all night. <laughs> It's obvious that you're pregnant. Yeah. The, the question, uh, you know, I'm interested in, uh, are you doing okay and yep. the impact of the uh, quake on that? On I your think condition? you got a good shot of adrenaline, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm due a week from Thursday, so it's pretty close. There's a doctor here, so it's probably a good place for me. So you're just planning on being here throughout the night? Unless, we haven't gotten much word on how to get out of the city. Otherwise, I don't want to go on BART under the ocean. Uh, I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, I don't think you can anyway. Why you're, so you're stuck here? We're stuck here, right. yeah. Tell me about your experience with the quake. Well, we were just here at Moscone Center, and it shook. I mean, nothing too exciting. Are we planning to stay through the evening? Well, until something opens up and we can get across. Yeah. Uh, or something. We're from San Lorenzo, and our car is in a parking lot across the street, and we can't get it out. So as soon as they open up some roads so we can get home, we'll go home. What's the situation here at the Red Cross uh, headquarters? Oh, they, they're great. They gave us been great. opened up downstairs and gave us food and drink, and it's been very nice. Mm -hmm. Could you have anything to do? Yeah. Have you heard, had any word about, uh, is there anybody that you're worried about or concerned about? No, we've, we've called at home and everything was all right. His home, his mother was right there. He's home. Tell me about your experience. It was scary. Yeah. I hope to God I never go through this again. Never. Are you worrying about your house back in San Lorenzo? I mean, in the UK? Well, we've had my sister-in-law check it, so uh, as far as we know, everything's all right. We heard that Hayward wasn't wasn't hurt as bad as, as the rest of the places. But so you could see some of the people were down there. There's, there really isn't a shelter in, in terms of people having a bed or a place to sleep on, but most of the people here are saying that they'll tough it out through the night. They have no place else to go. At least, as I said, there is food here, there is water, and they feel safe. Uh, the, the Red Cross chapter says that they are in touch with the National to uh, apprise them of the situation, to let them know if they're going to be needing more supplies tomorrow. Live at Moscone Center, this is Carolyn Tyler.
All right, Carolyn, uh, thank you for that. Uh, and uh, we might mention, too, that the uh, Los Gatos uh, Police Department, in conjunction with the Red Cross, has uh, uh, sh uh, set up a shelter at Los Gatos High School. That uh, word from them. I believe we have Frank Crocker standing by live at San Francisco International Airport. Let's see if we can talk to Frank right now. Frank, are you there? Hi, Cheryl. I hope you can hear me. We we're sure in, can. We're inside the International Terminal where we came live to you about uh, an hour ago. It looked like a war zone then. Now it's been occupied by cleanup crews. There are people from the city. There are volunteers from construction companies that have come out here. The volunteer effort out here is great. They are in the midst of really cleaning up this international terminal. They've taken up, as you can see, a lot of the, the debris off the floor. They're vacuuming up the water from the leaks. Uh, they're trying to figure out which parts of the false or the drop ceiling, I should say, need to come down that are uh, that uh, are uh, look like they're threatening to fall down anyway. I talked to Ron Wilson, one of the airport managers, a little while ago. He said they mean serious business. They'd like to get this airport at least partially functional by tomorrow morning, by daylight. He said he'd like to see at least uh, 20 flights come in and 20 flights go out in the morning. That is the goal. Uh, it still remains to be seen whether they're going to, to make that goal. They have opened up the South Terminal and are bringing in pillows and blankets. They're going to be letting people who could not find hotel accommodations move down to the South Terminal and sleep there overnight. We understand that the North Terminal also has a considerable amount of damage. They still have not been able to find any major structural damage. It's, it's ceilings that have come down. It's water damage. They have found one serious injury. They uh, have learned of a woman who they believe was a ticket agent. They don't know for what airline who somehow fell or became pinned under a counter. She may have a broken neck or a broken back. No identification on that woman. No status as to her condition now. But that is the one major injury they've been able to find out at the airport. Again, they evacuated somewhere between 15 and 25,000 people from this airport tonight when when the earthquake hit it was one of the peak times as you know five o'clock uh, out here at this airport so one of the largest airports on the west coast continues to be paralyzed tonight they don't know when it's going to reopen hopefully sometime in the morning uh, we'll check back with you later we'll keep uh, moving around here and checking the status and and bringing you updates from san francisco international airport back to you what's their power situation uh, there is that well, as you can see, there there is power in here. They don't have full power at the airport. They're on generators right now, and, and they've got enough to uh, uh, be able to do their cleanup at this point. Uh, there are street lights on outside. The parking uh, garage has light. They have phone service out of here. But again, they have to keep it closed. I mean, it, it, uh, it really is a mess. It's going to take a while to clean up. There are parts of the North Terminal, I am told, that are uh, such a mess that it's going to be days before they can clean it up. So it's going to be quite some time before this airport is anywhere near back to normal. It's got to be an eerie feeling, Frank, to be in an airport that is normally so, so busy to I've, not see I've, anybody. I've not been out here in the middle of the morning when this place is, you know, is, is like a ghost town anyway. It, it, it is always so much more bustling than this. It is. Eerie is exactly the word that came to mind when I got up here. This place is just empty except for now the workmen, but you go out on the street, it is just quiet, and of course, no sound of any jets at all, which is is probably the strangest aspect of the whole thing. And, and behind him there, the, the monitors that say departure and arrivals uh, oh, is still It's the same too. as at Candlestick tonight. The, after, after the power came back on, the scoreboard had all kinds of strange designs all over it. That's exactly what those uh, arrival departure screens look like. They're still uh, suffering the uh, electronic trauma of this quake. Okay, Frank, thank you very much for that live report. That yeah. international terminal, of course, is the old original San yes. Francisco terminal that's been uh, modernized. Frank was talking about power outages and running on generator power. We at KGO are running on generator power also. Um, speaking of power, 85,000 customers are without power just in the central San Jose area, Highway 17, Hamilton, and uh, the East Foothills. And Don, we have, have a PG&E spokesperson with us uh, right now on the phone. She is Rose Baldwin. Uh, Rose, how widespread in the San Jose area is that power outage and uh, what's going on with crews trying to get it restored? Okay, um, as uh, she was just saying, it's uh, primarily in the central part of San Jose and uh, specifically around Highway 17 and Hamilton Avenue in the East Foothills. Our crews are out there working and we plan on working throughout the night to restore service to everyone as soon as possible. Um, we uh, are going to emphasize electric service restoration throughout the night and we are going to be working on gas uh, restoration. Beginning around 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're going to get a full workforce out there during the daylight hours so we can uh, be more productive out there during the daytime. It's real difficult at night to work on the gas problems.
Do we have any idea how long it will uh, take to restore service? Uh, well, uh, right now we really can't give you a time. There's just there's just too much going on right now. Uh, we yes. just ask people to be patient and to let them know that we are working on it and we will be working throughout the night to get their service back on. We're talking basically about down the power lines. Is that it, or is there some well, underground? Well, yeah. The the primary problems that we're having are overhead lines down and overhead wires wrapped together. So um, those those are a major problem. But um, as I said, it's in the central part of San Jose. Okay, if you're talking downed power lines, Rose, certainly you want people to stay out of that area. Definitely, okay. definitely. And we're also asking people, um, we're getting a lot of people shutting off their gas, and if they smell gas, they should do so, but if they do not smell gas, uh, we're asking that they do not shut their gas off because it, it could be several days before we can get out there and, and oh. turn their gas back on for them. We're just getting too many people, I guess, you know, considerably they're panicking, but there really is no reason to panic unless they can smell gas. So please do not turn off your gas unless you can smell gas. Okay, and I want to remind people once again, Rose was stressing the importance of if you smell gas, to please shut off the gas lines. If you're, not, if you're concerned and you're confused about it, you can get your phone book. Your phone book, right in the front of the phone book, has emergency information on what to do about those problems. So how to, how to shut off your gas line, what to do, who to call, and uh, where to go in such an emergency. Um, there are water main breaks throughout the Bay Area. In the Santa Clara County area, the Almaden line is broken. That area is the, the water department there is urging mandatory conservation of water. I wanted to show you that phone book. Could you hand me that phone book there? Yeah. Thank you. Um, right in the front of every phone book throughout the Bay Area are very valuable tips about what to do after an earthquake hits. And you can see it's very easy to find. Let me hold it up for you there on what to do. Um, of course, the most important well, thing is to stay calm. Well, we better go to this calm. page over here, I guess, because yeah. uh, if we weren't prepared for, before and during, uh, then we better be ready after. And that means uh, things like bottled water. I don't know how many of us have been prepared. We've been doing we've been doing these stories for years now, talking about the big one that's coming. I think we had a series on on uh, Channel 7 News uh, uh, with that title. Uh, and well, I guess we can't say that this is the big one, but it's certainly the biggest earthquake since 1906. Is that uh, correct? In Northern California with a 7.0, yeah, if that's the, uh, the figure that we can go with. And I don't know how many of us have the emergency supply, uh, supplies, the, uh, the, the lights, the flashlights, and uh, the bottled water, and enough to take care of you for three, four, or five days, as the, the, the case may be. Well, it's certainly been so bad here that Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy is declaring or is preparing to declare a state of emergency in San Mateo County, Alameda County, and Contra Costa County. San Francisco, very hard hit in the Marina District. We have no word yet on whether that will also be considered part of that uh, disaster declaration. Right now, we have Martin Wyatt joining us. Martin Cheryl uh, and Don, we just came back from Half Moon Bay. Went down oh. Highway 1 How to see what was happening. It was, it was absolutely open. There wasn't any problem. Uh, in fact, down at Half Moon Bay, the service stations are open. There's no, no lines at all. All the businesses are moving along. It, it, it seems like nothing had happened at that point. Coming back up, of course, we saw that the lights were on in South San Francisco and Daly City. Ah, good. And that was going, power, that was yeah. that had happened about when we first went down, which was about an hour ago. So as far as going south is concerned, things uh, on that side were at, were just like they were at normal. Uh, yes. It wasn't a problem at all. And not, not lines in any of the stores, convenience stores, in any of the gas stations at all. We only saw that when we started coming back around Candlestick Park. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, on the other side, on the east side of, of, of the highway by Candlestick Park, lights were on. Uh, this was only 15 or 20 minutes in one little pocket there. Cities, uh, street lights, and uh, there were several gas stations that were open, and we got some footage of that that Pardini got and just brought it back in. Are we going to take a look at that now? Or? Uh, I don't think they have it racked up okay. yet, because I just came right upstairs sure. as soon as I got out of the car, and I drive back yeah. in. No, we can understand, nothing is ever, we can't plan any of this. We're going along and uh, bringing this to you as, uh, as quickly as we can and moving people around. So it's, You know, some people I'm lost their cable service, their tele uh, television yeah. service, and, of course, their electricity, so they haven't been able to get us in their areas. You were out at Candlestick Park tonight when this Hit. And I can only imagine with 62,000 fans in that stadium and that shaking going on, Martin. Wilkes. It was remarkable the way the fans seemed to react. First of all, it was shock. Not knowing, uh, you know, at first, actually, some people were kidding because we didn't know the magnitude of what had happened. Yes. You knew it was a major shock, but you're looking around. But when the when the power was off in the stadium, 
it started to uh, to hit. People were starting to think, hey, this is serious. Some of the ball players uh, went out, they didn't even want to go back into the park. Uh, then the news started to filter back in through us because we immediately went to our truck. We were getting information to you. We were telling some of the ball players and some of the fans, hey, something major has happened on the Bay Bridge. Something major has happened in the East Bay. Lives have been lost. And people at that point, ball players, and some of the fans were really starting to, you know, they became frightened, wondering about their loved ones, and, and being very concerned at that point. But at first, it was really the magnitude. I mean, it just didn't have to sunk in at all. Uh, baseball Commissioner Faye Vincent has canceled, of course, Game 3 uh, today. It was scheduled. Uh, and at this point, I don't know. Uh, can they play? There there may be some uh, damage structure. Well, that's what you'd it. have to wonder about. What about Candlestick Park? Is there any, any damages, uh, you know, major damages that would mean that 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 facility can't be used not just for uh, you know because of what happened today but maybe even for some time past so there, that's going to have to be checked out there has been talk from southern california because we've been in touch with people there uh i don't know if this is maybe somebody's pipe dream or is it a, a possibility the world series could be played at dodger stadium well that is a possibility because i mean obviously w what has happened here now and because i only heard driving back up the fact that 200 and some lives have been lost yes yes uh, that is going to cast a pale over our, over our community for some time so i don't know uh, what alternatives they're going to have to do but that certainly would be a possibility unprecedented but certainly a possibility okay well martin thank you uh, very much and uh, i guess for the people on uh, in highway one and uh, in that area along that's the coast, wide open and, and you can go about in fact there was hardly any traffic at all going all the way down to half moon Bay. yes well you should probably stay there uh, stay at home uh, the rest of tonight and tomorrow too because it's going to be very difficult to commute thank you yeah. mark gibson uh, from channel seven sports also now joins us uh, with uh, more of a, a baseball look too at uh, what's been going on and uh, something about Jose Canseco oh yeah you know as Martin was saying we were talking to many of the ball players we were there when they left with their families now some left by bus others had cars there their wives had driven their cars there and think of this now the players weren't able to change from their uniforms into their civilian clothes because there were no lights in the locker rooms or in the clubhouses so as my cameraman Doug Laughlin and I were heading south, we were going towards the peninsula, checking traffic on 280, uh, we got off at Sneath Lane in San Bruno, and who do we find but Jose Canseco pumping gas. Well, we were sort of following the buses back home, and I noticed I had no gas in the car, and the only place open at this time was here, the only lighting around here, I guess, and uh, we decided to stop here and get some gas because we had to. Now, we've been here for 45 minutes already, so we'll get home about midnight. <laughs> and you still don't know whether you're playing tomorrow. We still don't know whether we're playing tomorrow or what condition the field is or if the stadium's even stable. So I know the, uh, uh, some of the bridges are down. I don't know how we're going to get back. For Jose Canseco, it was simply an emergency. He didn't have enough gas to get home. But for scores of other motorists who queued up as early as 6 o'clock at the San Bruno gas station, it wasn't an emergency. It was a case of panic buying. I just feel sorry for all the people around here. It's just, it's just, it's insane. I mean, just in the store alone, you see people just grabbing everything they can just to buy and, and just keep buying. I just hope, God hope everyone's all right. I really do. Baseball means very little right now when you escape with your life out of something like that. I've always said that when you compare it something to life-threatening or... Uh, try to uh, compare it to your family. I mean, baseball is really is not even close. Here's a million dollar ball player caught in a disaster. It's just that way. And like Jose said, this puts it all in perspective. Baseball means very little right now. It's the lives of the people who are lost. And again, we'd like to urge you, uh, panic buying's unnecessary at this point. Ken Kyler, the owner of that BP station on Sneak Lane there in San Bruno, says, you know, I mean, it's really unnecessary. People are coming and grabbing sodas, water, everything. So, um, again, it puts it all in perspective. The World Series takes a backseat at this point, even with Jose Canseco. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a uh, uh, nice man, and uh, sharing some time there, too, with uh, some of the fans. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. Some of us, uh, you know, this is a, a, it's been a very tragic, a, a difficult time, but for some people, uh, well, for all of us, life has to go on. And uh, the World Series at this point, I guess we just don't know, do we? we you know, you know mentioned about. that people are running into stores, buying things, panicking, and that sort of thing. In the Santa Clara Valley area, there is good reason for them to be concerned about the water supply because oh. their major pipeline has broken in the Albany, and they're urging, they're urging people in that area for mandatory, actually, if they're not urging, they're telling you, it's mandatory conservation. Uh, we have word from the Morgan Hill Unified School District. It will be closed tomorrow. If you are a major business, a major school district, if you, if you think that somehow we can get the word out to your folks we will try to get that information on the air for you we're going to be on the air probably probably we'll have updates for you throughout the night yes that is the plan 7.0 on the richter scale and it uh, struck at uh, 504 uh, this afternoon and Don, uh, if i just might add yes, um, I yes, can, this is something i and, and again all of us will never forget it for some reason or another but we had just come off the air with our pre-game show at yes. camp from candlestick park and i'm standing by our main unit and all of a sudden you see the ground start to, not only the ground start to moving, but buses, the buses that had brought the players and their wives and families there, they were rolling around like popcorn. Uh, they're jumping up and down like popcorn. Uh, you felt the aftershocks later. Um, the people there, you heard, you heard what you thought was a chair go up. At first. At first. At first. At initially. We've yes. been through so many earthquakes, I think that's the reason. But this one, this one was very serious. This one was much more yeah. serious than any earthquake, I think. And, and, and you never, I was looking for the ground to open up. Martin, I know that you commute to the East Bay. There, uh, you yeah. probably can't get home that way tonight. Let's take a look at this video right now. These pictures are of the... the that's the uh, Marina, Marina District, District. Uh, San Francisco earlier today. And that fire grew bigger than that and eventually apparently destroyed uh, 12 buildings in the area of uh, Divisadero and uh, and bush you could see the flames and the uh, the smoke for for miles and miles and this is the 880 section the old uh, highway 17 section in oakland that portion collapsed we have reports that as many as 200 250 people may have been killed when that portion of the freeway collapsed uh one woman who witnessed that said it looked like the end of the earth she saw people running good good samaritans running to help the people who were trapped in their cars trapped in cars became crushed by sections of concrete from that freeway Way that that fell on them and, and crushed them and we have reports of at least 400 injuries throughout northern california as a result of this major uh, seven point earthquake we're getting various readings 6.7 to seven point and at least uh, three or four aftershocks in the four to five richter scale range very terrifying situation we are going to be staying on the air as much as we can tonight to bring you updates that's where 880 just pancaked down the upper level just pancaked down okay now uh, you're looking at another picture of some destruction here. We're not quite sure what that is. In any case, you can see that people are concerned about their relatives, worried that they didn't make it home safe. This is in San Mateo County. Uh, where the damage, we this, have reports uh, there were no deaths This must be the hotel, the Amfac County. Hotel perhaps, or this is the Amfac Hotel where uh, Hotel. some uh, people were injured uh, when some of the walls uh, came down. But luckily, uh, uh, no deaths in San Mateo County. Uh, late word too that all schools in the Santa Clara County Unified School District are closed. Uh, that affects about 12,000 students. You know, Mark, uh, give, I'm sorry. We had uh, Rose Baldwin from PG&E yes. in, the, in the San Jose area on earlier tonight talking about the power outage with some uh, 85,000 people without power in that area. Officials are telling us right now they have no idea when the power will be back on to the affected areas. Police uh, have informed pg &E, has informed pg &E to turn on, not to turn on service until they've confirmed that everything is out of danger or fire or explosion. 50 to 100,000 customers in the San Francisco area are without gas right now and we've been telling you the precautions. We will tell you them again a little bit later on. Yes, um, as uh, Mark Gibson mentioned earlier, we had done our regular news program pre-game program from uh, 4 until uh, 5 o'clock. Uh, and then the World Series, of course, began here on ABC and Channel 7 at 5. Uh, the, the quake struck at 4 minutes after 5. And, of course, ABC was on the air at the time it uh, happened with Al Michaels, Jim Palmer. Uh, let's take a look. We have uh, that actual broadcast that, uh, as we were then kicked off the air. But here, uh, here is that. 5-1 to one ball game, but let's go back to the top of the third inning. Will Clark the batter. The Giants have not had the lead in these two games. A 3-2 count, a split finger fastball by Mike Moore. Pounced on by Terry Steinbach, the Oakland catcher. But look at the tough throw that he had to complete the play with Brett Butler running between him and Clark. 
flash forward to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dave Parker barely, by inches, just misses a home run. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation, allowing Jose Canseco to score, and he fails to get Dave Parker at second base. Okay, you can see that is what happened when ABC was on the air when the earthquake struck San Francisco. Yes. It obviously knocked them out, knocked all of us out. Many of us uh, who work in this industry were off the air for quite a while. I think KGO was back on within about 10 minutes. We were on with about uh, 10 minutes, and you were on, uh, and we've had generating uh, emergency. I'm starting to get tired, aren't I? Emergency generators operating. That's what uh, has kept us on the air uh, all day. But that was Tim McCarver in the pregame show, the World Series, and uh, off the air uh, they went. Well, thanks to the efforts of a lot of good, good people who have all pulled together tonight to help bring us this information so that we can bring it to you tonight. Uh, once again, PG&E in the San Francisco area is telling you, please do not turn off the gas unless you smell it. They are saying that there, unless you smell it, there should be no danger. If you see an electrical wire down, please assume that it is live. Don't try to go near it. Don't try to touch it. Keep your pets indoors in a place that you feel safe. If you are in an area without power, turn off all of your electrical appliances. Uh, I suppose that means that they want to watch us on battery-powered televisions. <laughs> um, PG&E offices are going to be closed tomorrow. All non-emergency personnel should stay home. Uh, all gas and electrical and construction crews should please call their workstations. You are desperately needed to help get all of us functioning again. PG&E is bringing crews from outside the area to help in this emergency. You mentioned that uh, L uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, uh, Leo McCarthy was uh, issuing some uh, uh, emergency orders. And the reason is he is the acting governor right now. Uh, governor Governor Duke Majin is in Frankfurt, West Germany at a trade show. I believe uh, at this hour he is uh, is headed back to California to uh, oversee this uh, major earthquake uh, and uh, results in the cleanup here in Northern California. Okay, now I don't know if we have time to once again show you some remarkable videotape that was taken by uh, family tourists uh, coming in. Pete Wilson is giving me the okay, yes? Yes? No, we actually have to show he was talking tape? to somebody else. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, Thomas and Debbie Kelly of Oklahoma City. They came within a few hundred feet of that horrible disaster on the Bay Bridge tonight. They were on the lower deck of the Bay Bridge coming into Oakland. They and about a hundred other drivers were apparently misdirected onto the upper ramp heading toward the, the big hole that was created when the upper deck fell. They had their home video camera rolling and uh, they kept it rolling as the car in front of, front of them plunged into this, this crack that was created by the earthquake. We're going to show you some raw videotape that was taken by this car and then a replay of their own appearance in our newsroom a little while ago. Oakland Bay Bridge, just a little bit after, after the uh, earthquake, they sent us down here, surprisingly, in the wrong direction. There's another car. Gosh! That could have been us, but... Yeah, we, that could have been us, but we just turned around. Thomas, we need to go down there and help. This is the video that you actually shot. Thomas, Debbie, can you tell us what we're seeing here? Now, you're right at the front of this. Yeah, we are. We came up on it, and then we turned around. We saw the break in the bridge, and we turned around, and I pulled out the camera when we saw this. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. And that was my reaction. Oh, my gosh. And... I just froze. We couldn't believe it. All right. Now, you could see the break uh, at that point. You, yes, you we had just turned around. All right. uh, we were sent up there with about 100 other vehicles, and it, it was sort of mass confusion when we got to this break. But these two cars were quite a ways back behind the rest of the group. Thomas, so, you say you were sent up there. Were they already aware of damage? Uh, at uh, We understand the first street. Here's the slow motion which we've put together of this car going oh, off the edge. Was, you were given permission to go up there. It was a mistake. Quick. They sent a, a, about 100 cars by mistake. Told us to turn right to, at the to bridge. Turn right and go across. So, and when we saw it, we decided this is not what we need to do. You're watching KABC TV Los Angeles.